because I know the owner of Kiwi Farms is going to watch this video, I have a couple of words for Joshua Moon. Joshua, you are complicit in making multiple people commit suicide. You have made enemies everywhere. The legacy you are going to leave behind in this world is one of creating and operating a platform that for nearly a decade has tormented countless people. One day, you are going to get sloppy and your entire life is going to collapse like a house of cards. And when that day comes, no one will be there to help you. That's why you love me. <laughs> My fart queen. <laughs> Well, a woo to you, chat. Oh, it's the end of the month already. Can you believe it? Time flies. The year's just going by so quickly. And what a fantastic month this has been. We've got a, a big event. A big event to talk about. The kerfuffle. Internet 2, Electric Boogaloo. Perhaps hashtag Gamergate 2. Dare we dream, chat. Is it time? I know Sergan is painting models with a Rikata right now. Maybe we should all go inform him. Gamergate 2 is officially a go! It's time, Brianna! Woo has said Gamergate 2, Sargon! It is fucking time! Lead us! Lead us into glorious battle! It's time to take back video games, Sargon! <laughs> I hope you've had a fantastic month. Oh boy, what a story. What a story we have for today. A whole lot of things to cover, really. Had to push some things back, cut some other things out, because I want to talk about the kerfuffle. I want to talk about Kefels. And so we're going to be going over that in depth. The whole Kiwi Farms versus Kefels internet blood war, starring Joshua Moon as anime protagonist Naruto, because he finally fucking came out and just admitted it. I love anime. He said it. He fucking said it. That man loves anime more than I do, and I'm glad he's finally come out of the closet. It's time. Lead by example, Josh. If you want Nick to step out and sashay around, you need to be honest with yourself. We know you don't just love Naruto, you love Boruto too. Right? That's the name of the sequel? I, I don't know. I don't watch that much anime, Josh. You're the expert now. <laughs> Generous Josh, anime lover. Oh, chat. Are you ready for the fun? Now, I don't know how many of you have paid attention to this. Maybe you've seen bits and pieces of it. It's been an ongoing thing that stretches back, I'd say, the real origin of it months and months and months ago. But I will try to go through this as best I can. Because I do think this is an important issue to talk about. I know, you're the chud, high energy and laughs. But this is a legitimate, you know, important issue to talk about. Because it has larger implications for things that go on on the internet. Now, Keffels, if you're unaware, <laughs> things have escalated, and now they're in hiding. Keffels is somebody that made a name for themselves on social media by ratioing people on Twitter, which I don't even think is a proper t They're using it in a weird way. Now ratio just means how many little, uh, uh, you know, uh, ass slaps and upvotes. I got to get me my upvotes on Twitter, apparently. That's ratioing now. Little, little, little likes, little hearts. You know, that's kind of how they made their name. But oh boy, did the drama hit over the past two weeks. And Keffels had to go into hiding. Not just hiding. Had to flee the continent. Had to go across an ocean. Because of the goddamn a -locks. <laughs> Keffels probably should have reached out to Ralph. Could have given some uh, pointers and tips on how to deal with the, the damn A-hogs. Now I like to call this properly. This video itself, like, marking it in time, chronologically, on, like, a fucking uh, a track, I would call this Phase 1. This is officially Phase 1. Things have escalated, and now I've gone into hiding. And what does Phase 1 consist of? Well, I think it touches on what, uh, you know, is the larger issue here. Who is Keffels? You know, who, who is Keffels? Keffels is the same type of person you've seen a thousand times on the Internet. You know, grifting gets thrown out a lot 
about fucking everybody at this point. Oh, it's a grifter. Oh, it's a grifter. Keffels is a grifter. A con man. A flip flat man selling snake oil. Literally. And we'll get to that later, too. But Keffels is... I, it's attention whoring. There used to be terms for things like this. Gotus. It's somebody that wants power, money, fame. And you can see, you know, the uh, implications and the effects of that after the phase one I've gone into hiding kicked in. The grift has worked. Look at the numbers. On their GoFundMe, nearly $100,000 raised. Their Patreon sitting at $2,500 a month. Now, what does Keffels do? They ratio people on Twitter. That's Keffel's uh, content that they're getting $100,000 for and are being paid monthly $2,500 for. But it's not, it's not just the money. No, it's, it's the attention. This is a, a, a typical example during what's been going on. I got denied for verification on Twitter. This is them using and leveraging their audience to try to force a social media platform to give them a little blue check mark so they have just a bit more power that they can uh, use and abuse when they get into fights with people that disagree with them. And that's what Keffel does day in and day out. Now, Keffels has stated that they're, they've run for their life. They've, they've uh, taken a fucking secret plane flight across the ocean. You're never going to find me. I've gone into hiding. I'm at some super secret military base 450 miles down in the Antarctic. But I'm still going to get on Twitter and start slap fights. <laughs> okay? So, wait, what have they gained so far from phase one? A fucking lot of money. Verification to uh, uh, piss on anybody they want. And uh, they are the darling right now, the media darling of the press. Because they're all writing articles. Now, you can see how Keffel's... Like, let's start, I'd say, closer to the beginning. Right? With Destiny. When Keffels was on Twitter, uh, you know, uh, ratioing people and reporting things, this is stuff they were talking about. They were glad. This is, this is who Keffels is. These quotes, these tweets, these are real. I just took away your primary source of income. I will continue tagging Twitter support. Can my followers boost this? So Keffels wanted to get Destiny because he had an opinion they didn't like. Wanted to get Destiny banned off of Twitch banned off of Twitter, have their income taken away, have their life get shit on, they went after his fucking wife when this was all going on. Sound familiar? Have you noticed a theme of Year of the Chud for the last, uh, since the beginning, all the way back to Jack Murphy? It seems to be a certain type of person, it's not even political, it's personality, that want to basically deplatform, ban, censor, and just ruin Anybody that disagrees with them, makes fun of them, talks about them, and they will use any means available to them to do it. We had uh, Murphy going after people because of a super chat. We had uh, Nick going after people because he doesn't like being laughed at. We had Ralph going after people because he's an idiot. And we've got Keffels doing the same thing. It's the same fucking thing. These people are all the same. It's baked into them. It's not even a left and right thing. It's a personality fucking uh, problem with these people. <clears throat> and this, is, this wasn't even good enough. As Keffels has gained more followers and more money and more power and has become their, you know, the media darling, they're still fucking angry about Destiny. This is a more recent one. Listen to this shit. Uh, this is what, uh, just four days ago. If this, they're referring to Kiwi Farms. If this site stays online, another trans person will be murdered by Joshua Moon and the users of his forum. If we can get Destiny's account clapped, there will be a chilling effect on people who are willing to show public support for Josh and his legion of sociopaths. So even months later, after trying to get Destiny's income taken away from him, after trying to get Destiny deplatformed, they are still fucking angry about it. And they still want to get his, uh, you know, quote unquote, account clapped. Want to take out, yeah, Destiny. We all, Destiny. He's really well known for being, uh, you know, a horrific right wing troon hunter, isn't he? 
That's what when I think of destiny, I think neo Nazi. That's what that's what we all know fucking destiny for. Oh boy, that guy's right wing. But Keffels wants them destroyed because he didn't put up with their shit. Because Destiny wasn't going to fucking uh, bend a knee to this bullshit. Unfucking real. <laughs> so, what is the origin of the current kerfuffle? It's a war between a forum on the internet, Kiwi Farms, and uh, our little media darling here, Keffels. And why is this war going on? It's because they have a thread on Kiwi Farms where people talk about the dumb shit Keffels has said, where people talk about the dumb shit Keffels has done, where they talk about Keffels' past and past statements and past actions and associations, where they say mean things about Keffels. And Keffels has decided that Kiwi Farms must be destroyed. Joshua Connor Moon must be destroyed. I mean, you can see it in this fucking tweet. If that site stays online, another trans person will be murdered by Josh Moon. Who the fuck is Josh Guild? I'm pretty sure the last time a trans person knocked on Josh's door, he was in the, he was in the toilet taking a shit. I don't think Josh Moon has personally murdered anyone. Nor do I believe that his fucking forum has killed anyone. But we'll get into more of this as we go. So Keffels is mad this fucking forum exists. Keffels is mad there are threads talking about dumb shit Keffels does. And Keffels wants to use their growing uh, celebrity status, social media influence, to take on anybody that would dare to question that or to run contrary to that. And the ridiculous shit that they're saying out there, as this has been going on, because they're really full of themselves. I mean, they are narcissistic to a T. Keffels and their supporters are very narcissistic. They think they're untouchable, that they can get anything done. And if you've watched for the last week, you've probably seen that's not true at all. I mean, they're talking about the Kiwi Farms Air Force. Kiwi Farms, an internet forum, they're fucking, they believe Josh Moon has a drone swarm. All right, there's only one person here that has a drone swarm. You're, you're listening to him talk right now. And I don't rent my Air Force out to Kiwi. This is from uh, Trans Salamander on Twitter. Uh, drop Kiwi Farms because they've flown drones <laughs> over our ranch to take pictures, try to get us in trouble with the cops claiming we abuse our animals and made the choice for me as to whether or not I'd make my last name public. So in there, in there, like this, you know, how Ralph talks about fan fiction farms. Picture this. They believe that Josh Moon, hiding somewhere in Eastern Europe, has an inter... It would have to be international, because it's got to go across the fucking ocean. Intercontinental. So, Josh Moon has an intercontinental air force of fucking drones that he uses to hunt down trans people all across America. He's flying them over, taking pictures of their am holes against their consent. And it's just, it's just believe, throw it up. Sure, why not? Josh Moon has a drone swarm, and he's out there trune hunting. That's fucking case closed. <laughs> we don't need any validation on it. He's doing it. Amazing. Now, you could, <laughs> I love, uh, you know, one of the funniest things about Keffels is they get super arrogant and high off their own farts, and they'll make a statement, a very grandiose one. And then, like, an hour later, the opposite happens. Here's a great fucking example. Josh Moon, you laughed at me when I said I was going to work as hard as I could to get your heinous website offline. Now who's laughing? Yeah, Josh Moon, who's laughing now with your website? Oh, wait, the website's online right now? You could go to kiwifarms.net right now? That website, that's still on the internet? Oh, shit, Keffels, I think I know who's laughing. You probably shouldn't laugh anymore. I don't know, maybe maybe fucking Josh is laughing, Keffels. Because every time you've threatened to take down his website, he somehow has gotten it back online with like in an hour. 
or a day. Kiwi Farms goes down every month because there are a bunch of people, Keffels, just like you, that are real big mad about it. So they spend their checks every payday trying to take down Kiwi Farms. It's, it's the new Ed. Uh, maybe you're maybe you're too much of a, I don't know, a fucking Zoomer to remember this, but when Encyclopedia Dramatica was the big bad boy on the block and everybody had a problem with that, it was, oh, I'm going to take down Ed. Now, they had a lot of help because half of the sysops and owners of Ed were all heroin ad- addicts that would, you know, like, not out for a week and a half and the site would go to shit or they'd steal donation money. But the point is, it's not a new concept. <laughs> I'm going to take down Kiwi Farms. Oh, we're just doing, we're just doing shit that's already been done. So there's Keffels, very angry, start their crusade against Kiwi Farms, goes into hiding because they've been swatted, claiming to have been swatted, changed the story three times on how the swatting happened. Did the cops come in with guns? Did they knock on the door? Did they have a warrant? Did they not have a warrant? Did they take anything? Nonetheless, Keffels is fleeing the country. And in the midst of all of this, in the midst of all of this, for no reason at all, because the internet loves insanity and everybody loves a good fucking drama, let's, uh, let's get MTG involved. Oh, 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 wrong one. There we go. Marjorie Taylor Greene, one of our elected representatives, ends up getting swatted. And uh, this is mind blowing because they're so dumb they believe. I, I'm i like, I, I, I'm actually, my brain is slow. It's stopping. The words no work, no good, no more. I feel like Andy Worski. I just got hit by salt poppy. Because when you read this, you'd think that maybe you don't take it as seriously as you would be led to believe. 911 received a call from the suspect, claims that he's connected to the website kiwifarms.net, stated that their username is Autistic Right. So, they get swatted while this is going on, and then the person that swats them calls back and says, by the way, just in case you didn't know, I'm a moderator on kiwifarms.net. Uh, Hail Joshua Moon, the corn harvester. Also, I'm a mod there. And I love to sweep it up. And of course, of course, uh, you know, uh, Marjorie, being uh, the big brain person that she is, uh, goes on and says, we need to eradicate Kiwi. I don't fucking believe this is happening. The suspect claims that he or she is connected to this website, which is a site that actually supports cyber stalking. The suspect even gave police their username. Uh, so basically, as you pointed out, this is a, a suspect admitted to intending to do harm via uh, cyber stalking. You said you fully want to uh, you know, prosecute whomever did this. And I'm assuming that suspect is still at large, right? Yes, there's an investigation underway and there's an even, even investigation into whether that's really the person that did this. Mm. Um, but it is, isn't it concerning that such a website exists? Like, why does that even exist? Mm-hmm. That, that website needs to be taken down. So this big brain politician, this big brain politician, well, I don't know if that's really true. It's probably not. But that website's bad. We need to get rid of it. What the fuck are you talking? What are you smoking? What, what, what the fuck do you mean? That'd be like if if the person had called back and instead of saying uh, Kiwi Farms and I'm a moderator that said, uh, said something like, uh, uh, this is this is Elon Musk. This is Elon Musk from Twitter. It's just like, we need to get rid of Twitter right now. That Elon Musk guy's a bad news. There should be no business or, or any kind of service where you can target your enemy. That's absolutely absurd. And this is the type of lawlessness that Democrats want all over the country. You know, the Democrats are the party of defund the police, which is which has created crime that is going out of control all over the country. But it's, it's also failure of, of our government and failure of our law enforcement to not take down a website like that. Like all of these types of groups need to be completely eradicated. Completely eradicated. What a dumb <laughs> what a dumb dumb. Let me just say it like that. Let me let me uh, use my, my censored speech and just say what a dumb dumb. So uh, Kiwi Farms needs to be eradicated and removed from the internet because you got swatted by somebody obviously using a fake name. And then what happens? What's the follow-up? Swatted again. Swatted twice. It's a twofer. The rep got a twofer. Marjorie got a twofer. Now, I don't know if they what name they gave the second time. Uh, <laughs> I'm pretty sure I saw the police report. I don't know if they called back in saying it was another moderator or a completely unrelated person. Who fucking knows? Swatted twice. 
So here's Keffels. They start their war with uh, Kiwi Farms. Now we get a rep that gets swatted, making the story bigger. News media is picking it up. But I wanted to focus on one aspect I've personally seen. Uh, we can talk about the stuff Keffels has said, Keffels has done, and we will get to that. But I want to show you how Keffels behaves. Because it's really interesting when somebody paints himself as a martyr or as a victim on social media or, you know, just anywhere on the internet. And then how do they behave once they have the spotlight on them? Keffel's argument is that Kiwi Farms is terrible, that they dox people, uh, that they swat people, that they put up information that leads to harm, and that these things, these actions are bad. That Kiwi Farms is a place where these actions can happen and it needs to be removed because it's a bad thing to have happen. So clearly, if Keffels believes all of that's terrible, well, they would never engage in anything like it, right? They'd be squeaky clean, except they're not. Now, uh, uh, my good friend, Quarantined Koof, on Twitter had a run-in with Keffels for about two days before they uh, decided it wasn't working out well for them. And just some of the statements and shit that they said during that two-day period, I think, really helps to highlight uh, that they're not... <laughs> They're not a martyr uh, by any stretch of the imagination. This is uh, Keffels. Just, you know, this is an interaction, but take a good look. Uh, what a cute family, Keffels says. Surely his mother will not lose her job because of her son's heinous actions and have to leave the internet. So Keffels, who cries about being doxxed, Keffels, who cries about family members being involved in things, Keffels, who says that's bad, and these bad things happen on QE Farms, are doing those, you know, quote-unquote, bad things on Twitter instead. But that's okay. Their justification, you can see higher up. My thread is full of uh, pictures of my entire family, and Josh encouraged it. I post one photo and did not ask people to harass them. I don't care about your cry-bully bullshit. That's interesting. Cry-bully bullshit, Keffels. That's your grift. Who the fuck are you calling a cry-bully? You did not ask people to harass them with your wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Boy, hope nobody uh, takes a look at this picture of this dude's mom and fires her ass. That'd be tragic. Really? We're not five years old. This isn't, uh, you know, the internet is not comprised of kindergartners, Caffles. We can fucking read between the lines. It's fairly obvious uh, what you're doing, what the intended uh, effect here is. Oh, it's tragic when it happens to me. Uh, in fact, they actually say that. Uh, you don't get to dox my mother and then cry victim when I post photos of your mother, Joshua. You started this. I wouldn't have even known about your shitty website had you not pinned my newly created thread to the homepage. Anything that happens to you is your own fault. Somebody ring a fucking bell. <laughs> Keffels, is that? Really? Anything that happens to you is your own fault. Keffels, are you sure you want to go with that? With all the shit that's happening to you right now, Anything that happens to you is your own fault. That's that's a mantra. <laughs> is everything fair game? Is that what you're saying, Keffels? So, I guess I'm fucking confused. Is Kiwi Farms bad because it allows you to do shit? Because it seems you can do that exact same shit outside of Kiwi Farms. Or is doxing people's family bad? Uh, because, again, I'm confused. You're doing it. Uh, which is it, Keffels? Also... I love it. Uh, Quarantine Koof calls them out on misgendering uh, Josh's uh, mother, because they did, by the way. They said uh, lose their job because of his sons. You know. And this is what your trans activist, your, your martyr, your freedom fighter said. I don't care that I misgendered Josh Moon's mother. Why am I being virtue signaled at? Are you fucking kidding me? For the last two years on the internet... If anybody doesn't use the proper pronoun, they get just screamed at. Just screamed at. Not using my pronouns is an assault on me. Not using my pronouns affects my mental health. Not using the proper pronouns will lead to more trans suicide. Not using the proper pronouns is a form of bullying. But here's the trans activist, the martyr themselves, Keffels, on social media in front of their entire audience saying, I don't fucking care. I don't care that I misgendered Josh Moon's mom. Doesn't, who cares about pronouns? I'm in it for the money. I'm in it for the money. Ridiculous. I also like how Keffels will put out information to try to make Kiwi Farms look terrible and then not give any context to it. 
again, engaging in the same things they claim are being done to them. Uh, Kiwi Farms was initially created to stalk and harass an autistic trans woman. The main people they focus on usually have similar traits, being transgender and or neurodivergent. Again, our, our friend, Quarantine Coof. Uh, that's terrible. Uh, what happened to the poor innocent person this forum targeted? Uh, checks notes. Oh, they're in prison for raping their mother. Because Keffels is talking about Christian, you know, the, the person we just said was on the run from the police, squeezed out of that fucking uh, jailhouse window. That's who they're talking about. Now, Keffels wants to make you think that Christian has become a terrible person solely because Kiwi Farms exist and solely because of the trolls. I would counter that Chris was drawing nude pictures of Megan all the way back in the day. That she was constantly talking about what a sex pest he was. That if you go and watch the Geno Samuel documentary, you will hear in multiple parts of that Chris talk about weird shit in regards to his mother and a sexual nature. This isn't something that Kiwi Farms cooked up. <laughs> Josh Moon wasn't holding a camcorder while Chris was uh, slamming that bar pussy, Keffels. All right, Chris took advantage of a dementia-ridden old woman who was so far gone with Alzheimer's or brain damage or whatever the fuck is going on that he raped her. Christian raped his mother. And you're trying to make it like, oh, uh, this poor, brave trans woman is being affected. Chris didn't even become trans <laughs> until like two years ago. What the fuck are you talking about? You're leaving out some small details, Keffels. You know, some minor, minor points of interest. When you talk about the terrible Kiwi people. Oh, poor Chris Chan. If only that form didn't exist, he wouldn't have been raping dementia-ridden 80-year-old women. <laughs> don't know. They don't know what time of day it is. <sighs> now, for some reason, for some reason, uh, Keffels didn't like that tweet, probably because, you know, nearly 10,000 likes. Oh, the ratios or some shit. I don't know. Everything's a number. Got to crunch the numbers for support. Uh, this was their reaction to bringing up the fact that Chris Jan raped his mother. Uh, whether or not this is true, whether or not this is true, who starts, uh, who, what kind of fucking reply is that? What, what do you mean, whether or not this is true? Hey, hey now, you're being awfully mean to that rapist. <laughs> hey, w everybody, wait a second. That guy's bullying a mother raper. I, hey, hashtag don't bully the mother rapers out there whether or not this is true. What? Does not mean Kiwi Farms victims driven to suicide deserved it. Christian didn't kill themselves. Christian raped their mother. I would be more concerned about what happens when Twitter support finds out about your We Was Medicare ban evading. You're already banned on YouTube. Oh. <laughs> Don't I do? Shh, it's a secret. You're already banned on YouTube, Patreon, and everywhere else. Keep your head down. You, have you noticing a, a common trait? They get very sassy. Who's laughing now, Josh? Destiny's about to get clapped. You better keep your head down. <laughs> Here's a follow-up tweet. I don't give a shit about politeness. People like him, they're referring to quarantine coof. Uh, I don't give a shit about politeness. People like him want me dead. He wants all of us dead. Make sure to boost this post and let Twitter support know about his ban evasion. This is the last account he has on a public-facing platform. Oh, Kerfuffles, what are you doing? <laughs> Did you? That guy said Chris Chan raped his mother. I don't know if it's true or not, but he wants every one of us trans people dead. Ban him. Get him, get him out of here. He made me look stupid. That means he wants me dead. Ban him and get rid of him immediately. Brianna... Start up the hashtag. It's Gamergate 2 time. Brianna, come here. It's Gamergate 2 time. Are you fucking kidding me? He wants us all dead. <laughs> Speaking of getting people killed, uh, here's a real gem. Uh, if I have any Ukrainian followers here, is the phone number and address for where Kiwi Farms is currently hosted? Do your thing. The site is down, but I know Josh Moon has expressed warm sentiments to Vladimir Putin, and the site has many Putin supporters on it. I would let them know this. I Where do we even begin with this one? There are like nine different directions we could approach this from. Let's start with a basic just narcissism. Ukraine and Russia 
are engaged in a fucking war right now. But Keffels, so deluded and drunk off social media uh, e-fame, believes that they can interrupt a fucking war and get some shit done. Oh, guys, could you could you put your guns down? Could you, Mr. Putin, Mr. Zelensky? I understand there's some there's some issues going on in your countries, but there's a guy on the internet that's making fun of my am hole, and I need it shut down. Here's their physical fucking location in Kiev. By the way, everybody associated with it loves Putin. Hope nothing bad happens to anybody. Fucking really? <laughs> really? Did you think that, what, you think uh, fucking NATO's going to jump on that? The UN's going to do a binding resolution? Because Josh Moon's international intercontinental fucking drone fleet is taking troon picks from the air? Is, is, that what, is that what we're believing is happening right now? Mr. Mr. Zelensky, Mr. Putin, please stop this evil, this evil Joshua Moon. Wow. It's a level of hubris and arrogance you don't really see very much anymore. It's somebody that's just so far gone. Like, <laughs> here's another example. There are many examples. Here are a couple more. The lesson I learned is the only way to earn respect is through fear. Keep up the pressure and they will march in pride parades with us. <laughs> that's a doozy. Oh. Uh, what are we learning about Keffels? This is just from like three or four days worth of tweets. Um, they are fine doing everything they complain about. Uh, they don't have a problem with Kiwi Farms being the place to do it. Or I'm sorry, they, it's it's that Kiwi Farms uh, allows things they don't like but want to engage in. And because they don't have the same kind of control there that they would on Twitter, that's why Kiwi Farms is bad. So they're fine with putting up family members' pictures, trying to get people fired, trying to get their income taken away, get them deplatformed, get them banned. Uh, there were more tweets. I, I won't put them up, but Keffels is putting up pictures of Josh's mom. Uh, arrest records, everything. And I'm not even saying that's not fair game. If Keffel's point had been, I'm totally fine with all this shit, there wouldn't be any issue. But Keffel's has directly said that this is all terrible, that these things are terrible, you should never do them, and then he engages in them. And then makes statements about how people should live in fear, uh, how they're going to. Uh, just, <laughs> I'll show you. I'll show you some of the shit uh, Kerfuffles has been saying. This one is really good. This is a follow-up to the uh, posting pictures of Moon's uh, mom. Everyone upset that I posted a photo of Josh Moon's mother of being performative as hell. As a result of this forum targeting me and my mother has been doxxed, gotten threatening phone calls, letters sent to her house in my dead name, and emails harassing her for months. Keep crying. And then they followed up with this. This is archived, by the way. They deleted a lot of this. Uh, if you have an active Kiwi Farms account, I will not only post your name publicly, I will find your employer and forward them their post history. I have no tolerance for hate, and users of the site should feel more scared to get as bold as they do. This is a hate group. This is this is mask off. All right, there's no there's no subtlety here. I mean, they're reveling in the idea of this. You know, little doxing here, little little harassment there. But now they they're going to get the names of everybody that posts on Kiwi Farms, which will wipe out half of YouTube. <laughs> Because they all get their shit from Kiwi Farms, so half of YouTube's gone. Uh, they'll post their names and then forward it to... Why would you forward it to the employer? What the implication be, uh, Keffels, of forwarding it to somebody's employer? Oh, you want to get them fired. Now, imagine you're on this forum, and you've never even been in the Keffels thread. You're in the, I don't know, Christian thread, because you want to know about the guy that raped his mother, Keffels. Uh, and here comes Keffels, and they magically get your name. I don't know how. Uh, and then forward it to your employer. Because you need to be taught a lesson. What is it with people wanting to teach everybody a lesson on the internet lately? I guess I'm just a little confused as to why so many lessons need to be taught on the internet. <laughs> I'm going to teach you a lesson. You're going to learn. You're going to learn good. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh. So this has been going on. <clears throat> for a week. Longer, if you count the you know initial start of it. So you got a person that uh, desperately wants attention, power, and fame. Uh, they do it by being a reply person on anything they can. They eventually uh, reply their way into getting attention by going after Destiny, and then start ratioing anybody they can. 
which is basically just banging a drum and screaming, I'm an attention whore. They want those likes and follows. Uh, they start building that up. People start digging into them to find out who the fuck this person is. Start finding some pretty shady shit in their past. You know, information starts getting spread and people are looking into them. Now suddenly they're saying they're getting swatted. They've got to flee the country. And after they fled the country, they're, they're screeching on social media daily about how they're going to not just go after Josh Boone or Josh Boone's family, but everybody associated with this forum. They're going to dox them and get them fired. Because you need to live in fear. You need to live in fear because that's how we get you to march and pride parades. This is your, this is your trans activist. How do we get people to support us? Oh, we put them in a state of fear because they have no other fucking alternative. Really? That's really what you want to go with. That's, uh, that's what we're going with. Put them in a state of fear and force them to do it uh, because they have no other choice. Just just keep, keep the pressure up. Just dox them and put them in a state of fear. And, uh, you know, I'm a trans activist, but I don't give a shit about pronouns. Here's my donate button. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit me up on Patreon. Who cares about pronouns? Also, let's put them in a state of fear because they have no choice and they need to do what I want them to do. Oh, this is a dime a dozen uh, bullshit that you used to see on the internet all the time. We've seen this over the last decade. This, this, is not, this approach has been done before, Keffels. You're not unique in it. You're just really bad at it because you're flailing all over the place. Because you'll go on social media and say really stupid shit that people will screen cap and archive. And then you delete it, hoping that, you know, it just goes away, but it doesn't. Which got you into this in the first place, because your fucking thread was full of statements you'd make, and then you'd kind of, like, you know, hush them away, kind of shh, make it go away. No, you clearly don't have an issue with Kiwi Farms in and of itself. You have an issue with the fact you don't have power there to do the shit you do on Twitter. That's what it is. That's what you're upset about. Uh, you know, all the things they do and say, yeah, you don't give two fucks about that because you engage in it. You do it. You're mad because you can't throw your weight around on Kiwi Farms. That's what this is all about. It's attention whoring, grifting, and you're mad that Josh won't give you a special sticker that says Keffel's in charge. Well, I'm sorry that he's too busy watching Taruto, <laughs> Baruto, whatever, uh, to give a shit, Keffel's, but apparently it's not going to happen. Ah, oh, sorry, Chad. Voice is getting a little sore there for a second. Uh, let's take a small break, because this was phase one. Okay, I, I know I'm condensing things down a bit. I am. Uh, but think of this as phase one of what Keffels is doing, which is making themselves look stupid. <laughs> That's phase one. Remember, phase one is, I've got it, things have escalated, now I'm in hiding. That's phase one. And phase one, again, made him a lot of fucking money. Made them a lot of money. Got them that verification they've been wanting. Got them all the uh, press accolades they've been wanting. Oh, and oh, are they high on their farts right now going after anybody laughing at them? You know, Keffels not just, didn't just threaten Josh or Kiwi Farms users. Threatened anybody that would ever say something in response to them. Wanting Destiny to get banned. Went after Nick DiOrio. Went after Augie RFC. Uh, went after Nick Ricada. Tried to get him not just banned and deplatformed. Tried to get his legal license taken away. Why? Because Nick uh, doesn't agree with their stupid shit. If you make a statement against Keffels, they're going to you know, start doing their ratio thing to try to get you uh, disappeared from the internet. So that's phase one. But that still leaves, oh, we, we've got phase two coming up. Now, phase two is more recent. Uh, this came out Tuesday, so just yesterday. Just yesterday, phase two finally was initiated. We've got a green, we've got a green for go on the amholes, boys. Let's kick the tires, night the fires. It's phase two of the MCU. So Keffels announces, "I'm going to do a live stream. Phase two for the Drop Kiwi Farms campaign is a go." And what is phase two? Let me sum it up for you. Phase two was an hour-long live stream, in which uh, Keffels basically said three things. One, they created a website where they could yell about Josh Moon and how terrible Kiwi Farms is and blame Kiwi Farms for the suicide of three people. Uh, that, was, that was the big thing. There's also a giant donate button. Can't forget that. That's, that's part one of phase two. Uh, part two of phase two was an email campaign 
They're going to email Cloudflare and complain a lot and make Cloudflare uh, get rid of protection for Kiwi Farms. That way they can DDoS it. And I'm not even kidding you. Initially, when Keffels was talking about this, that it's blatant what they're talking about. We want to get rid of you know DDoS protection for Kiwi Farms so it can be uh, taken off the internet through illegal means. That's phase two. Uh, part two of phase two. And then part three of phase two, the real, you know, the cherry on top is a in in, in real life announced uh, protest for October 18th at a Cloudflare event out in, I think, San Francisco, California. So build a website to put up all the things you want to say because you hate Josh Moon and you hate Kiwi Farms. Give out a bunch of email addresses to people that like the janitor, the janitor at Cloudflare, Keffels. I mean, who are we emailing? And then uh, the final, you know, thing is a in real life protest, uh, and then you know, saying they can't ignore us, they can't ignore us. This is the big, the big deal. Now you can tell this was kind of cobbled together quickly. They're repeating paragraphs and spelling mistakes. Looks very angel fire, angel fire esque uh, in its construction. Now you're saying, Jim, why don't you go on the website and show it to us? I'm not touching that website. Keffels has probably declared that they've, you know, IP logging people that use their chat feature through. Uh, what is it, keffels.gg? So who knows what the fuck's going on with that website. But I saved you an hour, and I saved you a scroll. Now, if you want to see exactly what's on uh, the website, you could go there. Or you could go to Keffels' thread on Kiwi Farms, because Kiwi Farms is still up, isn't it, Keffels? But this was, the, this was the big thing. Now, again, I noticed something really interesting, by the way. When Keffels was doing their presentation about this, and they talked about the Josh Moon section of the website. Because Keffels decides that they're going to, um, what's the term? What's the term when you use somebody's name that's been changed? You know, when you have an old legal name and you change it, what is that trans activist term? Dead name? Is that what it is, Keffels? Did you dead name Josh Moon? Because Keffels pulls up his name change. He changed the name his daddy gave him. I'm sure Ralph is doing fucking cartwheels over this. But Keffels pulls that up and dead names Josh. Which, by the way, if you've listened to Keffels for the last two weeks, all they do is complain about being dead named. Don't you dare call me my name that I was legally born with. It's, uh, actually, I don't know what Keffels goes by. I just, is it really Keffels? Maybe it is. I don't know. But uh, don't you, don't you dare dead name me. Dead names Josh. Our trans activist already doesn't care about pronouns and loves to dead name people. <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? Come on. Oh, now I know a lot of you out there are really curious. What is uh, what is Josh's real name? I can't. Uh, I'm not going to dead name him. But I'll tell you this: he was the boy that lived, bitch. He was the boy that lived. Keffels, what are you doing? How's Gryffindor's fucking your shit up? Dead name and a wizard. What are you doing, Keffels? What are you doing? He lived, motherfucker. He lived! Keffels! You need to think about who you're fucking with. Abracadabra and shit. This wizard loves anime and you're fucking with the wrong person. <laughs> oh. <laughs> fucking House, House Gryffindor. She's picked a fight with House Gryffindor. What the fuck is going on on the internet? I love it. I absolutely, I absolutely love it. <laughs> Keffel's your dead name and a wizard. <laughs> you see this scar, bitch? I got it from an am hole when I was flying my dro drone storm over a ranch. I was personally on that drone, Keffel's. <laughs> they shot me down, but I lived, bitch. I lived. <laughs> Amazing. <sighs> oh, the internet is a just magically silly place sometimes. I love it. Absolutely love it. Okay. So this is, uh, this, I want you to like, when you talk about spectacular failures on the internet of just people imploding or shit going wrong, I mean, we've seen this with Ralph for like the last six months, right? But Keffels is like, they're really living up to that uh, speedrunner mentality of how to embarrass yourself repeatedly over and over again. 
like four or five times they've declared victory over uh, Josh and the website, and then the website comes back up in like an hour. So now here's their big thing. They're going to protest Cloudflare. They're going to do an email campaign against Cloudflare. They've got their journalist friends uh, writing articles, Time and Bloomberg and everybody else, about Cloudflare to try to create an uh, artificial sense that there's an organic movement that agrees with them. Well, today, Cloudflare decided to respond. Cloudflare heard you, Keffels. Cloudflare uh, understands. So let's go look at the response that uh, Cloudflare put up. Let me make sure I've got display capture up here. Uh, hopefully this works. Here we go. We're on the, <clears throat> excuse me, a little bit of a sore throat. So this is Cloudflare. This is a blog. They just put it up. You can see right there, August 31st, 2022. This is today, just hours before this stream. Matthew Prince, that's the, you know, that's the, the guy, what is it, uh, Dakota East or whatever that she's constantly uh, screaming at. Cloudflare's abuse policies and approach. This is the blog they wrote. Ready? Here we go. Uh, wait a minute. What? I chat. What is that? I don't know what this. What does this mean? Y W N B A W. Quote us on that. Uh, for more information, hold your breath or click the link below. What? I chat. Do I have the? Uh, maybe is this a right? I, I think. Hold on a second here. Let me just. Uh, let me just just double check my fucking sources here. I don't. I think I might have. I might have gone to the wrong website. I don't know what's going on. Matthew Prince is going a little bit hard there. Uh, Matthew Prince going going a little bit hard. I'm not sure. Oh, I see. I see. I just needed to refresh the page. I'm sorry, Chad. Needed to refresh the page. Guess that was a technical issue. Yep. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here's the actual. Here's the actual article. Guess they had to do some editing, maybe. That was like a placeholder for the actual article. Here we are. Uh, Cloudflare launched nearly 12 years ago. And we've grown to operate a network that spans more than 275 cities in 100 countries with millions of customers. Is that they're just talking about their history? Talking about their abuse policies and what they've updated? Now they start to get into a little bit of things. However, as questions have arisen, we thought it made sense to describe these policies and details here. Again, going over what their take is how they work, what services they offer, uh, DDoS mitigation, web application firewall, access rate, rate limiting, you know, authoritative DNS, recursive DNS, just all that shit. A basic a basic primer in what Clair, uh, our Cloudflare does uh, when it offers DDoS protection or when they host different products, talking about security services, talking about avoiding abuse and power. And this is where it gets interesting. Some argue, uh, starting right here, some argue that we should terminate these services to content we find reprehensible so that others can launch attacks to knock it offline. Remember when I told you that Keffels was blatantly telling people, I, I, I mean, it, was, it wasn't it was even subtle. They wanted to strip away DDoS protection so they could illegally take down a website. And here's Cloudflare basically acknowledging that's what they heard too. Some argue we should terminate the services we find reprehensible so others can launch attacks to knock it offline. That is the equivalent argument in the physical world that the fire department shouldn't respond to fires in the homes of people who do not possess sufficient moral character. Both in the physical world and online, that is a dangerous precedent and one that is over the long term most likely to disproportionately harm vulnerable and marginalized communities. Wow, that's really weird, Keffels. It's almost like, fuck, it's almost like Cloudflare, um, you know, saw you saying shit like, I don't fucking care about pronouns. <laughs> and I'm a trans activist and I want to rule people through fear and dox them and, uh, you know, illegally attack websites. And they thought, huh, maybe that's not somebody we should listen to. Uh, maybe, maybe fuck off. Maybe this is really a nice way for a corporation to say, fuck yourself. Today, more than 20% of the web uses Cloudflare security services. When considering our policies, we need to be mindful of the impact they have and precedent we set for the internet as a whole. Terminating security services for content that our team personally feels is disgusting or immoral would be the popular choice. But in the long term, such choices make it more difficult to protect content that supports oppressed or marginalized voices against attacks. If you want to read between the lines a little bit, 
scuffles. Cloudflare is trying to put the training wheels back on your ass. Uh, they're essentially saying that useful idiots such as yourself that uh, go out and uh, destroy things that are abhorrent uh, eventually become no longer useful, and then you get fucked by the power structure. And Cloudflare is actually, that's basically what they're saying. They're like, hey, idiot, uh, once you get rid of Kiwi Farms and once all of this shit plays itself out, who do you think is going to be next? <laughs> Probably fake activists, huh? Uh, they talk about refining their, their, you know, their content. They talk about what happened in 2017 with uh, the Daily Stormer, and in 2019 with the uh, uh, Image Board HCN, uh, and talk about how even after getting rid of them, uh, they saw a dramatic increase in authoritarian regimes attempting to have us terminate security services for human rights organizations, often citing our own language as our justification back to us. Now, let me just. Let me close that for a second. So Cloudflare is basically saying, yeah, we've done this a couple times in the past, and then governments want us to go after uh, different groups of citizens. So, hey, idiot, maybe shut the fuck up. Um, Cloudflare is also saying, hey, idiot, uh, we know what you want to do because you basically said it out loud in front of everybody. Maybe shut the fuck up. We're not going to facilitate your illegal activities and attacking a website once DDoS is stripped from it. So that's, congratulations. Remember, phase two, where are we right now? Phase two, how long has phase two been going on? An hour? <laughs> phase two has been going on for how long? Where is it? Where's fucking phase two? Phase two, campaign, live stream, website, email campaign, protest. I'd say in less than the span of 24 hours, Keffel's got absolutely nuked out of the water. Just blown the fuck out. How do you get blown the fuck out that hard, Keffel's? How, how does that happen? How do you get blown the fuck out that hard, that quick? You've been complaining for a week. You thought that all the journalist friends and the activists and former names of, you know, niche micro e-celebs were going to be enough to bully a massive corporation into letting you run rampant over things you don't like. And you got blown the fuck out in the span of 24 hours. Now, I'm sure Keffels isn't going to stop. I'm sure there are going to be more articles. I'm sure there are going to be protests. I mean, you make good money off this. We saw from the GoFundMe. We saw from the Patreon. There's a lot of money to be made in this, so I don't think they're going to stop anytime soon. <laughs> but as far as Phase 2 is concerned, it fizzled out. Keffels, it was so short-lived. Andy Worski's boxing career. Andy Worski in the ring with Salt Poppy lasted longer than Phase 2 of your fucking operation to drop Kiwi Farms. The felted fucking Phoenix lasted longer on his feet in the ring, and he was knocked out in 10 seconds. They dropped on your ass with an elbow from the top ring, Keffels. Dakota East, he's out there. He's doing a little dance right now. He's doing a little Keffels dance. Laughing about it. I bet, I bet if we went over and watched Destiny's stream right now, Dakota East is donating to Destiny. And laughing about it. It's just, he said in Bitcoins to Josh and high-fiving people in the office. <laughs> oh, Keffels. Not like this. Not like this, Keffels. Now, there is one more modern update. So, Keffels fled uh, the United States. They went over to Europe, whatever. They got doxxed by a doorknob. I'm not kidding. Somebody, <laughs> you got to remember, the internet, uh, this is another thing. When He Will Not Divide Us happened, right? Remember Shia LaBeouf wanted to do his art project about Donald Trump? And people showed up for the first uh, couple of exhibits, and they laughed about it, and screwed with Shia, and it was fun. And Shia got really mad and started beating people up, and cops are coming. So he moved the location somewhere, uh, and they found that one. So then he moved it again where it was just it was just a flagpole. And the, the camera's pointed at the sky. You remember that? And people use the sound of airplane noises and the, the angle of the fucking sun to find the exact location of the flag that Shia LaBeouf had put in the wilderness. And then they used a drone to steal it. And then he had to start putting it in, like, art museums and they broke in through the rooftop. Like, that's what the internet is, Keffels. That's, when you put a challenge in front of people, 
That's when you tell them I'm in hiding, you'll never find me. They're going to start doing CSI shit with doorknobs. So they found Keffels uh, somewhere, I think like England or Ireland. I, I don't fucking know. They, they found them. They, they will, he will not divide at us, uh, Keffels, and found them with their collective autism. Uh, and now, now apparently being posted on 4chan. So I guess 4chan's next, right? If Kiwi Farms is terrible, 4chan must be, must be next because this was one of uh, Keffels' more recent tweets right before this stream started. Uh, yesterday I was uh, ending the stream where I gave updates on Drop Kiwi Farms campaign. This was posted online just outside my address. Shortly afterwards, North or Northern, okay, so Ireland, uh, Northern Ireland police came to the apartment I'm staying in because someone had attempted to swat me. And can we, let me just, let me just enhance a little bit here, folks. Hold on one second. I'm going to need to, going to need to get some CSI boys out here. There's something of interest in this picture that I, I think we need to take a look at. Let me just uh, put that up there. There we go. Let's just zoom in on the note that the person had. Now, I don't know, chat. Um, can you read along with me? So, uh, it, it, dead names, dead names. Uh, I'll protect you, Keffels, and just refer to you as Ukas. Uh, Ukas out of our community. Ewe Farms, all trunes, <laughs> something sister Kiwi Farms Force for Sneed and uh, uh, sisters. Uh, Hail Josh the Corn Lord. But what does that bottom thing say? Ethan Gunt Ralph told me to do this. Uh oh, chat. Uh oh, chat. Now I know that Ralph was all saying that that uh, that police report was 100% accurate. Oh my God, you know, MTG's been swatted, and it's the staff at Kiwi Farms that did it. Did Ethan Ralph of the Ralph retort? Is this him? I haven't. Have you seen Ethan Ralph lately? I haven't. Did Ethan Ralph personally go to Northern Ireland and then wanted to get some credit and said, Ethan Ralph told me to do this. What is Ethan Ralph telling people to do? Shit, Nick, you already had two people getting arrested for connection with, with your group in Baked Alaska. Now Ethan Ralph is directing people to, ho to holler at her? That's terrible. Ralph, what are you doing? There it is. I mean, that's Keffel's, that's Keffel's account. I don't know what's going on, buddy. I don't know what you're doing. I disavow. Let me just say this. Dis I fully disavow, Ethan. You shouldn't be doing that. It's terrible. Absolutely fucking terrible. I can't believe you're doing it. Think of all the trauma that poor Keffels has gone through. Ethan Ralph out there directing, directing shenanigans. Ralph, what are you doing? <laughs> what the fuck are you doing, buddy? In fact, I think I need to, we need to do a poll. Um, <laughs> is Ethan Ralph guilty of this? Okay, let's uh, let's let that poll. I put that poll up. I know there's always a bit of a delay, but we'll let some people uh, vote on it. We've seen what Keffel says. Do we take Keffels at their word? Is Ethan Ralph guilty of this? Have they been sending people to holla at Queen Kefals? You know, while you're voting that uh, that poll, let me remind you of who we're talking about here. Where, where is it? Oh, here we go. <laughs> is this man behind the reign of terror that's going on right now, chat? Look into his eye. At least one of them. They both point in different directions. And ask yourself, is he responsible? Who has the most to gain from making Kiwi Farms go down? Ethan Ralph does. Who hates Joshua Connor Moon more than anyone on the internet? Ethan Ralph does. Who would benefit the most from a false flag? Ethan Ralph would. Look at this mastermind. I'm thinking. I'm thinking it's a yeah. I'm thinking that note was a little bit of too much honesty. What does the chat say? How guilty is Ralph? <laughs> is Ethan Ralph guilty of this? So far, one minute in, 92% out of the 4,300 that have voted have said yes. Guilty as sin. Send that man to jail. Oh, Ralph, you've, you fucked up, buddy. You got caught. The chat's on to you. I'm thinking I'm, th I'm gonna have to have gonna have to go with the majority here. Too many votes to ignore. Far too many votes to ignore. Look at the face of terror. <laughs> Look at the face of terror that's hunting down Keffel's enter 
<laughs> internationally. Maybe it was you, Ethan Ralph. <laughs> Maybe it was you. Oh, he's a he's a fixin' to holler. Okay. Fair enough. We've had two minutes of votes. Let's see what the final result is. Uh, 5,100 votes in. Still consistent. 92% say Ralph is guilty of sin. 8% saying no. Those 8% must be confused. Clearly he's guilty of sin. But there we go. <laughs> Queen Kiffles. Oh, Ralph, what are you doing? What are you doing? You know, when I talked about this and said it's a larger issue uh, than just simply a fight between Kiwi Farms and Keffels, it is. I, I think anybody uh, pretty much knows the reality of what we're dealing with online at this point, don't you? And we all experience it daily at this point. Uh, it is a very restrictive environment. If you say things that aren't uh, considered to be uh, what's promoted, uh, you're deplatformed or you're banned or you're thrown off or you're demonetized. We saw that coming. I talked about that years ago. So did a lot of other people. I mean, it was very obvious kind of the direction it was heading. Clean up the internet, commercialize it more, get rid of the elements we don't like, segregate them out, and silence them. And that's gone on now for quite some time, to the point where I bet if you wanted to go on Twitter or on Facebook or on YouTube, where we are right now, there are just things you can't say. There are opinions you can't say. And that happens to everybody. I know Ralph likes to go on about, oh, Daddy Jim won't say a bad word on YouTube. How many bad words is Ralph saying on that verified Twitter account? None. Because he knows if he does, it's gone. You know if you say certain things, you're gone. And so we exist in an internet where there are few and far between places where people can go and say what they want to say. I know there's been a big argument about how, how are people going to defend QE Farms. Um, I'm not. I'm not going to sit here and tell you Q Farms is a great place. It's a shit heap. And I love it that it's a shit heap. It's a place where people go and they're mean. And they say mean shit. Kiwi Farms is a place where people go to gossip and be assholes. And there aren't very many of those places left. They get knocked off every year. As uh, the main social media platforms and the main video platforms get more restrictive, these secondary sites, which some are large and some are small, are getting knocked off one by one. There used to be an 8chan, doesn't exist anymore. Now they want to get rid of Kiwi Farms. Encyclopedia Dramatica, whether it's up or down, do you think that's going to last? And then what do you have left, 4chan? How long do you think 4chan is going to last? Got rid of 8chan, want to get rid of Kiwi, want to get rid of Ad. What do you think is going to happen to 4chan then? There's your anonymous image port. It's going to go. And then you will really have nowhere to go. When those large providers, whether they're an image board or a forum, are gone, the places that let you say the things you want to say to be an asshole like you really are, like we all really are at heart, when they're gone, they're fucking gone. They'll be small places. They'll exist fractionally, but they won't be loud. You'll be presented with the choice of say what you want and have no one hear it or say what we tell you and be allowed in the conversation. That's what useful idiots do. That's what grifters and con men perpetuate. They knock out the places you like to go to say the things you want to say. And when they serve their purpose, they're cannonballed out and nobody remembers them, but the damage is left behind. This fight between Kiwi Farms and Keffels is a uh, part of that. You know, these uh, pieces and players aren't as important as that overarching uh, conversation. If you let them do what they're trying to do right now, it won't end with Kiwi Farms just like it didn't end with h -Jet. It will continue on. Think of the amount of places that used to let you do stuff that don't anymore. Look at the saga of Something Awful. Even before Low Tax went uh, uh, crazy on his gold, gold berry cookies or whatever the fuck they were, uh, you know, and all the shit that happened with him, you could see the transformation slowly become more restrictive until he was forced out and had to sell, and then it, it became more censored. Look at something like NeoGAF and Reset Era. It got so bad that eventually the fucking site uh, broke in half it, because it was so fucking restrictive. And it was their argument wasn't that it was, <laughs> it was too restrictive. It wasn't restrictive enough. We need Reset Era. We need to make it even more authoritarian. I bet there are a lot of websites that you use, whether it's well-known 2.0 social media or even the older shit, 
where you just can't fucking say anything anymore. You just can't. And I, that's a horrible kind of internet to have. Yes, people are going to be assholes on Kiwi Farms. Yes, people are going to say atrocious shit. Yes, they're going to make shit up just to get a laugh. Yeah, they're going to they're gonna, uh, do all sorts of shit. But that's the fucking internet. Or that's what the internet was. When people could say what the fuck they wanted to say. Now, Kefos wants to attribute deaths to Kiwi Farms and say, people were driven to suicide. I don't believe it. I outright reject it. I don't believe that's true. But let's take an example of where that could be true. Let's talk about 4chan. How many fucking times, uh, I, can't, I can't even count how many times I've seen somebody blow their fucking head off with a shotgun because of R9K. How many suicide threads do you think you've seen on 4chan? I've seen a few. How many murder threads have you seen on 4chan? I've seen a few. So if the justification to get rid of Kiwi Farms is that, I guarantee you the pressure that will be mounted will be on 4chan next. I guarantee it. They won't stop. They're not going to say, oh, well, we think, we think people killed themselves because of Kiwi Farms. They're going to pull up WebMs of people blowing their heads off with shotguns and say, look, that's, that's 4chan. That's R9K. That's Pole. That's B. That needs to be getting rid of. That needs to be taken down. Needs to be sanitized. Can't sell a Toyota with that here. That is not an internet I fucking want. That's not an internet you should want. We shouldn't be co-signing a quickened death of the last few places where you can actually just fucking talk on the internet. And that's, that's what we're dealing with. And why are we dealing with that? Because a grifter wants to make money? I mean, there's more to it. Let's talk about some of the statements Keffels made that actually drew attention to them after people started digging into them. And I'm just going to focus on shit that's archived, right, on their Twitter. This is shit they just publicly said. But it'll give you an idea of why people are fucking fed up with this shit. So let me uh, let me pull up some of these, and let's just let's take a look, because this is just from last year, last year before they began their ratioing crusade on the internet. Uh, so here's the first one from back in June from Keffel's account. Uh, to all turfs who might read this, I've assisted at least a dozen minors getting on hormone replacement therapy, cope and seethe. Somebody asked, uh, tell me how. I used to help run a youth group for trans people ages 12 to 20, and we helped them by directing them to informed consent clinics where they could start taking hormones and show them how to use the medical system to get it covered by government health insurance if they need it. So this is kind of when Keffels is starting to talk about getting uh, young children below the age of consent, under 18, into taking hormone replacement therapy, into transitioning. Now, they frame it initially as... It was a youth group. We sent them to government clinics. But as it goes on, it changes. The story changes. As a former trans kid who is now a trans adult, I want to say to all the young trans people who follow me, I love you. I care about you. I will fight for you. We will win. There is hope for people like us in the world. They cannot and will not keep us down. This is from March of this year. If anyone feels lonely and needs to talk to, uh, the Discord community on Twitch is a great place. So Keffels last year is talking about how they're going to provide uh, services and direct people to how to transition while they're underage. Now they're inviting them into the Discord to talk about it. But we go further. This is from June of this year. So a year after they said it was government clinics and informed consent. Now they're saying, I am proud to announce I'm sponsoring the do-it-yourself HRT directory. Healthcare is a human right and no one should be denied gender-affirming care because of anti-trans extremists in office, deny trans people their rights. This directory has saved lives and will continue in the future. They follow that up with, when I was covering it on stream, a teenager from Texas in chat said they, uh, when the ban on people under 18 receiving gender-affirming care happened, he used this directory to continue his medical transition. This is the path forward to help kids affected by these laws. I want you to understand what you're fucking hearing here. This is Keffels initially saying, I only provide resources from sanctioned clinics and the government to people that are under 18 for transitioning, to then saying, come visit me in my Discord to talk about what you can do, to then saying, here's a DIY approach to do it. Here's how we're going to uh, provide care for people under the age of 18. Uh, To all the people coming to my profile because they are fans of Libs of TikTok, I'm not a teacher, you can't get me fired. I'm going to teach them uh, the kids who watch me on Twitch every day and that's okay to love themselves. 
They are teenagers who are uh, the courage to come out and have started transitioning because of my streams. I don't give a single shit about what you think. Call me a groomer if you want. History will absolve me. Just sponsored this. This is uh, the same thing. So every time you call me a groomer, it makes me go harder. So you tell me, do you think it's safe for some random internet person to teach your underage child how to brew up a DIY HRT? Are, are we talking, is this like prohibition? Bathtub gin? Uh, like what, what, what DIY HRT? So you're going to tell them how to order chemicals online from stores that might not be reputable, how to cut it, synthesize it, mix it together, and then start taking it. And what if you get a dumb fucking 11 year old Keffels? that takes your DIY thing and doesn't measure it right or tries to take it in a way that uh, is different than how you might have put it up there. And over uh, not overdoses, but I don't know, hits the wrong veins, puts it in themselves the wrong way, gets a bad batch of shit from Mexico, that Chinese website that gave them the portion they needed. It wasn't actually estrogen. <laughs> it, was, it was sulfuric acid. Who fucking knows? So you're going to provide this information to par or to children behind their parents' back, teach them how to brew it in their bathtub, how to take it, and be unapologetic about it. And then when people say, well, that's fucked up, then you start going on a spree about how you're uh, you know, being persecuted, how it's anti-trans, how this is wrong, how dare you say this is wrong. It is. It's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. It's absolutely, it's absolutely insane, Keffels. You know how many people in the uh, United States are diabetic? Do you know how many people are directing them to go out and uh, bathtub brew some fucking insulin? <laughs> probably nobody. Uh, sure, it might be possible, but you probably end up killing some people because of shit that's going to happen. And those are adults. And here you are talking about, uh, you know, HRT treatments. It, it's just insane. It's insane. There's no oversight. There's no, there's no safety precautions. You're telling children. Children are just naturally fucking stupid. Children will make stupid mistakes. Children will uh, not listen to important details. They're going to mix shit up in the wrong quantities. They're going to take it in the wrong way. They're going to do irreparable harm to their fucking bodies. They're going to go through mood swings and all sorts of crazy shit. And their parent, who's uninformed by this, is going to have no idea what the fuck is happening because you took them into the Discord to do this. And you're unapologetic about it. And then when a website like Kiwi Farms or a streamer like Destiny or whoever the hell else out there talks about it and says, that's fucked up, you shouldn't do that, then you're going to get them, you know, quote-unquote, clapped. You're going to get the website taken down. You're going to get them demonetized, uh, deplatformed, banned, silenced. Because, oh, you can't, what? You can't say that this is insane and the wrong thing to do? I don't even need to go into Catboy Ranch and all that crazy shit with uh, fucking uh, teenagers wearing uh, dog collars and shit. And I, you know... <laughs> It's in the thread. If people want to read it, it's in your thread about that shit. What I'm more focused on is the blatant hypocrisy, which, I mean, why would any, if hypocrisy is a dime a dozen on the internet, but just how bad you are at hiding it and the power grab that's very obvious and the grifting for victim points and money and power that you're doing. And uh, especially the idea that you just, you don't think that what you're doing is wrong in relation to teaching kids how to make bathtub gen estrogen, <laughs> which is probably a terrible fucking idea. Uh, yes. Oh, I like that. Somebody in chat said it's Troonshine. Can we, can somebody copyright that name? I brought up some old Troonshine. Fantastic chat. I like that one. I like that one a lot. I'm, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> it's good. It's got a real good ring to it. Oh, I just, I feel like we've reached a point. Uh, uh, <laughs> we've already been at this point. I, I suppose what I'm trying to do with this sort of stream is just, and this is why I'm just using shit from Twitter. Just archive shit from Twitter. Don't need to pull out anything else. You know, people will generally tell you what they really are, um, and they'll tell you it quite loudly. And even if they try subtlety, it'll break through it. And I think Keffels has made it pretty clear what they're about and what they want and who they are. 
I don't see some, you know, brave trans activist uh, that's trying to fight the good fight and was bullied for no reason. Uh, I see somebody that likes to start shit because they want fame and attention who got, you know, shit started and made money off it and wants to start even more shit, wants to throw their weight around, wants to do goofy shit. And you're not going to hear the press report on it, the HRT stuff, the, the true and shine uh, or any of that stuff because it doesn't fit with the narrative. And, you know, a, a great case in point when it comes to Keffels wanting attention and uh, fame rather than, you know, fighting the good fight. Here's a great example. What, uh, what accounts do you think that Keffels blocks on Twitter? There are a lot of people that'll post a screenshot that says blocked by Keffels. Those are small accounts. Now, if Keffels doesn't want to be harassed and small accounts are harassing them and they're blocking them, ask yourself, why aren't they blocking the bigger ones? Quarantine Koof didn't get blocked. Diorio and others didn't get blocked because you can't quote tweet them in ratio. You can't say, look, here's my villain of the week. Give me more money. It's very obvious. If you felt you were being harassed, you'd be blocking all accounts. No, you block small accounts and leave big ones up because you want that ratio. You want that attention. You want that money. You want to grift shit. That's, it's clear as day. Your actions are clear as day. And now you're, you're hopping flights from one country to the next because Ethan Ralph is sending people to your apartment, I guess. Uh, people are looking at fucking doorknobs. You're Shia LaBeouf, Keffels. You've turned yourself into Shia LaBeouf. It's reached outside of Kiwi Farms now. Now other people are paying attention and going, what the fuck is this? What goofy shit is this? And of course you want that. Because it's more, it's more villains. Everybody that laughs at you is a villain that must want you dead. Right? That hates trans people. This, that must be what's going on. You know, there's a Key and Peel sketch, I think, that sums your ass up perfectly. It's these two guys in an office. One very quiet, one very flamboyant. Right? The flamboyant guy is super gay. And, like, he's sitting there and he's just outright in your face about it. Got dildos and everything else being super obnoxious, he keeps calling the other guy, he keeps telling him, you're homophobic, you're homophobic, you're you're terrible, you hate gay people, as he's licking a dildo, right? And then uh, a few minutes pass, and it's lunchtime, and the quiet guy gets up, and his boyfriend greets him, and, and they walk away. And the flamboyant guy turns around and goes, oh, maybe I'm not persecuted, uh, maybe I'm just a fucking asshole. Keffels, maybe you're not persecuted, maybe you're just a dick. Have you ever considered maybe you just have an unlikable personality and you do stupid shit on the internet and people just kind of don't like you? Not because of the trans thing, but just you as a person they find to be just unpleasant? <laughs> they don't like you particularly? Has that ever crossed your mind? you ever consider that a possibility? Uh, yeah, go look it up, chat. It's a great, it's a great sketch. I think it really sums it up pretty perfectly. It's pretty fucking dead on. I'll be honest with you. <sighs> so I don't know. I don't know what phase three is going to be. I don't know what 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 wonders await us for phase three because Cloudflare has fallen flat on its face. Uh, that's not going to happen. Maybe they'll create more pressure. I don't know. I know more articles are coming out. Uh, I, I think Josh keeps posting up <laughs> keeps posting up emails where they keep asking him questions and he just replies with the press are scum. So, you know, my guess is uh, this will go on for another, let's say, week and a half to two weeks. And they will use uh, examples of bigger accounts to get those ass pats and those ratios and make a few bucks, you know, right, you know, get a little more on that GoFundMe and that uh, Patreon. And then they're going to try to parlay this. This is what I think will happen. They're going to try to parlay this into an organization. So we start with the website and the uh, grassroots activism. And then they're going to make an organization. Remember bully hunters? Something like that. So they're going to make their own uh, bully hunter organization. And that's when the grifting really starts. Because, oh boy, are they going to be asking for really big... We need millions of dollars to, to fight this. It's not just Kiwi Farms. It's those, it's those goddamn 4 too. And those idiots over at Encyclopedia Dramatica, we need to take them all out. We need to burn it all to the ground. We're going to need millions and millions and millions of dollars. You know, I, 
I'm sure there are a lot of people that have problems with Kiwi Farms, and I'm sure a lot of people could go out and start their own hashtag and uh, uh, try to take it down. And maybe you'd have success. I don't know. But I'd ask you, if you're on that side and you really hate Kiwi Farms and you don't like Null and you want that gone for whatever your fucking reason is, take a look at who Keffels is. Just how they act on social media. And ask yourself, is that the person you want to stand next to as you embark on this journey of going against those gosh darn Kiwis? Or would you be better off you know, doing it on your own? Because Keffels is not the martyr, the civil rights leader. They're not the freedom fighter that they are trying to pretend to be. They just want to make a buck. They want to get powerful and popular. And they want to uh, just put on a show to make themselves the center of attention. And it has jack shit to do with trans people, trans rights, or trans suicide. That doesn't mean a fucking thing to them. It's just smoke and mirrors. You're having smoke blown up your ass. Keffels just wants to use you, and they don't give a shit. You would be better off trying it on your own. Oh. <laughs> what a fucking... It's been, it's been uh, an entertaining show to watch this happen in real time. Because I've noticed Keffels, um, when you don't respond the way they want you to, again, they want to paint you as a villain. When you don't respond as a villain and just laugh at them and point out the stupid shit they say, uh, they spiral out of control. And you can really see that play out over the last week as they've made outrageous statements and said stupid things and then had to delete it to make themselves look better. Um, so I don't know, you know, I'm sure it's going to go into an organization, but maybe Keffels does something monumentally stupid in the meantime. I, I don't know. But I'm going to watch it, have some popcorn ready. It's a hell of a show. Right now, if I had to gauge who's winning the war between Kiwi Farms and Keffels, I'm actually very impressed that Noel has hold, held on as long as he has. Like, I thought, okay, they're going to get the media together. Uh, they're going to, you know, just hammer the shit out of this. They're going to put pressure on these companies. And uh, these companies are going to fold. Uh, but every step of the way, there's little Josh. There's our wizard. Let me, let me put up wizard Josh, the boy that lived, bitch. <laughs> you thought you thought you had him down, but he's the boy that lived. There we go. <laughs> That's a picture of Josh. So uh, there's little Josh using his wand out there. Uh, doing magic, I guess. I don't know. I'd have to give it to Kiwi. Uh, they, he somehow got the site back up. He got a you know a fully restored, working, uh, with all the DDoS shit going on, with all the pressure being applied, with all the finances being attacked, with all the platforms and people being screamed at. Little Kiwi Farms, shithole of the internet, is still holding on. Because this boy knows magic. Oh, was this the was this the fabled book that uh, Rowling never released? Was this was this the uh, Harry Potter and the Tale of Trunshine? Was that the one that was supposed to come out after Half Blood Prince, but we never got it? Is this like a is this like an arg that Rowling has put together for us to advertise the brand new book coming out we never expected, and everybody's just uh, playing a part in it? <laughs> Keffels and Josh are part of the marketing team we just never knew. How would that story start? There's Keffels in potions class, stealing stealing from Snape to help all the younger students at the school transition. And here comes Harry with his wand. He's not going to let it happen. Damn you, Gryffindor bastards! If you hadn't have got if you hadn't have gotten in my way, I would have taken all those potions. <laughs> Everybody would have transitioned. At least forty percent of the school. I see. Yeah, I see. Chat has a lot of. Chad has a lot of subtitles uh, for possibility storylines. I understand. Beautiful. Well done. <laughs> oh. I will say, uh, you know, uh, aside from all this, uh, thank fuck. Like, you know, Ralph being a buffoon every month and Nick doing stupid shit occasionally. Like, uh, just it's a breath of fresh air. Now I, now I can watch Keffels. Now I can watch Keffels do stupid shit. And that mentality, by the way, is part of the reason Kiwi Farms is popular. Uh, people like to watch train wrecks. People like to watch goofy people do stupid shit, and they like to say mean stuff and laugh about it. That's no. That's everybody does that. 
your favorite live streamers that you watch, I guarantee, will talk about groups of people or events or uh, things that have happened that are stupid or goofy or wrong, and you'll say mean shit, and you'll laugh about it, and you love it. Kiwi Farms is that in, <laughs> in forum format. It's uh, Encyclopedia Dramatica in forum format. It's 4chan in forum format. You know, people like that kind of entertainment. Is that wrong? That's a philosophical <laughs> conversation you need to have with the nature of what people are. I'm just saying the reality is we all like to laugh at dumbasses. Right? I think at the end of the day, chat, would you agree? Should, should we do one final poll? Do we like to laugh at stupid people? Let me ask the community. Maybe, maybe I'm alone here. But I have a feeling a majority of us do. I, I have a feeling a majority of us do. Oh, we got an overwhelming 98% so far. Oh. <laughs> uh, uh, one second, chat. I've got a, 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 a visitors. I'm not sure which kind of visitors. Ooh, we'll see which one it is. Uh, give me one moment, chat. I'll be right back. A few moments later. Okay. And we're back. And we're back, chat. Uh, thank you for the potato delivery. <laughs> That's I've got a lot of potatoes now. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with them all. Now, I'm a fan of shepherd's pie, which is very delicious. I also like a good baked potato with a steak. So, you know, I, I can roll with any of that, really. Let me see if I can get you a picture. <laughs> a picture of my glorious potatoes. Oh, you'll have to wait one second. Oh, I believe my wife said it was DoorDash that was delivered. I don't know how it works, but I'll get you a picture of the potatoes if I can here. Okay. I'm just, I'm waiting on, <laughs> I'm waiting on uh, the picture to be sent of me of uh, the potatoes. Just one second. Uh, here we go. Let me just, um, I guess I have to download it. Okay. <laughs> One second, chat. Okay. Let me, let me pull it up. Let me pull it up. <laughs> show you, <laughs> show you what was delivered. Quite a few potatoes too, if I may add. Okay, hold on. Where did this get put? It's <laughs> a very big picture. Let's see if we can get it up so you can see it. <laughs> can you uh, chat? Can you see the spuds? Are the spuds coming in? It's a it's a, <laughs> it's a lot of potatoes. <laughs> ah, it lasts me through the winter. <laughs> Spud Chud Bros. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Spud Chud Bros. Oh, we're talking a lot of potatoes. <laughs> it's a fuck ton of potatoes. Yes, has it turned into the year of the Spud rather than the year of the Chud? Maybe. Maybe. Oh, wait a minute. You know what, chat? I just thought of something. Um, hold on a second. Uh, I'm going to have to get rid of the potato picture just for one minute. I've had somebody deliver potatoes to me, so things have escalated, and now I need to go into hiding. Chat, 
Potatoes have been delivered. Tactical potatoes have been deployed. I'm being spud bombed as we speak, and things have escalated, and I now I need to go into hiding, chat. And the only way I can afford that uh, is is by selling merchandise. Remember to go to the Selfie store and buy yourself a, a fantastic hat or a sweater. Buy two. I'm being potato hunted. They're changing the year of the chat into the year of the spud. Look at this harassment, this bigotry. I'm sending an Irish person potatoes. Clearly, this is a death threat. <laughs> Clearly, I need to be. I need to go into hiding. Terrible things are happening. Too many spuds are being delivered. The only way to fight against this intolerance is by buying shit from me, because I uh, have to go into hiding because things have now escalated. Terrible. Terrible. Churlish and chicanerous. All right. Where were we on the poll, by the way? Uh, do we like to laugh at stupid people? Uh, let's see. 6,890 votes. Pretty good Pretty good sample size. Uh, 98% said yes. We like to laugh at stupid people. 2% said no. 3%. Oh, it changed a little. I'm going to go. You know, Now, this may be mean, but I'm going to guess maybe the 3% that said no are the stupid people being laughed at by the 97% that said yes. Could that be what's happening with this poll right now? Are the 97% bully jerks laughing at those poor three percenters? Maybe. Potentially, possibly. <sighs> I'm full of wrath right now. Oh, God, I forgot that tweet, too. Oh, I'm very wrathful right now. Very angry right now. So, that is the great internet kerfuffle. At least as it stands. I, I think you get the, the broader picture of what the larger issue is of the people involved. Is Josh Moon a good person? No, I, it, probably not. Is Kiwi Farms a, a, a good website? No, it's a shit heap. Should it be ripped off the internet? No, absolutely not. Should we be letting people like Keffels dictate where we can go and what we can say? Fuck no. Is Keffels a freedom fighter? Nope. Is Keffels looking to make money and get popular? Most definitely. Is Keffels uh, doing some shit behind the scenes that's bad? Uh, it seems like it. Brewing up uh, uh, Trunshine in the bathtub, probably a fucking bad idea. I, I'd say that's a, a bad thing. Probably going to you know end up getting somebody hurt eventually because people are stupid and don't follow directions well. So I'm glad our little wizard boy uh, found a way to keep the website up. Uh, I look forward to watching what happens with this. I'm sure it'll develop. I'm sure there's going to be an organization made. It just seems like the next natural step to make lots more money. Um, will Kiwi Farms win the day at the end? Will they stay up? I, I don't know. Shit could turn on a dime, man. The internet moves fast. But if they go down, others will too. You know, HN went down. A couple years later, Kiwi goes down. And then you got Ed and 4chan. And once they're gone, what do you have? Where are you going to go? What are you going to say? You're going to be muzzled like we're all muzzled on every social media platform and every streaming platform. And it's not even going to be just, uh, you know, that small nudge towards not saying certain words. It's going to devolve into every place becoming like Twitch. Where even if something is said uh, that isn't directed at anybody, but it's, you know, an opinion they don't like, you're gone. Uh, if you behave off-platform in a way they don't like, you're gone. That's the kind of, uh, uh, you know, pressure you're going to start feeling once all these other places are gone. And if you're a smaller site a smaller image board or a smaller forum, uh, your ass is going to get chopped in half at the first sign of trouble. You're, 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 you're going to get, you're going to get your shit pushed in because you're too small to fight back. You know, part of this is uh, given its size, Kiwi farms, you know, same would have it with 4chan and a few others, at least can get attention on it. So people can watch this circus play out. But yeah, yeah. Just, just watch, watch social media, watch how they behave and what they say. And it's clear as day. Uh, that Keffels is in this, not for the good fight, but to make money, to get popular, and to throw their weight around. That's all it is. And they'll sacrifice a good time and opinions they don't like to make that happen by playing international uh, uh, martyr and international victim flying from country to country. Oh. I, if people are saying no wants on, I wouldn't even know how to do that. What, what we're not even on the same social media shit. A 
let's see. Uh, Josh said they're planning subsequent attacks as in for women by women spaces. And well, yeah, I did hear that. Build your own internet? No. <laughs> I've seen people try that shit. Oh, I see people are fucking with me. Chris Chan is outside my house now. Is that where he went? After breaking out of prison? Listen, I can't, there's no way I can pull him on right now if he does want on. I will do a stream with Noel if Noel actually wants to do a stream talking about the situation. Uh, but it'll have to be later on, maybe on his, or I'll set up one for like next Saturday or the Saturday after. And we could talk about the more interesting details of Keffels. Because like I said, I mostly try to confine this to what they're doing on social media and the shit they're saying in regards to the site, that sort of stuff. Uh, I do know there is a bunch of fucking more uh, in regards to Keffels and what Keffels has said and done and associated with and the people that Keffels is running on. So maybe a follow-up stream. I don't know. But we'll see where it goes. My voice is shit, by the way, folks. So I'm going to have to heal it with some hot potatoes. Um, you've had a busy couple weeks. Yes, um, I have been nonstop working on shit for the last three weeks. I'm actually a little bit stressed out. <laughs> uh, uh, are, you, are you a tiny bit stressed out? Yeah. Yeah, I'm. I usually handle um, stress pretty well, but it, it, there usually it breaks after a little bit. But this has been nonstop, and every time it looks like there's a breakthrough, there's always something else that happens that's a bit more challenging. So, uh, well, I mean, kind of I, I I heard like to calm your nerves and stuff. People have been telling me like if you if you ever get too anxious or paranoid or just you know stressed out, um, you have a little troon shine. Apparently, calms you right down. Uh, it takes the edge off. But I've been scared to make any in my bathtub. I don't know. Many, many software developers and other people in the IT field are actually uh, large consumers of the Trune Shine. Uh, it's 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 almost an epidemic in the IT field. Uh, it, you walk into you know uh, office and open open concept office space with cubicles, and you just see that half of them are on it at that at the exact moment that they're that they're working. Even so, it's, it's a see now. I have a theory about the IT field. Um, you know, when the pandemic hit, everybody wanted to work from home. And I know a lot of like the IT guys uh, could do like remote work. And my thought is the reason so many people in like IT want to do remote work is if you gathered them all in one central office space, the smell of ax wounds would make everybody vomit to death and pass out. Does that sound accurate? I've actually never worked in an office. I, I'm sure. I'm sure it, nowadays it is. And now that's why people are more productive when they spread out. You, you put them in different in their homes. And well, you, yeah, you want to, You want them to spread out at home, not in the office with their legs open, because the smell of the decay would probably drop you to the floor. Probably choke you out. That's actually their secret weapon. That's how they get what they want. They say, "We're going to go sit on your furniture in your office. <laughs> You'll never it, get it out." <laughs> it, it, it's it's time to talk about a raise. Let me open my legs a little bit and let's discuss my hourly rate. Yeah, if not, I can just sit on all the upholstery, and you can have fun with that shit. So, do you want to outline? Like, I, I think a lot of people are familiar with, uh, obviously, how it all started, right? Uh, with Keffels and everything like that. But just like your last, I don't know, week, week and a half of dealing with these different companies and uh, what, what's gone on. Because, I mean, you had redundancies in place. You had backups and stuff. But uh, it seems like either their reach uh, of these people was greater than anticipated or people buckled quicker than most would expect but it seems like you've been kind of running around trying to get stuff set up and uh, having you you know getting kneecapped by people left and right i mean do you want to talk about that or can you yeah i can because it's it basically how, how do i want to word this just just as a vegas timeline uh this person keffels who is like the spearhead of it it's it's there's so much to talk about in regards to it too, because it's it's almost um, inappropriate to say that it's Keffels because Keffels really hasn't done anything. Keffels' biggest accomplishment has been to take credit for everything and to coordinate. Well, people. yeah, I, I I absolutely agree with that. It feels to me like they're a figurehead, you know what yeah. I mean? Or yeah. like they're the mask that other people are wearing. You get and that feeling too. There's more. There's a lot to say about that, uh, but just for the sake of the timeline, Keffels. Sure. Um, 
it has a f- spat with Destiny. They hate. I don't know what the fuck the issue is with Destiny that they have, but it's like a long-standing, like contemptuous relationship between the two. He didn't. He didn't want to suck the trans clit. I think is what it came down to. He does though. He he. I think he fucks femboys. I think that he cheats on his wife with femboys. I I. So well, I, here's the here's the okay. Here's the great debate. Now is Destiny into fucking traps, right? Which would just be boys playing pretend, and then they're guys afterwards. Or is he into axe wounds i don't think he's into axe wounds i think he just nobody wants is a trap nobody is right. I, the, the, I, I think he just wants a trap <laughs> there was um our, god this is a, a callback but remember the amazing atheist how could i forget him pouring oil on his dick <laughs> <laughs> yeah. he, he did like a movie review about um the human centipede and he said you know there's probably people who would want to be at the head of the centipede and there's probably people who want to be at the bottom of the centipede but there's probably nobody who wants to be in the middle of the centipede like that that touches nobody's kink i think that's the the way that that the post ops are it's like you got people who want to fuck traps and you got people who want to fuck women nobody wants to fuck the acone that's not a thing that does not exist that fetish Right, because everybody has like this. Uh, I mean, like the video I did, uh, the how the sausage is made. Like everybody has this preconceived notion of what the, it's like a fantasized, fetishized version, right? They they really think it's like anime or something else where, um, you know, some magic bullshit happens and suddenly I'm a pretty girl. But like when you see the results of the surgery, no, 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 that's not at all what it looks like. Well, especially for the uh, female to male ones, man, they get butchered to shit. Oh, well, I mean, it's terrible for, for everybody because, like, it, it works both ways. With the, the male to females, the, the, the act of neutering actually reduces their sex drive. And since the sex drive is the, the cause of the autogenophilia, a lot of them immediately regret it because now they don't have the sexual urge to, um, to cross-dress and to, to play as woman. Uh, but the the female to males, they have. I, I I went on about this in my last stream, but they have like this romanticized concept of what a homosexual relationship is, and it's just it's men who get shit on their dick is the, is the reality. Being a man is <laughs> it, is gross, and you know they, they when they are accepted as men and treated like other men, they're apul- repulsed by it because men like the 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 mental headcanon of what a gay relationship is like and what actually hanging out with men is like and dating other men is like is is not what they had in, in mind um so it, it really it's it's a nightmare we're going to be dealing with the repercussions of what we've done to thousands of kids for for decades we have really fucked up there's gonna and i guarantee you there's like a like you know how the 70s and 60s had like those headlines of continuous serial killers who were like the you know the street walker that shit's coming back in force we're gonna have so many fucking serial killers who are like castrated and can only get off by murdering women that that's all coming back well it's gonna be even worse because yeah because they're not gonna have an outlet for the rage usually like there's some kind of weird uh, sexual psycho uh, violence thing like those are all components but it's gonna be pure vengeance right i mean it's gonna be people that are are butchered and they're gonna feel like society and their parents and doctors and everybody um was just okay with it and they have no way of reversing it yeah and uh, don't forget if you've ever read the industrial society in its future by dr theodore kaczynski uh, he actually had a gender identity crisis and ended up in a gender uh, like clinic w- way back when, even decades ago. And he saw all the other people around him who were in the various tr- stages of transitioning, and he thought, "This is fucking disgusting." And that was one of the key factors that played in him becoming the Unabomber. God, do you think do you think that was far enough back that he could have like uh, run into uh, John Money? Um. Maybe. Dr. Okay. John Money yeah, yeah, was the guy that did the experiment with the twins where he's he, like, oh, I'm going to transition one of them. And then he the kid killed himself and then the other one killed himself. You can find this out for certain because he actually names the clinic. There was only a couple of them and this one was in Colorado, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I, I, I could imagine Kaczynski <laughs> looking around at that and being like, yeah, I and I think I'll stick to my mail, my <laughs> to mailing people letters. Yeah. But, uh, okay, so Destiny, I don't know what the issue is with them, but they wanted to get Destiny banned from everything, uh, and... Oh, it- yeah, okay, I'm sorry, I do remember this, yeah, so, I mean, essentially it boils down to Destiny disagreed. It was yeah. some, just, yeah, he disagreed, I mean, anybody that's watched a Destiny stream uh, knows he's not on there, you know, screaming uh, death to troons and shit like that. He disagreed over something, and that's, uh, I guess, was enough to send the ratio squad after his ass. Yeah, it was. I can't even remember specifically. It was, it was a, like a general disagreement about something extremely 
benign. It, it was probably the fucking HRT for kids thing. Because that's the main... I mean, st- right. I, I think we could all agree, at the end of the day, Destiny, this is all Destiny's fault. <laughs> the yeah, internet's it's falling Destiny's apart. Fault. It's Fuck all him. Destiny's fault. Remember that, chat. It's all his fault. When the internet collapses, we're going to be looking back at Destiny. There's going to be pictures of him all greasy with his hair, like, matted to his forehead and shit. And that's going to be <laughs> what we teach kids. Yep, this is a man that killed the internet. Um, but we, I made fun of uh, Keffels for that, because I'd never heard of them before. I was like, what a weirdo. T- like, gloating about deplatforming people. Is this where we're at now? And it's like, I, I, little did I know that, yes, that's like how they d- derive all forms of validation in their life. Oh, that's, that's their dopamine hit, yeah. Uh, so months pass. There's kind of like a back and forth. The thread gets started. Um, people find a lot, a lot more than I expected. Um, with the the Catboy Ranch shit and the porn career and the allegations of embezzling money from the Communist Party of Canada. Uh, just lots of little shit like this, and it builds up. And then eventually, uh, there is the swatting thing. And I think I, I... Have you talked about the swatting thing at all, like, in, in depth about what's happening? Because it's been like... Is it just me, or has it felt like the last two years, everybody, everybody has gotten swatted? I can't name a single person who has oh, not been swatted. I, I, yeah, I, I'm I'm convinced it's probably just a third party group uh, doing it for laughs. Uh, yeah. In regards to like multiple communities, but yeah, no, I, I, I've, I've I, the thing that always got me about Keffels is like Keffels, you know, it's like oh, I got swatted, and then their story changed three times. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I got swatted and I got over it in five minutes. I don't know why they had to flee the country to fucking Ireland. Well, I got swatted. Um, I got detained by the police. Very similar circumstances. Uh, my my friend from England wrote a bomb threat to the high school that I went to from my email <laughs> server, and uh, I got detained over this. And I, it la- I was in I was in custody for like two hours um, before they decided that it was a hoax and they just let me go. And then I, there was two more incidents where the police showed up and they asked, there's more emails from your, from your server. And I, uh, eventually after the second one, I stopped, um, telling anybody about them. Cause I realized that if I told people about them, then people could uh, write about it and it would encourage them to continue doing it. So that like, I, I, I figured that shit out pretty fast. But the, the thing is, the difficult thing is, is that the people who are being swatted have a financial, interest in playing victim like um tim pool has been swatted 17 fucking times if he just shut the fuck up about it it would probably stop but he likes to go out there and say um and it's just to say that this is not something that's like one side well, and that, that's, the that's right. the, yeah but that's what i don't get right okay from my personal experience <clears throat> initial swatting happens uh you know sell a few hats talk about it whatever um but you talk to the police department and then it's not a fucking issue afterwards. So I don't know how Tim pool is getting swatted 17 times. Right. Cause you think he'd talk to the police and be like, Hey, um, you know, it's obviously a bullshit. Give me a ring up and I can prove that I, I'm not strapped with fucking uh Tannerite or something. Uh, so I don't know how people are repeatedly swatted uh, extremely over and over and over and over again. Is it just an inept police department or are they just giving into it for a couple of bucks? Both. I, I think that it definitely depends on your police department because when I dealt with the Florida FBI versus the um, New York, uh, west side of New York State FBI, the people from New York State were much more on top of things and they understood what I was telling them in regards to uh, people intentionally provoking them. So it, it probably does depend on your uh, your local law enforcement. But it also depends on how you handle it, and I think that especially in Temple's cases, like if he, if it's happening seventeen times, you have to change something at some point, um, unless you just enjoy it, the police, and then you can say, "Oh, I've been swatted." Uh, and I think people misuse the term swatting. It's like if the police door knock to be like, "Hey, we got this call again. We have to go see your basement to make sure there's no black kids being turned into pepperoni down there." <laughs> Uh, yeah, you just say okay, yeah, sure. Here's the basement, and then they leave. And it's like a five. The biggest crime there is the taxpayer money that went to the gasoline, right? Um, right. So yeah, I, people ham it up. the The first time was definitely a swatting. They got detained, all that stuff. Um, but yeah, it's just, the point is that that happens. And then from what I understand, after that happens, a, a cabal of people. From what I understand, 20 strong contact Keffels and say, we have a PR person, we have tech people, we have um, 
uh, people who know uh, like how to how to use a booter to bring down services, and we're going to collaborate to put together a press package, a press kit. We're going to contact all of our friends and uh, various journalistic agencies, and we're going to push this narrative, and we're going to bring Kiwi Farms down. And yeah, that's the interesting thing, and I, I wish I had saved it, but there is a uh, archive Keffel's tweet where they talk about. Uh, oh wait, I'm not on uh, not on YouTube. Where he talks about. Where he talks about, where Keffels talks about, um, having press connections, and and they're going to use them. Yeah. But I think this is, but that's like from months ago. So it makes me feel like this was, like, this was ready to roll out, and they were waiting for an opportune target. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, and I I've received from providers some of the documents that they're sent, and they're very professional, and they look very intimidating. And they have like markings of like NGO groups and stuff that they probably don't even have authorization to use. But uh, it's all very well presented and very surgically uh, directed so that it something has something impact. Keffels would be uh, familiar with surgery. Uh, sur- <laughs> surgically, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they'd be familiar. Yeah. Direct, yeah. It's um. So it's 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 um. It's more because like. Uh, Vordrek, the guy from England who's given me most of the shit for years, does very a lot of the same things. And the issue that he has is that he is a deranged lunatic who is completely unsympathetic. And the only people who have ever helped him were two people in the porn industry who then immediately turned on him because they're also insane. Uh, Keffel's... Keffels is deranged and a pervert, but not as not literally demented. Uh, like Vordrek has early on said to mention his family. He'll lose his mind by 45, and he's getting there. And you can tell just by the things he says that it's it's happening. Um, so he's a, he's actually like teetering on the brink. Keffels is still young, and they're insane, but they're not like. Has he has he said anything about any of this? Like, is he is he watching it, cheerleading it, or is he like stunned that somebody's doing he's, it? He's putting out fucking articles, but nobody wants to to you know email him. He sent God, he sent me a fucking email. Let me see if I can find it. Oh, asking me if Ann Ominous, a guy with forty thousand posts on the forum, was Matthew Prince. He's lost. <laughs> he's lost it. He's lost his fucking mind, and I, it couldn't have happened to a nicer person. Yeah, I didn't know. I, and I was kind of curious, too. I, I, I wondered, like, if uh, have you noticed, has there been like a, a collective of, uh, of people that have had threads that have like um, gone over to Team Keffels? They, they just tried. like cheerlead it, but like, like tried to like weasel their way in and be Try, like, let me it, help. Like Frederick Brennan had tried. Um, uh, Ralph tried. Matthew or not Matthew Prince, but Vordrak tried. Uh, all these people try to get in, but Keffels has like a really good team put together and doesn't want any of these people and flat out tells them that you're not useful to me and I don't want anything with you. Oh, see, it would be funny to me because, you know, a lot of these people, you know, the ones with the threads that would try to get cozy with Keffels have so much baggage that if she were to present them as victims of Kiwi Farms, people would be like, wait a minute. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> these these people are really fucked up. What are we really talking about here? Yeah, that that's how it would naturally die. That's how it's like when Vordrak tried to do that. That's how it died because the people that were willing to work with him were, a, you know, insane. Like, there's a reason why they have threats. It's not because they're great people, and we're just trying to smear them. It's because they're actually fucking nuts. Uh, but Keffels has managed to keep it on message, and I think that this is something that they decided together that they were going to make it entirely about trans issues. So everybody who they put out as a victim, you got Brianna Wu, you have um, Bob Posting, you have Anna Valens, you have Liz Fong Jones, you have um, uh, the, the the mother of that trans kid from the National Geographic uh, cover. Um, I, I saw her tweeting, but I don't even know who the fuck she is. Like she's in the, obviously an in attention whore. Yeah, no. What happened is in 2016, National Geographic put out in a, a horrific cover, cover that said something like the the gender revolution, and it was a picture of like a nine year old, eight year old boy in drag with like pink hair, and it was it was ghastly. It was like upsetting, stomach churning, especially in 2016. People aren't used to seeing this. Um, so they they got talked about on the thread or on the forum, and it's like an eight page thread, mostly about the you know the actual issue, not the boy in particular. But they and they find his, his Facebook, his mom's Facebook, because his mom is aggressively pushing this kid out there to get on the fucking cover of National Geographic. So she's got a huge 
fingerprint. And then she comes out years later and says, I was also doxxed. My nine-year-old was doxxed by Kiwi Farms. Like, we didn't fucking dox him. You, you're the one that put him on National Geographic, bro. Uh, you, went on the pro, you went on the press tour. Do you kind of, you know, the feeling I get with a lot of this trans shit and the fad that it's become, it feels like it's become like the, the evolution or the second step of pageant moms. <laughs> it, it, it really does. Like, instead of like, you know, taking my four-year-old daughter and, um, I, I don't know, you know, putting 48 pounds of makeup on her and making her tap dance in front of a, a you know a panel of judges. I'm going to take my son and put a dress on him, and that'll get me more attention. It, there is that, and that's the. It's frustrating because it, you want to put like a nice ribbon on it and say this is the core issue, and this is the the you know the way to cut the Gordian knot. But the more fascinating and unfortunate aspect of the trans shit is that it, it's very multifaceted. There's a lot of different interests at play that are completely different, but coincidentally aligned. And you see this with like the takedown of the forum is that you have people who don't communicate with each other, but who find themselves on the same page because they benefit in their own ways um, from having the site taken down. And with the trans stuff, you have, you know, you have pageant moms, you have people, you know, single moms who like um, have this fatherless boy and they want a girl or they want special attention. They want to be the, you know, the mom at the PTA saying my daughter is trans and we need gender affirming blah, blah, blah at our school. Like that's what they live for. Cause they don't have a fucking hobby. Um, you have those people, you have people who are genuinely just sick, disgusting perverts who want to walk around in a dress and jerk off in the women's restroom. And then you have people like Keffels who I think is just like a, a uh, like a misogynist like they put out tweets and saying like being trans to me isn't about imitating women it's about being better than women so, and there, there's more to and then there, you know the the global interest i think that the trend to the corporation apparatus to the government the trans person is the ideal outcome of what the left would call the end stage capitalism you have people who are predominantly white from middle and upper class homes who are cutting off their own dicks and becoming infertile. And then their life is a uh, menagerie of consumer interest, uh, wanting to see themselves represented in their consumer interest, buying pharmaceuticals to maintain their pain levels and to maintain their, their estrogen. They are, and then, you know, to replace them as they get older, you have to import labor from third world countries. And then that perpetuates the cycle of um, completely destroying the 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 makeup of the demographics of the united states i think that's that's the top-down interest but then you have all these useful idiots who have narcissistic uh personalities who are trying to enrich themselves either monetarily or uh sexually gratify themselves or get some other kind of attention from it it's, it's a it's a very na it's a it's a rat king uh, it's one of the terms that we used to describe it years ago it's a, it's a very bizarre phenomenon so it's kind of um it's this uh, serendipitous conspiracy of different groups aligning because the interests happen to benefit them either financially or through uh, retaining their power or feeding their narcissism, giving them the dopamine hit. And it just becomes a clusterfuck for everybody else that's left to deal with uh, this shit in the wake of their actions. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and, uh, you know, I know kids at school, it, it's the cool, it's cool. It's cool to be trans. It's cool to be queer. Um, and, and since it's so broad now, you can fit in without actually having to commit to anything. Like they say that like one in five kids at school identifies as LGBTQIA plus now. But that's like, you know, you ask a guy is like, what do you identify as? And he just wants to be with it. And he's just saying, oh, I'm queer. I'm non-conforming. And it's like he's just a straight <laughs> dude who wants to bang chicks, who likes all the pretty girls in his classroom, but he also wants to appeal to them sensibly, you know, and say, I'm, you know, I'm queer, I'm non-conforming. And it's like there's no commitment there, but the, the, the you know, the campaign of media and shit has made it so that that's, that's the invoke thing to do. It's like playing fucking Pokemon. That's what everybody's doing. They're changing their gender. Yeah, but the, the crazy thing to me is, you know, um, back in the day if you were to identify as gay or lesbian whatever um there wasn't a physical commitment to it to this shit there's a physical fucking process that takes place if it's just taking pills or chopping shit off like it, it's a commitment you can't unfuck they talk about people detransitioning but that's just going to leave you as you know you're closing the hole up but you're not replacing the dick right so you're 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 physically butchered and fucked up and chemically fucked for the rest of your life um, and it's kind of a scary thought to think of a bunch of kids going through elementary and junior high thinking this is what I want, 
and then they transition or whatever in fucking high school and college. And then five years later, like, oh, this was a big mistake, but there's no way to ever fix it. Uh, yeah, that's some of them. Because what hap- also what happens is you have lonely people who go onto Discord and they're looking for friends. And it used to be back in the day, if you were lonely looking for friends, you fell into one of two categories. You join the anime club or you join the furry fandom. And uh, both of those groups are generally accepting of basically everyone. Nowadays, it's like you're online. What do you do? Oh, you join like the the LGBTQIA P plus. They're always looking for new people. They, they you know they're chatty. They have events going on. They have funding. They have all sorts of stuff that you can get involved with. And then they end up in these discords, and they end up under the tutelage of older people who are attracted to children. And that's one of the other interests is that you have genuine pedophiles who are just um, aroused by turning little boys into little girls, uh, and uh, basically uh, people into making eunuchs out of out of children. And they get told, oh, you're not just queer. I think that you are actually... Did you ever play with a Barbie? Did you ever play with a Barbie? Do you like the color pink more than the color blue? It's like that kind of shit. And then they say, well, I think that you were always meant to... I think you're a little girl trapped in a little boy's body. And I I have all these resources. And if your parents don't consent, don't worry. I can send it to you in the mail. I know how to make it myself. I I love the the contradiction, too. Because for like the last three or four years, right? The big push for gender equality and, um, you know, the anti-sexism talking points was... Um, boys can play with girls toys and girls can play with boy toys and that's not indicative of whether you're a boy or a girl but now it's being used as a diagnosis right so yeah. oh no if you do play with the barbie you're definitely a girl and we need to cut your dick off and you know if little Susie likes the transformer it's time to you know put some silly putty in her crack and then stick on a snuffleupagus nose made out of her arm tissue and call her timmy well, that's that's another interesting thing. Um, th- that Matt Walsh. Did you watch that Matt Walsh movie about what what is a woman? Oh no, no. For a second, I thought you were talking about um, the guy that does uns- was it unsolved mysteries? Who was the dude that had his kid disappear and he fucking made it a career hunting down pedophiles and criminals? Was it his know. name Matt Walsh too? I have no idea. No, I've never heard that. Oh my god, no. He he he. Uh, let me let me just double check and maybe I've gone fucking crazy. Um, but no, like his son got kidnapped out of a, a store by a, a, what is assumed? Oh, it's John Walsh. John Walsh. Sorry. Okay. My mind uh, blanked on me. No, I haven't seen that. I, for a second, I, th- I was wondering if it's the same guy. It, it's, it's kind of like a, it's, it's okay. It's interesting. It's probably a good like entry point to people who are like already kind of skeptical. Uh, it's not a great documentary um, as far as like, Basically, it's a movie that you'll only like if you if you'll already like it. You'll not, you'll not be swayed by this. I don't I don't think. But um, he poses kind of as like a meme. He goes up to politicians and people in gender reforming care and he asks them, "What is a woman?" And they have no straight answer to the point where that's the the comedy is that you can ask any of these people, "What is a woman?" And you will not know. You'll you will glean nothing by talking to them. All they say is, "A woman is a person who identifies as a woman." But then when you look at the people who identify as a woman, their, their, their concept, the, the, the men who identify as women, their concept of what a woman is, is like this bimbified, fetishistic idea of like, what is a woman? A woman is having long hair and fingernails and makeup and pumps and tits and uh, an axe wound. And that's, that's like, that's it. That's all it is to them. And, you know, if you if you try to suggest, is it reproductive? Are women supposed to be mothers? They say, well, what about women that can't have kids? Are they less of a woman? And so on. And it's, and it's like that end is messy, but it's always like the most bimbified um, concept possible. <laughs> yeah, it's it's become ridiculous. Um, it, it does seem very fetishistic. It does seem very fad-like to me. Um, there obviously is a push... Um, I wouldn't doubt pharmaceutical companies love it because they're going to make money gangbusters on this, not just from supplying estrogen or pills or whatever, but uh, comforting, you know, palette of medical care for the disaster that follows. Yeah, for the rest of your um, life. For the rest of your life, yep. you're going to be on some kind of pain management if you take have the surgery. And the government probably likes it because they're going to have a voter base that is, uh, you know, a, 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 self, a self-crippled minority uh, that will always need to use them uh, to make people stop laughing. Right. So it makes them more reliant on Big Brother. I yeah. mean, we can see that with Keffels. I mean, you know, what did, the first thing they do is they run to any government institution they can to make the mean shit go away. Yeah. Um, they they have a friend in Harvard. I don't know his name. He's also trans. Uh, and he proudly states that he's like a 
involved in Harvard, but I don't think he's actually an attorney. And his his thing has been for years since the abuse stuff was when he started paying attention to the forum is that we would we should lose Section 230 protections, which if you don't know very, very, very broadly, uh, I am not liable for shit you say on my site and I'm not liable for deleting shit that you say on my site. That's Section 230 in a nutshell. Um, but he contends that because I post on my site, I'm not protected by this. And it's true that for my posts, I am not protected by Section 230. I am liable for what I say. But he's tried to swing it so that um, I'm liable for everything everybody says because I post on the site. And that's just not true. So they're looking well, at... I mean, that, that would be, you know, that's a can of worms that that idiot probably doesn't want to open. Because then that means that everything Jack Dorsey's ever said on Twitter, anything Mark Zuckerberg has ever said on Facebook, you know, anything these people have ever said, if, if they've made one post, now they're suddenly liable because they're uh, not a platform, they're a publisher, right? Mm -hmm. uh, all the all these sites are now liable. Even Susan uh, Wazoshki or whatever her fucking name is. Waziki. Yeah, she made a YouTube video. So, I mean, if she's posting on the site as a user, she's now liable for all the other users. I'd love, could you imagine her getting sued for all the Nazi shit she tried to get rid of? Be funny as fuck. Yeah, well, that's why Google, Facebook, and you know all the big companies end up on the right side when it comes to net neutrality in Section 230, um, which is unfortunate because when Google starts proudly pr you know, promoting something like net neutrality, people say, wait a second, this has to be evil incarnate if Google's promoting it. Uh, but no, the, the reality is that it's a thing that's useful to us, but it's also very useful to them, uh, which is why they want to keep it. It's, a, it's like, it's implicit. It's like if you host a website... People can say what they want, and without doing anything, without filing any forms, without seeking a certain type of incorporation, you're not liable. It's a great thing to have. Um, it's, but it's not just that that they're trying to get rid of. It's They're um, looking at, uh, uh, very briefly, on the internet, there is a, used to be a private company in the United States called ICANN, the uh, Internet Consortium of Assigned Names and Numbers. ICANN was taken by Obama and given to the United Nations, so now it's an, yeah. uh, an international organization. That, what they, that was a mistake. <laughs> that was a huge fucking mistake, one that we will definitely see repercussions for in the coming decades. It was safer in the United States. Uh, very deliberate, very smart. If, if you were like intentionally trying to fuck everything up, moving ICANN out of the U.S. was a, was a brilliant move. Um, that I, if I was Satan and I was trying to fuck everything up, that, that's exactly what I would say to do. Um, so I can distribute IP addresses to the five different companies called RIRs, Regional Internet Registries. There are five of them. There's one in the U.S. for North America. There's one in South America, one in Africa, one for Europe, um, and one for Asia and the Middle East. I have one in APNIC, which is Asia, Asia Pacific, um, and my IPs come from APNIC. APNIC is based out of Australia. Australia, after Christchurch, passed um, internet regulation and censorship. So now Liz Fong Jones, who I think is Chinese Australian, is trying to get APNIC to get rid of my IPs, basically. This has never happened in the history of the internet. There has never been a political censorship how, of research how, medications. Um... How dead in the water? I, like I've known, I know you fought with like uh, hosting and server space and uh, DDoS protection, but uh, if if they pull that off, right, and they pull your IPs, how how dead in the water are you? Does that really fuck you? Is that like a final death nail kind of thing? No. Um, if that happens, I will move it. Basically, I I have a layered network on ten different companies. If I lose my IPs, I simply have to hide the Kiwi Farms, and I. The, actually, having my own resources is a benefit in some ways and a detriment in others because now that people know where my networks are, they can uh, probe them, they can attack them. If I had to hide my things again, then it would be more resilient to DDoS attacks. However, the upside of having my resources is that I can venture, I can counter offense basically i can set new things up on ips i can fortify my network i can have multiple isps i can have ddos filters on the network level i can do more um but if i was forced to hide i would still be able to keep the site up see i i, I what i find fascinating about this especially watching people who have been cheerleading this on the destruction of the site um is it feels like a proxy for what's coming right uh, we're, we're watching this obviously between you know keffels and kiwi but the the bigger picture to me is, you know, five years from now, ten years from now, uh, what if it's some kind of uh, actual insurrection against the government? What if there's some crazy shit going on, and people are trying to keep a website up to get information out? Uh, they're watching. Essentially, what's being done to you is going to be done in that instance, and it's weird watching, you know, the people that I've seen before talk about internet freedom, 
and you know the right to speak and have a place to go uh cheerlead the shit on because it, it, it baffles me that they don't see that you know later on <laughs> this is going to be used against sites that they would probably want up um or that might serve uh you know some kind of a benefit like i mean they're chasing you around the internet all over the world trying to rip you apart and they're going after everything that's connected to you in a, a, a way to make that happen and it's it's like this cat and mouse game of can you escape it and if you can't, that's got a really bad connotations for what the future of the internet's going to look like. Because uh, wh what what are, what are people going to do? Have wireless mesh nets? You know what I mean? They're going to run a fucking second internet from the back of their truck driving around the countryside. Uh, ham radios, probably. <laughs> Just copy ten four. What was that URL? <laughs> so it's going to be good. The, the onion uh, tour will probably be resilient. However, the government basically, in the same way that I have contingencies for everything, the government also has things that they know how to take down that they don't do very often because they don't sure. want them fixed. Uh, I, my personal conspiracy theory is DDoS attacks are such a universal problem that if they wanted to fix them, they probably could. I bet you that there is a way right now that could be set up in a week where if you are under a DDoS attack, you could communicate to the internet backbones, of which there's like only f like seven internet, l like tier one providers in the world, and say, I'm being attacked, um, this is my source, and this is the, uh, the destination of the attack. And I bet you that it would be possible to coordinate with companies for free, not resource intensive at all, to end DDoS as a threat. However, I think that the DDoS attack is so simple and so useful to the government that they intentionally do not provide the service. And they have been asked by the government not to provide the service. And I think that's true with other things as well, um, that they know, how to, they know how to fix and they choose not to. DDoS attacks have been around for 30 fucking years. They've always been there. And they for sure know how to fix it by now. Yeah, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't doubt it. I'm sure there's a lot of shit they could patch up and uh, take care of that they, they never do. I mean, you're talking about, at least with the U.S. government, that... Uh, knows about like just zero day exploits that they'll let sit there because it might be beneficial a year from then. I mean, with all the NSA shit and well, here's here's a fun story about stuff. that. There was a pedophile who was arrested, who was identified as exchanging child pornography on tour. The lawyer for the pedophile asked, "I want to know how you identified him. We need proof before we take any plea deal or take this to court. I need to know what you did to identify my client as the person who transmitted this information over tour and encrypted network." And they said, we are not going to disclose that, so the charges are dropped. And he walked away. So whatever the fuck they had that was working, um, that it was so important to them that they would have let literally anything walk so that they can continue to do espionage. Um, I think that that was, that was patched eventually. They figured out what that was. But um, our, our government is evil. <laughs> our government is, is pure evil, run by very, like... Um, like most people listening to this will probably be familiar with the Christian fucking his mom thing. One of the people that he was talking to at the time was Isabella Yanka. Isabella Yanka is the daughter of an ex CIA contractor named Michael Yanka. If you Google Michael Yanka Cloudflare, you'll find a video of the father of the woman that was talking to Chris who, while he was raping his mother, sitting next to Matthew Prince talking about how the internet needs more censorship. And considering that Isabella Yanka had a like 3,000 page long thread on the Kiwi farms, it really does raise some fucking eyebrows about what influence comes from where. I, and I, I don't think that Michael Young is a part of Keffel thing at all. I think that the um, in the time that it took for the Kiwi farms to um, lose Cloudflare, uh, there was that statement by Matthew Prince about their policies and how they handle abuse and yada yada and their commitment to free speech. And that was on Thursday. And then that Saturday, two days later on a three-day weekend, it was Labor Day weekend, he drops the Kiwi farms and puts out this much more rushed shitty statement that seems like a like panicked and saying like this site is the worst site that we've ever seen we're dropping it right now it's an imminent threat to human life we've contacted law enforcement already because it's such a big deal and i've not received any communique from any law enforcement anywhere regarding any imminent threat to human life so he lied and he lied in a way that i can't sue him for but he lied 
uh, to appease his shareholders, probably, because something happened. Either his payment processors threatened him, his board of directors threatened him with having him being forced to resign from CEO position, or someone like Michael Yonka got to him in his ear and said, you need to find a way to drop this site. And it, what is extremely pissy about that is that he said it was the worst site he's ever seen. It was an easier decision to make than the Daily Stormer or HN. And right now on his site are websites dedicated to drilling holes into the skulls of monkeys that <laughs> pr- pr- proudly host by Cloudflare, ISIS websites proudly hosted by Cloudflare, DDoS protection, the works for two hundred two hundred dollars a month, you know, um, and it's it's a it's a joke. It's a it's a bad joke, but it's going to go right over people's head um, unless do they. Do you think uh, part of the um, do you think part of the problem? And I've I've always kind of wondered this on how people like let's say Keffels or that group would have any kind of reach at all, is that um, the ones most drawn into this shit, or at least I, I guess the first ones most drawn into it, because now it's kind of a fad with younger kids. Uh, came from uh, highly affluent families. It seemed like they were coming from families that were rich or well-connected, and so they had the money and time to give in to this kind of bizarre, fetishistic, I'm going to become a woman You mean thing. like Jazz Jennings? Jazz Jennings yeah, was yeah. the first one. Yeah, but I'm talking about people like, um, uh, what is it? Oh, I, I guess what I'm getting at is, I, I don't see this having started with kids living in the ghetto, right? Poor people. No. I see this having started with kids that went to the really nice college because mom and dad have a fucking six figure job uh, because mom or dad work with the government or the uh, NGO or whatever. And do you think that these people have undue influence because of that? Because, you know, they're midway through their journey of tying a noose around their neck. <laughs> so they see QE farms and this big fight happen and they're like, we need to make that go away. And so their parents or people that know their parents have a voice that can reach somebody like uh, Prince on his three day weekend and be like, you need to take this down. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm sure that a lot of people who are involved in complaining on Twitter and shit are opportunistic. They've been quiet for years because they know that it's not a good idea to draw attention to it because the site gets more um, views to their threads if they talk about it. Um, but now they see this as like the last chance to, to take down the site. So, Oh, now did you see that little pop up? Yeah, I just heard the the notification. So it's forty five minutes. That's all they give us to to talk. A, a free group, a, a free group calls have a limit of one hour. We get one, we get one hour. We got ten more minutes, then you'll have to resend the link. Yeah, this is uh this very much confused Andy. Uh, when I was a guest on his stream, and uh, it took him it took him like twenty minutes to figure out what that meant. That's bizarre. Zoom doesn't do that, does it? No, no, I think uh, Google's doing it to push you to, like, uh, subscribe or pay some kind of fee, but you can still use it for an hour for free and just start a second one up and use that for oh. free, so why would you ever pay? Yeah, that's bizarre. Discord does it for free, too. I can't believe that, that Google can't. That's bizarre. But they want that paywall up. Maybe this is the way they keep out, like, you know, Discord groomers and shit. They're like, well, if we put an hour time, <laughs> we put an hour time limit on it, it fucks their game up. It's they they've completely ruined the 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 Discord daddies making Discord kittens keep it on overnight while they're sleeping because that shit just turns off and they they can't wake them up to say make give me a new fucking link every hour. <laughs> yeah, they, right. They fix the problem. Yeah, everybody Genius. thought Google was they everybody thought Google was evil, but they've been thinking outside the box for a while now. Oh jeez. Um. It, but yeah, it's it's a rich people thing as. I mean, one guy. One guy's about to have a fucking epileptic fit in chat. Unless I mention Jews, Jazz Jennings. I pointed out because very specifically because he's Jewish. Um, Jazz, well, Jazz Gen- Jennings, a great example because what happens? They put him on pills. Per- yeah, they put him on pills. We're going to transition you, Jazz. We're going to transition you. Take these pills. Take this estrogen. You'll block puberty. And then it comes up to surgery day, and the doctor looks at him and says, "Yeah, you don't have enough of a dick for us to make a fake pussy." Yeah, because oh. you didn't you didn't go through puberty. You don't have enough genitalia for us to butcher it up. That's that is the jazz ginning things never gets mentioned. I try to bring it up. I'm I'm, I'm glad that you know the story because that's yeah. Basically, jazz Jennings transitioned um, early in life. The 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 best example of what exactly what Keppels wants says you can go on these these hormone blockers. You can take estrogen anytime you want. It just stops puberty so that when you are an adult, you look more feminine. Uh, yada yada yada. The issue is, is that for Jazz Jennings, and this is an exa- a middle centipede thing for sure, because you take those <laughs> those puberty blockers as a kid, you start taking estrogen as a teenager, you go through like a, a fake um a fake puberty, and you can look at Jazz Jennings. Jazz Jennings does not pass at all, and then they reach adulthood. Well, the issue is, is that when they you know split your your cock down the middle and make labia out of it. 
um, you need you need the shmeat. You need shmeat to build the new thing out of. So when you have a little baby dick, you can't take that and make a vagina out of it. Um, even well, anything. Yeah, because jazz jazz was literally stuck at like. I mean, based on what the doctor was saying, you're talking like, you know, the the physical features of like a fucking nine year old. Yeah. And they've got to like they've got to invert the penis to make, um, you know, depth for the vagina. But if you've got like a two inch dick, uh, you're and that, you know, and then you got to cut stuff open to make other pieces. There's not enough to do stuff with. Yeah, it's uh, it, it's it's like a horror story. And then they go through it and there's complications and they're in pain. And now you look at Jazz Jennings. Jazz Jennings is fat. Oh my god, yeah, they're like a, they're the size of a dump truck. Yeah, I'd be eating all the time too. What else are you gonna do? <laughs> right? There's nothing else to do. There's literally nothing else to do. There's no way to get off. And that that's like, okay, now you're really fucked. You're 20 years old. You have two options. You can either A, make a vagina out of your intestines because you don't have any uh, penis to make it out of, or B, you can stay stuck with your baby dick. Now, who the fuck is into uh, actual like intestinal lined vagina? Or a baby dick, like your your romantic life is destroyed. You have no hope whatsoever of even maintaining an illusion of a functional relationship. You have fucked your life. Yeah, well, there's no recovery. I mean, that's the thing they're stuck with, right? They can't uh, even if even if they detransition, right? Um, there wouldn't be anything to reassemble because you'd still be stuck at the point of being a nine year old. <laughs> Right. Yeah. So there's there's no sex. There's there's absolutely there will never be any sex for Jazz Jennings. They'll never have an orgasm. That's completely gone. Um, now, Jazz looks like a fat man um, and I'm sure is fucking miserable. I remember watching like they, when they got the surgery and stuff, all their stitches pop. Shit was rotting yeah. and fetid um, again because not enough material to work with. Now, imagine all those little kids that are being told drink the Troon Shine. Are going to grow up in that same fucking situation thousands specifically for boys yeah it's so they're not even going to get to the point of transitioning because they're going to hit a brick wall and then they're going to be stuck as undeveloped adults and uh, i can't even i mean look how mad ralph gets when you talk about how small his dick is and this is like <laughs> this is even worse you know like they're going to be rage hogging like you wouldn't believe I mean, they don't have the testosterone for that, though. They're just going to sit there on Twitter and, and, and you know, see and, and deplatform people. That's what happens with those. It's going to be an entire gener. It's going to be a baby dick brigade, an entire generation of them uh, fucked over by the medical industry, unable to give into their to their fetish, I guess. I don't I don't know <laughs> what the end result of that's going to be, but it ain't going to be pretty. Yeah. The, so it, it's like literally watching tragedy and because it, it takes years it takes years for the tragedy to to complete its its story its story arc uh, and you just know that it's fucked up and you try to say something about it and you get, <laughs> you get banned <laughs> you get really fucking mad if you bring it up uh, when i when i did a you know a video on it all the comments in this you know like all the especially like the subreddits and shit dedicated to this anybody that brought up even like the in the nicest way like, hey, I'm having issues, or I'm having doubts, or maybe this isn't for me, or maybe I want to go back. Uh, they were just told that they were the fucking uh, incarnation of Satan, and that they weren't doing it right, and that they were... Um, oh, what's that fucking term they all like to use? Turfs? Turfs. Is that uh, it? Turfs are like, um, yeah, are women, they're women who are feminist, and they exclude uh, trans or exclusionary radical feminists. Um, right, like they're they were accusing them of being like undercover, uh, yeah, like to larping, try to yeah. Vision. yeah, yeah. Uh, that's that's a funny story too. Um, if you want to know, if if you want to know why, uh, I I I feel bad for for whamendom, for womankind right now to the point where a lot of people call me like a simp or like a male feminist. Uh, you should see what happens to any. Oh jeez, I have an email. Um, you should see what happens to any w women space, like a website for women about women's issues on the internet. Uh, these places are routinely co-opted, and it does not matter what it is. It can be a a group for talking about ovarian health or uterine health, uterine cancers, ovarian cysts. It can be a place for pregnancy. It can be a place for you know mothers. It doesn't matter. They always routinely get co-opted by. Uh, uh, trannies, you know what it kind of reminds me of? Trannies remind me of what's that female character from Fight Club? The one who would fake shit to go to the group therapy sessions? Oh, um, Martha, isn't it? 
is that it? Yeah. So they're all a bunch of Marthas, right? Like they they sneak in by saying they're that, and then once they're but they take it farther than Martha would, then they take over the group, kind of basically. Yeah, a Marla singer. I should I should know this. Fight Club is my favorite movie, and you caught me off Marla. guard. <laughs> yeah, Marla. Yeah, it's um, it is it is like that. Uh, to an ex- but it's it's. It's not actually. I take that back. It has nothing. It's completely different. That's like um. That's like a, a voyeurism thing. You want to see voyeurism is what we do. Kiwi farms. You're seeing people in various states of emotional conflict so and suffering. Ki- kiwi far Kiwi farmers are the good Marlas, and the trannies are the bad Marlas. The the trannies are are. It would be different. It would be like if if Marla was there in the testicular cancer club because she wanted to speak all the time and say how bad her testicular cancer was. And if anyone said, hey, maybe you don't have testicular cancer because you're a woman, they got kicked out of the club. And they don't want to get kicked out of the club because they're depressed because they lost their their balls and they're going to kill themselves. And they need the club. They need to stay in the club. So everyone just politely ignores the fact that Marla speaks for half the time and they can't say anything about it. That's, That's the correct interpretation of that situation. Oh, we need to. We need to. They. Uh, uh, this this entire book needs to be rewritten now. <laughs> and Marla, Marla needs to be a, a trans character just to show this. Ha- like now, I want to see that plot line play out <laughs> his... <laughs> of them subverting every fucking group they go to. And his dead name was Robert Paulson. That's why he's got <laughs> bitch kids. He's a dead transfer. Ah. Perfect. Okay. Um, well, let me give you a link, actually, because it's time. Oh, we got under a minute. Yeah, okay. I'll, I'll jump out of this, send me a link, and I'll pop back in, okay? All right. Oh, let's see. New meeting. Start instant meeting. I'm now in a new meeting. Microphone works. Send this over on post. Now we wait. Actually, you know, I spent the chat. I spent all this time setting this shit up. And I've actually not used it at all. I have a very fancy thing um, that I've completely neglected to use throughout this. No, it's kind of still, still waiting on Jim. But now, chat, I do have. Could have this working. Hello. Oh, it looks uglier oh. than I imagined. I had this whole thing planned out to to have um hangouts look cool on my screen, and just all fucked up. You can see uh, his rage pig avatar. Is there a reason why you keep the OBS logo on top of his face? <laughs> no, I'm just technically inept. I don't know how to make the fuck <laughs> off. So it's like a black hole of white. It, it represents him well because he'll shovel anything in that fucking mouth of his. So technically, technically is uh, you know on point. But yeah, it's stuck there. I don't know. I don't know what the fuck to do with it. Okay. Um. I, oh, I never got to finish my timeline of events. We got distracted for over an hour. Yeah. So we had. So we had Keffel's. Um. Uh. Keffel's and Destiny have a, a row. Um. Keffel starts talking about getting Destiny deplatformed. Um. And starts doing the I'm gonna ratio everybody on Twitter shit. They make, um, a, that's about a, they make a that's testicular about cancer support group. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. Okay, and then, then we got to Matthew Prince. I mentioned that, um, that we got dropped by Cloudflare on Saturday. Cloudflare is very important because Cloudflare offers something that you cannot – basically, with, with any other service, you can, you can do it yourself. You can get your own IPs. You can get your own servers. You can ha- make your own fucking data center. You can literally – Put a server in your house and buy your own router and convince your ISP to give you um, a BGP session so that IPs route to a box in your fucking home. I could do that. I could be my own data center. Um, and ISPs are very resilient because they have to be. Uh, you know, cross your fingers that ISPs will, will stay resilient because that's next. But the one thing that you cannot do and you can find open source software alternatives to all sorts of different forums. Like forum software has open source alternatives to Zenforo. I have to replace them because they canceled our license about a year ago. Um, however, application layer, and you can find network layer DDoS mitigation. You can pay for that. Application layer DDoS mitigation is difficult. That is something that actually almost nobody does. 
uh, makes their own DDoS mitigation. It, it is because it is such a cat and mouse thing with technology that you basically need round the clock staff looking at the different threats that are popular online, figuring out how to combat them, what, uh, what, you know, uh, networks are the most compromised and when to throw captchas like that. All that shit is extremely complicated and uh, more complicated even than network level filtering. So almost everybody uses Cloudflare. The only companies that don't use, I think 80% of websites use Cloudflare. The only ones that don't use Cloudflare are sufficiently large corporations like Microsoft that can do their own application level filtering or scale up enough that they don't have to worry about it. Um, so it must be, I mean, it has to at some point be profitable for them, even with the amount of work put into it. So why do they have such a monopoly on it? Um, good question. Uh, I mean, cause... why, why is it, why is everybody still beholden to Cloudflare? I mean, if it was a if it was a money pit and he was losing money all the time, he'd drop it eventually, or somebody else would uh, find a better way. But if he's if he's bringing in the money, doing it, there's got to be. I, why aren't there other companies saying, "Fuck, I want eighty percent. I want it. Give me twenty percent. I can make money I, off that." I think that what it is is a um, a size. Of, it's it's an issue similar to like with YouTube. Um, because it is such a cat and mouse game, the issue is that if you make a company that offers a DDoS mitigation service, if you grow large enough, people will start tailoring their attacks to your software suite. And uh, captures are a great example of this, by the way. Um, text captures are very broken. So, but when you make your own captcha, which you can do, I made, um, I worked with Frederick to make one for Infinity Next. Uh, those are actually good if you make them yourself and they have like your your own choice of fonts and and you know distortion and stuff. They work very well. But if you were to publish your own captcha as like this service and then millions of people started using it, um, you would very quickly find yourself targeted and your captchas would be continually busted because it would be profitable for darknet interests and you know hackers to find ways around your captcha. And uh, people will just start doing it for fun. Because, like the Kiwi Farms gets fucked with by people who are literally just saying like, hmm, this is a website that has trouble going down. I wonder if I can bring it down. And they have no other interest in the site beyond that. They're like, you know, from Kazakhstan. They don't give a fuck. Uh, they're just playing around. Uh, so captures fall under that. But with DDoS mitigations, um, it's the same thing. And you can see like the Diam Wall people. They're two college students in Portugal. I'm thinking, fuck, we can make a great DDoS service. It's not that hard. They set it up, and it's like, oh, there's actually a lot of shit eating that's attached to being uh, a DDoS mitigator because you now, are the. What what happened with them in particular? Was that the one that Keffels wrote a PR statement for them? They claim that Keffels just spell checked it because they're Portuguese and they don't speak English as a first language. However, Keffels claims now that he helped draft it. So I don't know. Keffels lies about everything, so I'm willing to believe them. But yeah, basically, what, what's frustrating about them, and this is skipping ahead a bit from the sure. timeline, but uh, this was Monday, I want to say. And I email them and I say, this is what's happening. Here's a PR statement. I, give a, I was suggested to them by somebody. And uh, they said, "Yeah, we can handle it." Thinking, okay, and uh, we're we're confident. This is a, we offer a great service. I'm like, well, what about the GDPR? You guys are in the EU. I'm like, nah, we can handle it. We're just a pass through. I'm like, okay. Um, turn it on. One hour later, we have been contacted by 15 different journalists. <laughs> 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 There's an issue. Uh, we did not expect this, and you weren't completely honest with the content of your site. And like, well, I linked you to the articles and shit. Uh, the main thing that they had an issue with was that one of the, the dockets floating around referenced a lot of the content from the Zeus Sadus links. Um, so I've actually restricted access to the old archive because all the chat logs and stuff have been copied and pasted into threads and stuff. Sh shouldn't they be thanking you? The Zeus Sadus leaks and all of that ended up leading to the arrest of Snake thing. Well, that's actually, if you try to go to the Zeus Sadus archive right now, you get a message uh, calling journalists scum because in links to those threads and stuff. Yeah, I mean, if you were if you were honest about like the the site, you would you would have to mention that, but nobody does. And snake snake thing was the worst one. He was the one talking about um, molesting his five year old cousin and raping him, and you know, killing and fucking dogs. Yep, and he's still in jail. Yeah, and he went to prison. Uh, and I, I I mean, Wolf was as far as like I mean. It's hard to compare them. The, the snake thing was disgusting because he was talking about animals being tortured in like a way that like, um, I guess like a furry would like say, ooh, ooh what a cute fursuit. Like, ooh, <laughs> what a nice torture video. Ooh, ooh. And it's like, like 
bizarre bizarre unhinged um but wolf was the one who like he was cuban and he he like staked puppies with like a thing covered in fire ants he was a, a grueling sadist and the the government of cuba disappeared him but nobody brings this up of course they just bring up they have you know zoo sadist shit on their site and it's like well yeah because people were uh trying to find them and they did yeah, it's 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 bizarre. Um, I, well, I mean, I saw what happened with the, even with like post. Um, you know, because uh, you guys came over, and then all of a sudden, there's a was it a Huffington Post journalist uh, just suddenly decided to make a fucking account and start talking to people. On post. Yeah, yeah, they banned uh. him. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah i mean maybe because it's like you know people are on post now they're on on the forum and they're they're definitely looking for the next target someone said that um i don't want to name drop them because they won't appreciate it. they get mad at me if i talk about them but it's a website that's similar to the kiwi farms and it's mostly women talking about women little cows uh they've oh, been down encyclopedia dramatica <laughs> <laughs> yeah that one uh they've been down all weekend uh, or like for the last day or two and i don't know if that's like related to other attacks because i i mentioned this in one of my early statements that i know if this site goes down they will immediately start tar targeting women's websites um because that is what's exciting for them you think that it's exciting for keffels to do a victory lap on the kiwi farms it would be literally sexually gratifying for keffels to say i took away your space for you know a thousand women that would uh, bring him the closest he can get to to uh orgasm yeah well yeah i mean it's clear it's not going to just stop with kiwi i mean they're going to start hitting other sites they already went after archival sites uh, i've only seen one or two people ever pull that off too uh, getting archives wiped yeah uh, it's it's archive the way back machine that's the one they were trying to get archive that yeah. is archive that today to to pull theirs as well but as far as i know they haven't um and it's because they, they have they have friends in tech man that's the issue they can get my google voice number dropped i can't make calls uh, to or from my google voice number i can't receive text messages on my and it's like i i talk to their support agent and they're going through the checklist, like, you know, can you tell us what area you're in, what software you're using? So it's like there's not, like, an obvious flag on my account that says I'm banned. I guarantee you some fucking troon, you know, software <laughs> contractor just did something to break my account as best he could and then walk away from it. And it's like it's not, it's not even like I'm banned. It's like someone broke my Google Voice number, so I can't use it. Right. Well, didn't that uh, – what is the Fong one uh, that's working with Caffles? Liz Fong What's Jones, that? they worked at, yeah, he worked they, at They Google. worked at Google, yeah, right? So they probably still have friends there, don't they? Um, yeah, yeah, he, he, I don't remember what he did exactly. Um, he's Made really... place a living hell, probably. <laughs> <laughs> he, he was very active in, like, the, the Google, uh, internal forum for, like, LGBT issues, he said. So I'm sure, yeah, he was that guy. Um, he's really funny because he's hideous. Number one, he's the, like, usually Asians have like a, like a racial perk to passing when they, <laughs> when they transition, but not him. Not he's, him. No, yeah. <laughs> he's got a, he's got a strong jaw. I call it the Robert Zadar jaw. He's got a fucking meaty face and his, his, uh, tr trans boyfriend, uh, speaking of snake things is like trans snake and he walks around in public with his hands down behind his back and like a like so you're telling me you're walking yeah, i'm just trying to picture myself as like a google employee when they were still employed there and i'm walking across campus to go fix some fucking issue in a server or something and here comes asian jay leno with some yes. guy slithering behind them on the ground, <laughs> sticking his tongue in the air. Not not on the ground. He walks around in like a, a sleeveless champagne dress with like a, and they all wear fucking fetish collars like animals, and all, like walks around on a leash in public. And they're just like, I don't know. I'm a snake. I'm a snake. I'm a snake girl. I'm a snake. And that's just how they live. And it's fucking weird. And these are the people who decide if I get to make phone calls. <laughs> <laughs> that's the person with the, the final say on whether or not you can dial a number yeah um, oh, do you think they do, do you think they feed him live rats is he that dedicated <laughs> to the snake role play <laughs> is he eating mice and shit oh, i hope not maybe maybe he just eats all the the dongs when they get cut off and they just feed it to him <laughs> he gobbles it up yeah. <laughs> literally <laughs> i didn't know this was a jewish snake okay oh no <laughs>
No, no, this this is this is um they, they only take the tip. We're talking about the whole dong is gonna bag here. Well, he's thorough, right? He's very <laughs> thorough. He doesn't want to leave anything behind. It's for a, t a total circumcision. <laughs> Absolute. We're going all the way. Um. Yeah. So. Uh. So. So. Okay. So. Um. Prince uh, does a reversal on his uh, statement three days ago. Comes out, gives you a bunch of bullshit, saying we're dropping you. Yeah. Um. And then what was your next step after that? I, I, you can still be vague about it, but I mean, like, what what did you decide you were gonna do? Um. I've I've been working. Okay. So my my first step is I'm trying to find. I mentioned that there's a difference between application DDoS attacks and network DDoS attacks. I'm working on getting network DDoS filtering. I've been working on this since December. I have an ISP that I'm working with to try and get them to, to filter traffic for me. It has not been going well. I, they are terrible at answering tickets, and they're only the literally the only reason I have not given up on them and told them to fuck off and cancel everything is that if they're that bad at answering emails, they're probably exactly what I need. Is not a <laughs> not a fucking thing is going to be heard at all in that company. The the you know bombs could be dropping and you know they're going to be working just as they did yesterday because they didn't hear shit inside that facility. Uh, but I've been I, it's so close now. But it's like now it's I, I hate the weekends because I'm always anxious and I have a thousand things in my head. I got to get this done. I got to get this done. I have to fortify this. I have to change this. I have to tweak this. This is not working. I have to get that working. That's urgent. I know I have a priority list. And then the weekend comes and I'm sitting on my hands. I'm thinking there's not much I can do. I can fuck with my servers. I can stream. I can play some EU4. I can watch a movie, but that's about it. I have to wait until next week to get anything done. So I'm I'm sitting on my hands right now, still waiting for the thing to get done from last week. That was pretty close, but that I've been waiting on for since December. You know, and, and it's so frustrating. One one of the things is I'm upgrading to a 10 gigabit connection, and I need a special port. You have a one gigabit per second Ethernet connection. If you want 10 gigabits, you have to have an SFP plus connection. My router did not have an SFP plus connection. So oh, I was this a router replacement you were talking yes. about? Yes. So I bought a new one months ago and I sent it to the facility and I said, This is the new one for when they get their shit set up. Plug it in. It has an SFP on it. They say, Okay. It was a sixteen hundred dollar router. Uh, time rolls around where I'm really cracking the whip. I'm like, I gotta get the shit done, I gotta get the shit done, install my new router. They're like, We can't find it. It's been like months. I'm like, So you just lost my fucking router? And they're like, Yes. So they offered me a new one. That is more expensive, but half off. It's like a three thousand dollar router. They're selling to me for fifteen hundred. So they basically cut the price in half for me. Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Wait a minute! What kind of scam is this? We lost sixteen. <laughs> no, 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 no. We lost the sixteen hundred dollar router you you sent to us. But we'll tell you what. We'll sell you another one. <laughs> we'll sell you another one you can buy directly from us. I am not in the position. To make it's demands. probably I, I will take you your same, fucking router. <laughs> it's, I bet you it's the same fucking router, and they're just telling you it's a different one. They're selling you your own router back for the same fucking price. I wish because that one has a user interface, and the one that I have no longer does. So I have to figure out the command line for a completely different system I'm unfamiliar with. And why it's are not... you why are why are you sending your routers to Israel, Josh? What are you doing? <laughs> because they they over there in the greatest country on God's green earth. The, the blue and white flag that I would gladly lay down 10 million American <laughs> lives for. Uh, they protect me for the right price, and right now that's the best I can ask for. So that's that's what's happening. And if they want to sell be me a, a new, be a better shame. router... Yeah, it'd be a real shame, Josh, if the second router had an accident too and they needed to sell you a third one. <laughs> hey, you know, I'll take it at this point. Whatever. As long as it fucking works at this point, I, I'll, I will buy whatever. Um... Cause it's all that's another one of the things it's like it's frustrating because people are like josh i want to send you money i want to send you like five thousand dollars in crypto where can i send it i'm like well you can send it here if you want because i like money but uh it's it's not a money thing if it was a money thing it's like we have to reach this you know like that south park episode where they keep having to to shill on the christian broadcasting network to upgrade their their uh, spaceship <laughs> to fight the aliens and shit it's like if that was the issue i would be on the cbc marathon saying we need a hundred thousand dollars to upgrade our laser to fight the aliens um but it's not it's I, I need people who have um a spine to stand by their product and say unless you have a court order we are not taking anything down and that shit is worth way more than money right now uh to all you have, little have kids you, out have there you, have you found some I, I have a lot of good people in my in my my um, park. A lot of people who want to help, 
but you know they they have small companies or they're you know small time professionals and they can't stick their neck out directly but they're throwing in you know what they can in in terms of like information cuz you, you were laughing at me before the stream started cuz I couldn't figure out how to turn my fucking microphone on in on Google Hangouts <laughs> I need intellectual capital surrounding me at this point yeah. I need people helping me out cuz when I get a new router that I've never looked at before and I have to get the website the website's down until I can figure out how to set up this new router um having somebody who is in networking helping is a godsend it's worth more than than anything so have you made like a list? I mean, there's, so I know that you tried um, going the Russian route and that didn't work. And then the Chinese route and that didn't work. Is there like a rogue nation out there that just doesn't give a shit about trannies? Like some African country that's like, fuck it. Well, it, it would be inappropriate to say that Russia and China failed me. Cause what happens is that one private company, each of those, those websites failed me. There are, there are considerations for every country on earth. And there was a time when the Kiwi farms was uh, stable. I was looking at different places to host. And I was, I literally, I have, I have paid a lot of money for solicitors and attorneys and, um, uh advocates as they say in russia uh to review the laws and the kiwi farms and tell me w what they can do what their country can do i've talked to people in finland denmark italy switzerland Liechtenstein, uh iceland I, I, i'm i'm talking like zimbabwe okay i'm talking like let's go to the heart of africa shit where you can send them a bag of grain they'll let you put your fucking website up it's not so simple and it, like okay i i have found a data center in ulaanbaatar mongolia would Ulaanbaatar be a good place? No, because they have a 10 megabit per second router there. And if you don't know, I need at least 2 gigabits per second, which is 20 times, 200 times faster. Uh, so the, the, those places have their own issues. Like Seychelles and Martas are, have good reputations as being bulletproof, um, but they have very limited networking because they're a fucking island in the middle of the Indian Ocean, and they don't have that great of a connection to the rest of the world. Um, it, it, and, how, about, how about North Korea? Have we looked at North Korea? I have looked at North Korea. Nobody re replied to my emails. <laughs> <laughs> um. So okay. The, the, it, okay. Russia. Russia has blocked KiwiFarms.net in Russia. Roskomnadzor has the the you know censorship authority, Internet authority in Russia. Uh, said that this pic and this is not a joke. This picture of Adolf Hitler dressed as Santa saying "Ho ho Holocaust" is offensive <laughs> to the Christian values of Russia. <laughs> I'm sorry. So. <laughs> The Russians didn't like that one? No, they actually blocked the Kiwi Farms over the Ho Ho Holocaust. <laughs> if, if you don't know, kids, uh, Holocaust denial is illegal in many countries, such as Israel, the entirety of Europe, and also Russia. Oh. Whew. Now, Russia, <laughs> Russia I just, is a... I want, I want to hear that discussion. I want to hear him talking with his boss about that <clears throat> particular fucking picture. Well, it's not. It's it's less funny when you know how it is. They have a list of images that are banned, um, and they see it and they say they send a complaint. And if you don't complain, they block you. And that's all there is to it. Unless, unless now Russia is a land of opportunity, and if you have the ruble, you can have your way with Razkanadzor and whoever, um, like Davichka, which is two two chan two ch dot hk. That is an image board in Russia that probably, and especially with VK, you can see some fucked up shit on VK, which is like Russian Facebook. The problem is that those people are, you know, those websites belong to people who are in the know, who are paying the right people, and they get the protection that they need. Um, you know, I have you gotta, the, you, you, you've got to meet some Russian uh, mobsters, basically. Yeah, and I theoretically could. I know some people, uh, but I'm not like <laughs> when we were briefly hosted in DDoS, on DDoS card. There was some fucking asshole from MSNBC or CNN or some shit, half a million followers, who was a former assistant to the FBI. I don't know who the fuck he was. He had some Italian name. And he was like, interesting. The Kiwi Farms is now hosted out of Russia. Could this be a setup to use the Kiwi Farms as a disinformation campaign against the, the Democratic Party in 2022 Congress elections? And it's like, okay, I already see what's going to happen if we go the Russia-China route. And I think that going that direction... Uh, would would draw the ire of the feds, and it would give more people a reason to hate the site in in like a general public sort of way. And I'm not I'm not there yet, where it's like, because it feels because you know what happened to um 
to Snowden is that he's now basically Putin's bitch. He lives in Moscow, and that's where he'll live, and that's where he'll die. He'll die in, in Russia. And it's like, I'm, I'm an American. <laughs> My website <laughs> is legal in the United States of America. I just need some Americans to stand by their fucking service and say, no, not without a court order. It should be the easiest thing in the world. No, fuck off. We don't give a shit. Bring us a court order. All you got to say um, but the, the, the campaign and the pressure and the going after clients, you know, people who are saying that they're going to start targeting the largest clients of Cloudflare and the, the people could that... You, could you create, like, a, a software solution and, like, do a pachinko thing? You know how the Japanese get around pachinko being gambling by having the businesses separated? Uh, could you come up with some kind of a software where uh, when you're posting on the forum, it's all innocuous and there are no private details and nothing mean is said, but then there's software on your desktop that translates it to what is actually being said? So technically, your website's not hosted. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of like creative solutions. The issue is that all those require like a complete forum software relay. And the thing is, is that I I firmly believe that what is hosted on the forum should be accessible to a regular person and a regular browser on the internet, the big I internet that exists that connects all of us across the world together. Um, it, like it, the moment that it becomes like, okay, let's just host on tour only. Let's, you know, use special browsers. Let's become invite only. It's like, well, why even fucking bother then? You can host anything if it's invite only on tour. You know what I mean? Um, but my, my website is a discussion forum between adults and we should be able to say what we say and people should be able to read it without an account and, and without bullshit, you know, protecting it. I, I know, but I, I think we're getting close to the end days of that. I mean, if you look at um, the demographic shift of users on the internet, right? Um, everybody is essentially mobile now. Um, forums are going the way of the dinosaurs. And the only sites that are interesting where you can really speak and say what you want are a handful of image boards, a handful of forums. And it seems like people are dead set on making it so you just can't fucking use them. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, though, if it gets to that point where it's like, I have tried literally everything and, you know, something, ha let's say that the government just steps down, the NSA comes down and says, Josh, uh, the CIA knocks on my door and says, hey, uh, we have an attache in Serbia, in case you didn't know, uh, hello, for the CIA, and if you don't shut down this website, we're going to frame you like Al Capone, and we're going to find some bullshit reason to have you extradited back to the U.S., and it's like, if it gets to that, all I'm going to do is I'm going to zip up everything. There's about eight terabytes of data on the site, and I'll just give it out to people. I'll anonymize the user data so that there's no, like, email addresses and passwords and shit or usernames left on the site. And I'll hand so it like out to people. It's like a final fuck you yeah, <laughs> to yeah. the and powers that be. And that information will find... What I suggest to people, if that happens, is they should split, split the... Become more focused make a website dedicated to one board or one group of threads or whatever. Don't try to make Kiwi farms too. That won't work. Um, it would be stomped out like, you know, <laughs> like a, like a newborn. It would it, not even, don't even try. Um, but that information will be out there so people can find it on, you know, a web torrent and download it and reinstance <laughs> the site and delete everything that they don't need. And go. Well, yeah, I've, I've, I've been used to watching shit get subverted, right? That used to be the play, like uh, NeoGAF or something awful. They'd come and take over the mod team admins, change the roles, and everybody has to behave. Um, but there was like a switch up uh, almost around election time with uh, stuff like HGN or the Daily Stormer and now Kiwi Farms, where it's not like we're going to subvert it and change it that way. We're just going to fucking wipe it out and make it go away. Um, and it makes me, I guess, worried for uh, what's left. I mean, it, once Kiwi Farms is gone, what what websites are left that are still large? You've got 4chan, and then you go to the smaller size, like, uh, you know, your uh, uh, female forum you don't want to specifically name, or, uh, you know, Cow or uh, Encyclopedia Dramatica. I mean, they're not going to stop. Any place somebody says something they don't like, they're just going to get it yanked, and it'll be easier because they'll be dealing with people that aren't going to put in the effort you're putting in. Yeah, I mean, that's true. Uh, the answer to this is... Federated content, so things like the Fediverse, um, will probably become the new norm, because uh, you know the biggest nodes like posts will always be targeted and stuff. But the actual requirements in terms of money and time to set up a single Fediverse node is actually quite small, and the more people on it, the the easier it will be to one-click deploy your own Fediverse node. Um, so yeah, I, I, I think I, th I think you or Graf or somebody should make that into, uh, a business. I, 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 a lot of they're it's working on that. They're working on that. But you know, that's the thing. It's like if you have a 
a server, you know, farm in whatever country, and you say, you know, one click deploy uh, a Fediverse node, well, that's still centralized. I'm talking about like, you know, build your own shit that is independent. Well, no, operated. no. What I'm what I what I'm saying is, um, yeah, build your own shit's good, but I I think a lot of people are uh, just technically inept. If you could sell a package. You know, if somebody said, "Hey, I want my own instance," or I it'll want, be free. Know, like, uh, op- uh, I know that uh, the hosting aspect of it. This is how it works in open source software: is that the software is free. You get the attention. You get people putting in time and, and uh, smarts, improving it for free because they use it. And then also, you have a, pr- a premium company attached. It's like we sell um, Fediverse nodes to businesses. So if you want to have, you know, a Fediverse presence and for your company, you can pay us for our, for our enterprise suite, the best of the best, but the software that it runs is free and anybody can download it and set up their own shit posting note if they want. That's how it usually works. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm saying people are so fucking stupid and lazy doing that's too much. What I'm saying is you, you create a template where somebody says, I want my own instance or whatever. And you're like, yeah, five bucks, they pay the five bucks and it's set up for them and, and they just basically run it. Oh, like there, they, there is nothing that up. they do. Yeah, yeah, er- everything's set up. It's just it's prepackaged. It's an end user product. There's no work that you do. It's custom. It's ready to go. And then you go to the big companies and fuck around if you want to make it bigger and better. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean, sure, why not? But people do that for free right now. Is like Dick Masterson says. I, I wa- I'm I saying. Want I'm saying they shouldn't. I'm saying if you guys <laughs> want a war chest to, for future shit you're gonna deal with, people like Graf or you or whatever should make that a business, and then uh, you know appeal to people's. Uh, what I mean, you're dealing with the laziest group of people that's ever used the internet. Everybody puts their first name and their address on every fucking account they have. Um, if it's not explicitly written on how to do something, they're fucking retards. So, you know, making it retard proof will make you profit and uh, expand the Fediverse. Yeah, I, I mean, I get what you're saying. There's there's like tiers. You have the open. It's not that hard. I'll, I'll say that. But like the average person will just join a node like they don't. You'll, you'll have three kinds of people, crazy people who want to set up their own shit and have people on it or just make it for themselves. You'll have businesses that want to pre- a point of presence. You'll have large nodes that may also have centralized systems that they set up for people who just want to rent a domain name. And then you have um, the end user who will just join the majority of people who just join. So like the, sure. the business applications are already there, but feder- federation in general is where it's moving. Uh, people want to get off discord. They're joining XMPP, which has been around for ages, but it's making a comeback. I've had, I've never heard of XMPP. And now my XMPP list has like 10 people on it just from the last two weeks. I'm trying to talk to people and like, add me on XMPP. I was like, okay, fine. Um, that that's sort of like decentralized uh, instant messaging. You have people trying to make services like Matrix, which is decentralized, um, like Discord, but it's not very good. So that's that's sort of the issue is that the free stuff is not not as great, and that's how it always is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's, yeah, that's an eternal story, isn't it? Um, but it's it's there, and it's getting better all the time is the thing the fediverse is doing great it's it's really working it's it's impressive and i've been trying to tell people for years now that no really it's out there you have twitter that doesn't suck and there's a lot of people on it and you just got to join and you got to tell people about it um so but i haven't i haven't had any issues with it on the instance i'm on so far and hopefully that will become everything you know email (laughs) is like this too email is decentralized and it's worked fine um for, for decades, literally for decades. Uh, and we'll, we'll have that. Um, and hopefully, m- my big fear is, I, especially with the Russia shit, um, I don't want to see the internet break apart. Uh, I know that China has their own literal, little eye internet, their own network for their country. Uh, North Korea has that too. And I, I just see that being the, the, the inevitable future is that Russia will be on its own thing with Belarus and the EU will have its own thing. And the only people like within China who can communicate outside their internet uh, are companies that have a license to, um, which is why it saddens me to see people like Liz Fong Jones trying deliberately trying to strike blows at the, the central points of weakness. Cause if APNIC, which by the way, includes China as their service region decides we're going to start dropping services that are politically uh, misaligned with Australia. Well, who do you who do you think is going to file all the complaints to Atmic going forward? It's going to be China. China's going to file a million complaints of the first fucking date that that happens. So 
It's a it's a it's a really bad <laughs> present. Get rid of all the uh, Winnie the Pooh pictures. Is that is it going to be a purge of Australian poos? Yeah, all all the poos, all the um. I mean, they, they have a they have a lot of shit, and especially like um, just capitalist things. You know, you have so many people already who are just trying to get in to China as a market, like um, Jean China talking about the jungle. Well, hen hen how bing chilling, and are, that, you, are you having a stroke? Or are you talking Chinese? <laughs> I'm talking Chinese. That's real Chinese. Uh, <laughs> start, you start, you start, I don't know if it's like a racial joke. I go bing bong ching chong, or if you're like stroking out on me for that's, a second. That's, that's what the language sounds like. It's just sounds. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Point the stress got to him. He's finally stroking out, folks. <laughs> but, you do know the John the John Cena thing, right? Uh, where he did the fucking commercial like a whipped puppy. Didn't he do an apology video he, or some shit? He mentioned he all he said was uh, Taiwan. I was like, I love Taiwan or something like that. And he like said it in a way that made it sound distinct from China. So the WWE, who has a huge business in China, cracked the whip and he put out like a TikTok video because they they have a, their own TikTok. They own TikTok, but they have an internal TikTok that's something else. Um, and he put out a thing on TikTok and he goes, and he's eating ice cream and he's, he's speaking Chinese and he's like, ho ho, I really love the Chinese people, <laughs> but I also love ice cream. And that's what Bing Xiling is like ice cream. It's like frozen cream or something in Chinese. And he's like, oh, ice cream. And uh, I love China. <laughs> Holy shit. Okay, yeah, I, and I thought you were having a medical emergency. I was a little worried no. right there for you. I, I thought I they find... send an elite squad of troons to get you, and they injected you with a little troon shine when we weren't watching. I, I find uh, I, I'm very fascinated by China and Russia, so I know, I know a lot about them, um, and I, I I see where it's going because it's it, even the EU though the EU is the EU people don't even know this in the US, but the EU is actually really fucking tired of America. And they they see Amer they literally see Americans as the biggest fucking retards, and our political election cycles are like trash TV to them, and they just like scoff at us, and they want to make their own shit. They want to have an EU internet that has different rules with more privacy and, and more regulation and stuff. And the average person in the EU would support that. And um, I see that the EU will have a trade union internet. The Russians will and Belarusians will have their own internet, and. Uh, 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 the uh, what's the African thing called? The African Union will have its own thing. <laughs> I, what's the African internet called? I don't know. Dial up. <laughs> <laughs> Africa. I mean, Africa's where all the in innovations going to come from. Mark my words, because they they still use um, shortwave. They still have shortwave in uh, Africa. It's still big there. Oh, I bet. I bet. Yeah, I bet. Uh, they're just, they're innovating like crazy down there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you, you're talking about moving to, to Africa. Daily Stormers on .rw, which is Rwanda. And Rwanda has had a bit of an economic miracle because um, it's called billions of dollars of foreign f foreign aid has really revitalized Rwanda into a, a paradise under a dictatorship, and you can get away with a lot of shit in Rwanda. So Now, have you tried reaching out to the Rwandan uh, dictator and be like, hey... <laughs> white white what? people are fucking crazy. <laughs> 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 Look at these people. They're cutting off their dicks. <laughs> Nigga, they're gay, and they're cutting off their dicks. And you just got... send them like, a, a <laughs> test picture in the email of uh, of uh, Hitler saying "ho ho holocaust" just to see if he's cool with they it. They don't know who Hitler is. <laughs> so you've already you're already in good. Look, Namib Namibia. Okay, this was a famous story, but Namibia, which was a, a former colony of Germany, like way back when the 1800s, elected someone to a position called eight, uh, and he was he was literally named Adolf Hitler. He was like a black dude. And they asked him, like, don't, why did your parents name you that? And he's like, they like the name. Don't they know about Hitler? Who? <laughs> I'm the only Hitler that I know besides my, my family. I uh, just really like they love They love the name. They thought it just rolled off the tongue. It's, it's very catchy. It's very memorable. Um, so, no, the Africans are blessed in a lot of ways. They, they really are poised to take over. Well, I mean that that sounds like the the next innovative. I, I, I'm looking forward to what would the what would the uh, what would the URL be? Q, Q, if you went to Rwanda, it'd be what RW. RW. And what would um, what would be another good one down there? Everybody, I keep seeing your chat saying Niger because they just want you to call it nigger net. <laughs> That's what they want you to call your fucking website. Well, there's Niger, Niger there's Nigeria, there's a uh, Seychelles, the Central African Republic, Namibia. 
Uh, Namibia is NA. South Africa is, I think, just SA. Um, you have Botswana. B, uh, I think that's BW. I know all the top level domains. Uh, it's been ingrained into my my memory at this point. Um, but no, Rwanda would be a good choice because it has um, it has some infrastructure. Seychelles also has some infrastructure. Uh, but I mean, a, a lot of Africa is just very undeveloped. Nigeria is. People, I, uh, a lot of people don't know this, but Nigeria has some like 600 million people living in it. And, Is it really? Oh, it's a big country. It's um, it, it it's a yeah, it's an up and comer in terms of like population and resources. Uh, and it's a big shithole, but they have internet there. So, that in. NG, I think, is Nigeria, and NI is Niger. Are they going to give the uh, Indians a run for their money with uh, tech support scams, you think? <laughs> I mean, they already probably already do. Uh, they speak English there, I think. is Part of, part of the reason why they're so developed is because they um, were a English colony instead of a, a French one. Don't quote me on that. I don't know for sure. I do know that China is trying to set up shop in Africa, though. Oh, they've been doing that forever. Yeah, they, that's that new uh, neo-colonialism. <laughs> they know where the resources and uh, uh, consumers are. Yeah, they're going to sweep down there and make a pretty penny. They want to make Africa their China. They want to start exporting shitty jobs to, to Africans. <laughs> Put the suicide nets outside of their phone factories? Yep. Exactly. They want to be the old U.S., and they want to make Africa like their their factory workers and stuff. So how do you feel about it? I mean, it's been like two weeks of all this hectic shit going on. I, obviously, it's stressful, but like, do you feel like you've got a handle on it? Is it still really up in the air? Like, how, how confident or comfortable are you with everything that's going on? Um, my, my greatest concern is about like a, a frame job. I re, I'm, I'm concerned about the legal implications, because even though I know the site doesn't do anything illegal, um, that doesn't mean that the government can't find a reason to, to go after you. Um, but I have four lawyers right now and I have a lot of attention on me and a lot of goodwill from, uh, people who would help me out in that situation. And I know from, from H hand, Jim Watkins, after the insurrection, after the QAnon shit, walked into the Congress and walked out a free person. And I know. Yeah, but let's be frank here. Watkins was running server space to the fucking CIA. So he probably had established fucking relationships. Well, if that's the case, I don't know if that's the case. I've not heard anything. That, that. Is, is. Him and Hot Wheels talked about it on a video they deleted. Are you referring to the IPs? Because the IPs that they had with the Department of Defense, that's a that's a common misconception. No, no, no. They were talking about renting server space, giving server space. Uh, I don't know. Um, I, I know I heard it. I know I heard it. And I know somebody's got a copy of that video that's out there somewhere. I bet you fucking uh, Frederick would probably confirm it too because he hates Watkins now. I mean, maybe, but I, I like the, the site is so so much less political, and that's a big thing in his favor. That's another thing that's like a huge sticking point in this is like it's not a political website. We're not trying to enact political change. The trannies that we're making fun of, we're not now, making. To be fair, Josh, what about the sub forum you run that's called Insurrection? Let's overthrow the government. <laughs> it seems to be the most popular one on the site. If you if you go directly to the .ru version and scroll down, there's that board in uh, all Cyrillic text that says meddling in the 2020 election oh, affairs. Oh, your chat, your your chat is annoyed. Um, I, it's a throat lozenge chat. That way, I'm not coughing all the time. They're wondering what I'm chewing on. Not potatoes. Potatoes would be delicious though. <laughs> God, God knows I've got enough of them. Um, but yeah, so you're you're worried about it like a frame up? Are you worried it'd be a frame up on you personally or on the website? On me. I think that it, it, I I am the one that keeps the site up. There would be no replacement for me. So the clear if you if you had like safeties off and you can do whatever you wanted, then that would be the obvious answer. Now, are you concerned at all? Because uh, based on how Keffels and all of them are acting, and based on how these journalists are acting, are you concerned at all that they're going to try to find you in real life? That they're going to start Josh hunting um, to try to get like uh, some ambush interview? Of you walking out of, I don't know what the fuck you have around you, pizzeria, whatever. Uh, oh, there's a really good uh, KFC that's near the university in Belgrade. I go there. I go there sometimes. No, see, what you should have said is you should have picked the shittiest gang territory and been like, this is where I am. <laughs> <laughs> this is where you need to come and wear these colors and say these things to find me. When the Bloomberg Journal shows up and, you know, with his rainbow flag pin and stuff, it, it'll solve itself no matter what what gang territory you find yourself in in Serbia. Um, yeah, I mean, like, that's a concern. Like, here's, here's, a, here's a true story. 
My lawyer called me, and I, I shit myself because I see his number, and it's like 201, which is the Washington, D.C. area code. I'm like, oh, this is the call from the CIA to shut down the site. <laughs> <laughs> I pick it up, and I answer, and I go, hello. And it's my lawyer, and he's like, hey, Josh, I just want to let you know that there's a Bloomberg journal digging through my trash right now, and she's called up all the uh, all the people that I've represented in the past. And I'm, not, I'm, I'm just letting you know it's not an issue, but uh, that's happening. Oh, seriously, digging through his trash? No, I made that part up because it's funny. But she was oh, calling. Up... <laughs> <laughs> she was calling up all the old, old. It's like Marjorie Maggie or something with with Bloomberg, a Bloomberg journal, not like some weird independent schizoid fucking shit house, you know, newspaper. Bloomberg journal uh, harassing my attorney because they don't want him to represent. They don't want me to have legal representation. That's how far gone they are. They don't even, like forget freedom of speech versus like hate speech. You don't deserve to have a fucking attorney because we hate you. Have they tried um, going after? Well, you now you have uh, like Kiwi and all your companies separate entities. Have they tried personally going after your bank stuff? Like, are they trying any underhanded shit with finances or the law or any of that to try to like fuck you where you are? Um, I, I mean, I'm sure they're. I'm sure that they could. I'm sure that they've Cause, thought Because all it. I hear from, from little Nick Fuentes is how the government, when it's angry at you, will take away everything and shut your bank accounts down. So I'm wondering if, like, that's actually going to happen, you know, to somebody and not be a make-believe story like his, where, like, Keffel's, I don't know, calls up, I, I don't even know what a Serbian bank would be called. Let's call it Serbia 1. Calls up Serbia 1. It's like, excuse me, can you shut this bank account down? Because this guy called me a fucking troon. I mean, they would have to call up uh, Satoshi Nakamoto and be like, hello, Moshi Moshi, you have to shut down this crypto wallet because that's where the money goes. Uh, yeah, they have, uh, there is, uh, Frederick is actually, Frederick is the one that goes after the money all the time. I know he's tried, I know what he's tried to do, um, but I mean, so far, it, it's just like, it's legal. It's a legal website. And uh, it's it's not politically aligned, so it's harder to say, like, like you know, when the, the January 6th shit happened, there was a lot of momentum to get 8chan shut down. They got hit in a lot of different ways, but mm -hmm. um, as far as, like, what I do, I'm, I'm squeaky clean, and I'm sure this is what uh, satisfies me to a great extent, is I know I have done nothing illegal. I know that I've done nothing illegal. I have no dirt out there that's not already out there. And I know that those fuckers are, are searching everything they can find, going through like leaked passwords, trying to log into my shit, trying to figure out if there's like something somewhere that I left behind that they can use to try and like humiliate me in some way. And I just fuck, I know there's not. And it, that, that, that is funny to me. Uh, like when I get login attempts and shit, that makes me laugh. Um, but yeah, financially, no, uh, thankful, like people have really stepped up with like donations and stuff. And I'm sure if I check my super chats right now, there's probably a lot that have just come in through that, but, um, yeah. So, you know, you don't, you don't fund yourself like I do with hats. You use, uh, what is it? You've got your, uh, your donation thing down there, but you've got like a, a you take crypto too though. Yeah. It's mostly crypto for the Kiwi. For, I, well, let me, let me word it like this. I stream. And, uh, my stream income is completely separate from the Kiwi farms income that, that, um, the Kiwi Farms only makes money through crypto. And I occasionally do, I twice a year, I do merchandise runs. Um, and I, I guess I'll just show this very quickly because it's, it's in production. I do have these um, already. And I didn't get an opportunity to do merchandise earlier this year. But I'm doing a patch run, and I have a bunch of, like, sew-on patches for when the bombs drop. Everyone can identify, <laughs> everyone can identify themselves because we need to identify uh, Troon or Friend, right? So here are the Suan patches. Uh, these are getting shipped out to my fulfillment center, and when I have everything fixed up, I will sell them. Um, and I'm not sure on so the these, price. So these are, these, <laughs> no, you need to tell your customers because these are like a giant bullseye for trainees <laughs> to hunt them in public. No, no, no. <laughs> you, put the, you put this patch on and you're going to be tranny hunted through them all. <laughs> the, I, I hope that if you have this patch on, it's sewed on to your, uh, your gun, your gun holster or your, <laughs> your carrying case. But yeah, uh, that's, that's my next, uh, last year I did the coins. Let's come, I'm doing patches a little bit easier.
Small, small, small business out of out of the now, United where's States. Where's the patch of um, Christian fucking his mother? <laughs> I I decided based on the, the. There's a long story attached to this, but when I did the silver coin run last year, there was a lot of problems, and I have decided that Christian Weston Chandler is uh, cursed by God, and his image <laughs> shall not be placed on any merchandise uh, moving forward. Yeah, his curse has really affected a lot of people, hasn't it? <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's pretty fun. I mean, you think about it, the entire Kiwi Farms is a direct curse from, from Christian. His first curse, Maha Meha, had reverberations that resulted in uh, where I am today. Oh, and I'm still convinced that Ralph had an evil the evil spirit that was inhabiting Chris, you know, jump on him <laughs> when they, they crossed paths during that fucking film. Yeah, you saw it in real life. You saw, if you, like analyze it like one of those ghost hunters you can actually see the specks of like light and dirt from from chris flying around in in the ether and <laughs> it's looking for a host and then just sees this like plump target standing there barely barely stable on like the the toothpick legs holding up a selfie stick and it's thinking that's it that's my that's my boy right there and now with your, uh, your 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 patches, uh, when you do the run, how would people get them? Because you got to tell them, you know, uh, tomorrow you could get nuked off the internet. How do it, they buy these patches if they need to, and you're not around? <laughs> it will be on madattheinternet.com. Don't go there right now. You'll just get the Cloudflare error. <laughs> okay, there you go. Uh, it will Matty or M A T I dot live Matty dot live. Um, I will be selling them when I have the opportunity. Probably won't even like they're still in production. I'm getting a thousand of them. Four hundred are done so far. Um, so. Hopefully at some point, October is my favorite month of the year. Hopefully by then I'll have the stability to put up the patches. Uh, the merchandise runs have been very lucky in that I've had no issues. Despite Ralph, Ralph tried to get me fucking deplatformed from WooCommerce selling shit on a WordPress blog. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I've been lucky with that. You know, knock on. Do I have any fucking wood to knock on here? Knocking on my table. There you um, go. Yeah, hopefully that'll stick well, around. What uh, what are you selling them for? What's the price? Uh, I'm not sure yet. Probably tw I, I'm thinking of doing 25 for the lot and having like a button to press for like a gratuity. Like if you want to add 10, just because you want to. I think a lot of people will do that. Because a lot of people are encouraging me to like some guy is like I I sell patches at my store and they'll go for like nine dollars each. So you should sell them for like 50 each. But then I, you know, that's, I know how much they cost to make. So it kind of hurts to be like, yeah, you, you should pay me like way more than they cost to make. Um, so it'll probably be about 25. Add 10 if you want to. Okay. And that's the those are all the designs, or yes. are there more designs coming in? Oh no, that's that's the final designs. This um these nine. And you get all of them in the bundle. Well, there you go. So if everything, if somebody comes uh, to Serbia to hunt you down, and you're running through the alleyways, and you need that cash, uh, <laughs> go to MITI dot live uh, to fund his escape from the Troon Squad. Don't go there right now, though, because it's down. <laughs> you just get a me message saying that this <laughs> right. website's an imminent threat to human life. <laughs> Are you gonna print that out and like uh, put that on like a, a like a framed <laughs> frame? Your frame wall? The... <laughs> yeah, I guess I could. Uh, call ends and hidden... imminent threat. Uh, oh, yeah, every hour it does that. You want to start up one more? Uh, yeah, in about ten minutes. One. Or I guess I could do it now. Actually, now, now I, yeah, now would be the time, and then uh, we'll move on to whatever the next thing is. Sure. Okay. All right, let me hop out. You want to just send me the link? Yep. Okay. Uh, you want <laughs> my uh my takedown mess? I guess I can make that merch. Is that copyright uh, Cloudflare? They <laughs> they gonna sue me for copyright infringement if I print their fucking blog post and uh throw that up on a merchandise site? Talk about Gunt. Maybe. Find some reason to make fun of him. Ask him about the SIGs. He, he, he's commented on that before. I don't know if he wants to talk about that. He said that he smokes because they can't say it's even smoking related, so he doesn't care. Heck. What's that post to your domain? That's a good counterpoint. Feels like it's my copyright if they put put it to my domain without my permission. Which is the biggest bullshit thing ever, by the way. I'll save that.
Kaloha. Ah, there we go. Someone mentioned a, a good point. I, someone suggested that I sell the Cloudflare error as a merchandise. And then I said, if I did that, they'd probably sue me for copyright infringement. Um, which someone else replied <coughs> saying that it was put on your domain, so shouldn't you have the copyright? I don't think that's how copyright works, but it is interesting <coughs> um, that Cloudflare's decision to, to take down the site was also met with like replacing the site with a PR statement. And I think when they took down Daily Stormer and 8chan... They didn't do that. I want to say that we're the first site that they've taken down that they replaced with a, um, with a with a statement explaining why they did. I could be wrong about that, but that's like, it's ridiculous that they felt the need to to run damage control for their their brand using my domain name, all of my domain names, by the way, not just yeah. That, that 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 was weird because I I don't think I've ever seen them do that before. Yeah, it 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 didn't it redirect to their statement it wasn't just that they they uh, it didn't redirect but it left it left a message with, with like a brief statement and then like a blog about- with like a brief statement and then like a blog post to their official blog <laughs> he's blogging on your website about how dangerous you are <laughs> uh, you know and i i said good things about matthew prince there's a zero hedge, hedge article about called um where the sidewalk ends that i wrote and i said that um matthew prince was like one of the only people in big tech that was like worth a shit i mean even more people like him and then a year later he hijacks my domain name and writes his, redirects it to his fucking live journal with an explanation of how he's feeling and how, how it evil besets him on all sides <laughs> well i mean now he's he's fairly independently wealthy i mean he runs his company and everything he's probably super rich uh i i'm just curious like if you had to make your best guess who do you think it was that spooked him over the weekend um i okay so you have a couple options here you have either a uh it was suggested to me that the payment processors were were threatening to stop processing payments for cloudflare unless they dropped the site that's option a option b would be michael yonka and the federal government um option c would be um general pressure from the outside and or now i want this together the the campaign and or actually seeing something on the site that made him want to take it down. And then option D is the shareholders. And I would actually wager that he was, that they held like an internal poll with the largest shareholders regarding removing him as CEO if he didn't take down the site. And that is what was the threat. Uh, Because Cloudflare is publicly traded. And if you don't know this, in the United States, if a company is publicly traded, they must do what is in the best interest of their shareholders. A company cannot make decisions legally in the United States that are against the financial interests of the shareholders. They are legally obligated by force of, by the violence of the government to do whatever is as avaricious as possible for the shareholders. So all they have to do is say, we will take you to court. If they couldn't even, you know, remove him, let's say he owned 51% of his company. They can say, we will take you to the sec and say that you are not doing what's in the interest of the, the, um, the shareholders. Uh, the stock went down, but you know, all it stocks went down, but that doesn't matter. They can say this happened. And then coincidentally it aligned with the stock drop dropping. So we can make the prima facie case that he's not making a, um, uh, financial uh, decisions that benefit the shareholders, and that's that's criminal. That's criminal in the United States. So you think that maybe like uh, what is it called? Uh, is it caucus belli? You know, the looking for a reason for war thing. You think Causes some of the stockholders? Belli. There we go. You think some of the stockholders had a, a previous issue with them, and were looking for like, hey, this is a great way to fuck with them. I mean, it could be. A pro- I mean, I'm sure. Again, it's probably like everyone had their own reasons, but it could just be like you know, IT stocks are going down, and it's like we want number, we want line go up. Unga bunga, yeah, see, I, down. I, I, like option A doesn't work for me because the payment processes them, themselves are plugged into a bunch of websites that would have to use Cloudflare. So they'd be it, just for their own services, they'd be fucking themselves over by kneecapping Cloudflare. Well, l- let me re- rephrase that. Not the payment processors, the payment gateways. MasterCard, Visa Card, Amex, Discover. Okay. The, they they are more powerful and more active in censorship than anyone could imagine. If I, if I had one wish, I would make it so that those companies could not interfere with, with transactions at all and make decisions like that. Because if, if we could make it so that 
um, two people can exchange money over the internet without the government or especially without i mean fuck i'm okay with the government at this point because i can <laughs> i can sue the government and say that my rights are infringed i have no recourse whatsoever against financial institutions they are private companies and the, the reasons why they deplatform people is a trade secret and there's nothing you can do to even get them to tell you why you're banned because it's a trade secret um, if I had one wish, that that would fix the internet overnight because I would be able to make money. I would be able to do whatever the fuck I want. I could lay my own fucking fiber optic if I wanted to. Like, if the site was <laughs> genuinely making the money that it should be with the traffic that it gets, I'd be making probably $20,000 a month. And I could I could do literally whatever the fuck I wanted to, and nobody could tell me otherwise. But because I have to operate cloak and dagger and accept, you know, uh, crypto bucks that nobody even wants to buy because they're afraid of them. <laughs> Uh, it, it, it really, it really like only 5% of people bother to learn crypto. I get more donations in the form of visa gift cards bought at Walmart than I do from cryptocurrency. <clears throat> and, and it's a, it's a, it's a shame, but you know, people don't want to deal with what, it. What if this, wait, okay, here's my conspiracy theory. What if this is the big hustle? Um, visa wants to sell their shitty gift cards. So they <laughs> fuck with your ability to make money so people can only pay you with their shitty gift cards. They're making five bucks a gift card. They're raking they it found in. found a way to do it. Off yep. my suffering. <laughs> yeah, it's... Incentivized, yeah. That, I mean, that that's... If, if you're listening to this and you're like, ooh, I, wanna, I want things to get better. I'm not, like, blackpilled. Um, find a way to force payment gateways to process money any legal ordinary transaction between two private entities should be uh should happen without the consent of any third party um and i don't know if that's ever going to happen there's a there's a government service coming out literally called fed now which is like the worst name ever for anything <laughs> Um, but Fed now is a Federal Reserve service, but the Federal Reserve is a private company uh, in some ways. It's like owned by, owned in part by the government and part by the bank. So it remains to be seen that the Fed now will operate the same way that the, the, the payment gateways do. But it will be a bank to bank for banks. It'll it'll be bank. It's kind of like how Europe has. It's kind of like how Europe has IBAN numbers and uh, BIC numbers for for banks. It'll it'll be bank to bank transfers. So if that works out. Um, that would be a game changer. You, you would see so much innovation and new websites and new, and new things coming out overnight if people could just accept fucking money from people who want to give them money. Uh, that's, the, that's the biggest damper on freedom of expression right now. It's not even service providers. It's the fact that you cannot give people money that you want to give money to. Yeah, I mean, that's been a... If this happens, would you, would you set up the Bank of Josh? Is that is that what the so they could send directly to I you? I could I, I could literally like between okay we have sixteen thousand people who logged into the site the day the the um dot net was seized. Um, I think it's you only need like seven million dollars to to start a bank in terms of initial investment. So let's see, seven million divided by sixteen thousand, four hundred thirty dollars each. I could do it. I could get a bank together if I really wanted to. Um, and there's more people who don't even have accounts who would chip into. So that number is theoretically much lower. And some people would invest like 10000 or 50000 Some people would invest fifty. It would, it would even out. I could put together a bank is what I'm saying. I cannot put together Kiwi card because I've looked this up. <laughs> to make your own visa a payment uh, gateway, it's $70 million to, just for licensing. To get licensed in every state in the U.S. to be a payment gateway like MasterCard or Visa card is you need $70 million. I don't even think you get that back as opposed to the initial investment for, you know, a, a bank or a, a credit union. So yes, I, I will make a fucking bank. I don't give a shit. I'll figure this out. But uh, I need I need this whole you know discover can say you don't get to process money anymore. Bullshit to die. And the sooner that that dies, the better we will all be. So we talked a lot about the Keffel stuff, which I'm sure um, is the most prescient, right? And all the other stuff going on. But um, I figured for like the last hour, you want to talk about something more upbeat instead of a, de a deranged tr uh, tranny trying to hunt you down <laughs> and like destroy you um uh, you want to talk about uh I, I don't know some of your favorite personalities from running the site some of the, the shit that you've liked the most and recent oh geez uh i, I you know I, I, i've talked about how i've locked the threads on keffels and a lot of the people in the drop kiwi farm stuff because i realized at some point that keffels read his thread so much that if somebody posted something, it would get retweeted by him 
in minutes every time it, like it's so fast that I don't, I can't even believe that someone in his discord sent it to him for him like this has to be him screenshotting shit his, himself uh however there is one thing from the, from everything that Keffel said that actually made me laugh out loud because it was so funny and it was he was getting they're fighting with each other now because the threads locked so they can't and the site's down so it's like they can't argue against the site anymore Keffel was got called out for calling people retarded and Keffels came back, I swear to God, by saying, I'm mentally disabled and I'm reclaiming the word. Literally came out and said, I'm retarded, so I get to say retarded. <laughs> and that was the funniest fucking thing I've ever seen. Uh, it's like, yeah, that sums it up. You, you're a retard. Well, yeah, no, they're, they're, they're absolutely starting to eat each other. Uh, I think I saw the retard thing. Uh, didn't they make like some previous statement about fucking a retarded girl and that's what started it all? Oh jeez, probably. Uh, they, dude, all Ke his... yeah, Keffel said something like, "I I like fucking retarded girls because they're dumb enough to do it." Some weird, some statement that somebody dug up and got really mad about that started the whole retard shit. If you look up all his tweets from like just like in 2021, he is the most sexually violent person you could possibly imagine. Like the words he uses to describe sex are just like like you know feminists say this like, "Oh, sex is violence. All sex is violence." Like he is literally using. You know, a sexual innuendo in a way that sounds like he's killing people. It's like saying, uh, uh, I'm better, uh, you know, I want to uh, uh, normalize fucking hot milfs and I want to fuck your mom is something that he goes to all the time. And then, of course, he also is obsessed with my mom. So it's like, okay, that's pretty obvious what you're doing there, buddy. Um, he also like, say, said something really disgusting like, your, real women are jealous of me because I, I have a, a vagina that you can smash your dick directly into my prostate. And I, I'll have an orgasm. And it's like, yeah, Ew. I saw that one. I saw that one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, which is just, uh, I, I never got it. Like the thing with the, the, the tranny shit that always amazed me was that the, it's you, lifelong dilation. It, like it doesn't stop. If you don't keep the hole open, it closes. Like you're committing to like two hours of ripping a hole open over and over and over and over again. Like Supp that's got to, that's got to drive you crazy. I'd go fucking insane supposedly it becomes less painful and less frequent over time to the point where they do it like once a month after a couple of years but yeah um yeah but see every every tranny i've seen talk about it always complains that uh if they don't maintain this you know rigorous dilation schedule uh they lose depth um mm -hmm. they lose they you know lose structure um it tightens up too much to use so like it it i i don't know but like even if it was just two years right um I don't know if I could do it, man. If I had an open wound that I had to keep digging into every day for hours a day, I'd fucking, I'd, I'd somersault off the roof. Yeah. Seems to be the, the popular opinion. It's like an, um, an earring piece, piercing, you know, a woman who get earrings, if they don't wear earrings every so often, it closes up, it scabs over and then, um, eventually becomes too narrow to put an earring into and they have to get it re, re pierced. Oh, do you know what would be the most horrifying thing if you're a tranny right now? You just got your transition surgery, and you go to test out your new bits and parts, right? And then you get monkeypox. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine dilating with monkeypox? <laughs> I'm sure that's happened. It has to have happened somewhere. <laughs> it must be so bad. Um, oh, okay, favorites. This year, Ralph is pr Ralph is consistently entertaining. He's really stepped up uh, to lighten the mood. <laughs> he really has, hasn't he? He um, just just like his he's set himself up so that he has he has to be yelling constantly at something because he he considers himself like he copes about how everyone finds him disgusting, even the people who tolerate him, like Nick Fuentes, like make fun of him for being a fat piece of shit. Uh, so he just says that I'm the heel. I'm I'm like a real life heel. And it's like, no, that's like a wrestling thing. That's like men playing pretend to make money by making entertaining television. You, people just hate you. And he doesn't seem to understand that. So he, he acts like a cartoon character, um, but in real life. And it's... Well, it's, like the, the, trans, the transformation over the last year has been really stunning. I mean, he went from a guy that wanted to fight anybody, right? And got two beatings. Um, to the point where he wouldn't even go the aquarium guy, right? He wouldn't even go to the aquarium to confront him after saying he was going to like witness protect. He'd always call people out. The fuck he is. Heard to have your name out there. You're skin. He's like uh, uh, turned into this like like a caricature of a character. You know what I mean? 
and it's like that Sam Kinison yelling that he does. You're right, that like wrestling bullshit. Um, it's really it's it is entertaining. It's just very weird to watch. I I don't know. I don't know what he must. I think he's stuck in that mode. He must be like that off stream now too. <laughs> I'm 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 sure he is. I'm sure that he's just awful to live with. Um, I don't even want to think about. I don't like May at all because she's like a pedo horse, but uh, like. I'm sure that her life is just a living nightmare that never ends. And every day she wakes up and she just stares at the ceiling and <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> it's like waking up in jail and not having any reason to get out of bed. There's, there's, there's a, some complications going on there. So, um, oh, yeah, I mean, outside of, outside of big stuff, like, you know, like I know Ralph has his own sub forum now and stuff and he kind of blew up with all the stupidity and stuff like Chris or DSP cause they're, or wings cause they're kind of bigger names, but I mean, just throughout the the history of the site, uh, what what would you say was like some of your favorites? Like people that you came across, and you're like, "Oh man, that's fucked up," or you know, something like that. Like that really caught your attention. Throughout the entire history of the site, um, way back when, I the Deagle Nation stuff remains some of the funniest stuff that ever happened on the site. And the funny thing about that it was that the guy behind it, Jen Rinkowski he was like a MDE wannabe. He wanted to, he, he was in the area in Massachusetts near Sam Hyde and stuff. And he wanted to get in with MDE and he put on like this fake local thing, but it was so funny that even though I think all of us kind of knew that a little bit, that it was just a little bit too good to be true. It was still hilarious. And it was, uh, I did a, I did a stream about it. It's really hard to sum up. But it was like a guy who, well, yeah, I, I know he is. Like the, I, I always found it to be like it was a bit. But the one thing that did confuse me about that um, was the Brianna Wu thing. Because didn't they like have an incident where their car flipped and then they decided to just film next to it? Okay, so in in short, this was during Gamergate, which if you don't know was a thing like ten years ago that nobody nobody cares about anymore. <laughs> and despite what anybody else may say, um, it was a thing about games, video games, and uh, a tranny that has to this day not come out as a tranny named Brianna Wu. Um, was was one of the big players in in Gamergate. So, uh, Jace, who went by um, oh god, what what was his uh parkour dude? Parkour dude was his name. He was like a he was doing like a thing where he's like super cool, super cool deagle guy. He's got like airsoft pistols and he skates and shit. And he's a gamer and he smokes weed. Um, he he had a spat where he kept making videos. Kind of like how um, Sam Hyde does with uh, what's his face, Hassan Piker, like just trying yeah. to get to get Brianna Wu to react to his thing, and he did. He accomplished that when he had a real life <laughs> car accident. He was driving and it was cold. It was Massachusetts. The road was iced over. His car flipped, and he instinctively gets out, pulls out his phone camera, and in in character starts screaming about how Brianna Wu <laughs> sabotaged his mom's Prius. And and got him driven off the road during an illegal street race in his mom's Prius, and how Brianna Wu um, was gonna was gonna get it, and how they're gonna street street race. This got, <laughs> this got reposted no. onto like the Twitter, and it ended up Brianna Wu ended up on a show called The Internet Ruined My Life, where they played this. <laughs> <laughs> they played this footage of of Jan Rinkowski in character pointing a camera at his mom's Prius, screaming about street racing to the grave. And Brianna Wu had had to do the line because it was the thing they all had to say during the sh during the show. After this ridiculous footage plays, uh, they had to look at the camera and go, "The internet ruined my life." And it was it was beautiful. Was yeah. that was that uh, was that the same episode? Uh, was she also? Or was he also the one that had? Um... Uh, the the bit about snipers outside the Gamergate snipers outside their house on rooftops and shit. Maybe I don't remember that part. There, there were a couple episodes of of this, if I remember right. But it, it, I guess sticking with the car thing, that that I was like, oh, it's a bit. And then he's at a car wreck screaming about Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's like what the fuck. Yeah, I can't remember. It's been so long now. I remember that um, I had an interview because after this, after the car accident thing, I had an interview with a journalist. And we were talking, and I could hear him. It was on Skype to set the stage for how long ago this was. It's on Skype, and he was writing, and I could hear the pen grinding against the paper as he was physically taking notes about. Because uh, again, this was forty years ago, and you know, this is an old man who still writes on <laughs> pen and paper, <laughs> physically taking notes. And I'm describing the Deagle Nation stuff. I'm procedurally going through it and and itemizing it. And I I remember exactly when he stopped. 
exactly when he stopped taking notes because he knew that it was bullshit and he got Brianna Wu to, to not talk about it um, anymore. I mentioned that our, uh, uh, Jace's friend went, was Israeli and he had gone to Israel with um, the intent of assassinating uh, Bibi, the, the, the Prime Minister of Israel, with a, um, with a crossbow that shot paper clips. And that was the moment that the journalist stopped taking notes because his, his suspension of disbelief had ended. And everything I said after that was not recorded by him on that pen and paper. I, I very distinctly remember this. Oh, yeah, I, I remember that. Yeah, that video is stuck in my head because <laughs> he was screaming so loud next to this car wreck. And the, like, I think Wu at the time had like a fucking motorcycle and he was like, did he <laughs> just, oh, fuck, man. Yeah, yeah, he had, he had a, he, he did a lot of, inter- God, that was good times. And the funny, the real punchline is, is that um, he had a, like a troll Sona that he also, because the easiest way for him to play off uh, information about the character was to have a fake troll that was just him, you know, relaying things that had happened and stuff that would not make sense for, for Jace to, to say himself. Um, and his name was Deagle Dad 420 and I really liked Deagle Dad, and he was an admin of the site. His op went so far that I made him an admin of the site for a very long time, and I still miss him. He was a great guy. Uh, here's, here's the sad ending to that. Uh, after the car accident, he, so he, when he was a child, he had seizures, and he hit his head, and the seizure stopped. And after the car accident, he hit his head again, and he started having seizures again that were very de- debilitating. Uh, so it kind of put a halt in everything. It's really sad. God, that's, that's like some fucking, um, it's like Gilligan Island silence or a Gilligan Island uh, science, right? Like an old TV show bet where like, oh, yeah, you got a problem, bonk him on the head and then get bonked again and it happens again. Yeah. It's pretty rough. The brain is mysterious. And that I know for sure is not a, um, like a joke or whatever. Cause I, I hear that. It's like, that sounds like bullshit, but he stood by it for you. For years now, and, now watch. There's going to be a video of a car wreck of him screaming about <laughs> Josh Moon and the fucking Kiwi Farms. Oh no! Did he transition? Is that Keffel's? <laughs> Is it the ten year op? <laughs> He's so dedicated. You never saw it coming. That would be funny. I would laugh. Um. So uh, this deer thing, like, <laughs> people going back and forth on. Um. So your contention is that the Japanese government releases a list, right? of any foreigner that dies in the country i mean that's confirmable okay. isn't it yes okay real quick guy emulator developer bu also known as david kirk ginder i want to say uh, which is very close to david kirk johnson who many other other people also may know um that, i think that's his name anyways uh he is in japan he's an emulator developer he has lots of money he emails me one day and says take down my thread or i will uh and accept a hundred thousand dollars cash to do so or i will kill myself I, I tell him no, and then I wake up, and uh, there's a huge thing, because some guy, Hector Martin, published a suicide note saying, I killed myself because of the Kiwi Farms, uh, and he lived in Japan. And um, this was published as fact, and NBC News contacted uh, his employer, who lived in Hong Kong, and the guy had an urn with his name on it. And so NBC says this is confirmed true. There's no reason that this guy can lie. And he does have an urn, so it's true. And therefore, in the way that the the circle of journalism and Wikipedia and shit Wait, works, wait a minute, wait a minute. Didn't this exact same thing happen with CRP? Didn't somebody send an urn with his fucking uh, quote-unquote ashes? No, that was Bue's urn with uh, Coach's name photoshopped on it. Oh, was it? He really, really, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Deep lore. <laughs> Yeah, I remember that because that <laughs> did get circulated as being his. <laughs> um. Okay. So yeah, uh, earn fake or like true. Everyone accepts it as, as true. We're talking about it, and um, people are saying someone, some genius comes out of nowhere and says, uh, "I happen to know for a fact that the Department of State publishes a biannual report of all the deaths of American citizens living overseas for each country." So we think, okay. Oh, we'll wait six months. Six months comes, and there was a suicide in Japan that month, but it was before the emails, so it wasn't Bu. And then after, there were no deaths of American citizens in Japan for that entire period. 
Another six months come by. And the, the narrative then is, this is like a clerical error. It didn't get reported. They'll update it next report. Next report comes by, no deaths of any Americans for the entire calendar year after Bew said that he was going to kill himself. Um, and they say, uh, well, that's preposterous. Americans had to have died. There's no way that no Americans died in Japan for that entire you know period. Um, it's just a, a, a paperwork thing. There is no fucking way, and anyone who's ever dealt with the Japanese will know this, there's no fucking way that the super anal retentive paperwork <laughs> monsters of Japan would fail to report the death of an American citizen to their counterparts in the Department of State. There's no way that that's going to happen. Um, so as far as I'm concerned, that's not... He's not dead. The other thing is that they um, <clears throat> used an urn as proof that he was dead. And the urn went to his boss, like a co-worker that did contracts with him, and not his common-law spouse in Pennsylvania. And the other thing is that, if you don't know this, um, Hong Kong is a big city, and it's also south of a really, really, really big city called um, Guang... Oh. Shenzhen. Shenzhen wait, is the wait, wait, wait. Actually, a second. Wait, wait. If he has a common-law spouse, right, mm -hmm. wouldn't she have to report as being widowed if he was dead? Is she still reporting as being married? He was gay married to another non-binary, and I think that they had separated before he died. Oh, so okay. I, I, don't, I don't know exactly what the details with that, but it did go to his co-worker, and there was some excuse why the other person didn't receive any, any news about it. Um, but Shenzhen is just north of Hong Kong. It's one of the biggest ports in China. It is a city the size of a warehouse, the size of a city. You can get anything that you want in Shenzhen. Uh, not that urns are particularly hard to get anywhere. Um, they're not like a regulated thing that you need a license to have an urn printed. But uh, now I'm pretty sure that not only could you find like an urn and get it engraved with whatever the fuck you want in Shenzhen, I'm pretty sure you could pr probably find like real human cremains to put in the urn to make it look super authentic. Uh, so there's no fucking way that this guy is dead. He's laughing at me, and he got away with extorting me, basically. So well, what is he doing then? Because uh, wouldn't he have to lay low, not to draw any attention to him, and be, you he, know, uh, he, quote unquote, dead? He said that he had like, like a lot of money. He had like a hundred thousand plus dollars in savings. He's um, uh, uh, basically a genius when it comes to low level programming and and assembly and shit. Like he can just rebrand. As somebody else, I'm pretty sure he probably already had an ID lined up way before the suicide so that he could just start using that immediately. Um, and, and by the way, nobody had any picture of him and nobody had his name. His his thread was just Bew or Near, the, the developer. We had no idea who he was. And then he published his own picture and his own name. He did not give any government ID to confirm that this was him in his picture uh, so that that could be scrutinized, even though he promised that he would do so in his suicide emails. And then he just disappears. So as far as I know, that that picture could be, you know, this person does not exist dot com. It could be a fake name. And he's just rebranded as some other shit and is doing something else and, and laughing at the drama. He could be Keffels. I really don't fucking know who he is. Do you, do you think this is like a, a, a Vordrak deep op? Do you think he's <laughs> <laughs> he adopted the identity no. of a... Vordrak is not smart enough to uh, to back backwards engineer the Nintendo 64 CPU. This is a, definitely a weird guy. Weird, like, a la Maybe guard. he's super committed and you've just not been getting him. <laughs> credit he deserves that's, I mean, that's possible i'd be very impressed <laughs> if that was the case i'll teach you josh i'll show you <laughs> this fucking learning shit you never thought yeah that's so if, if it comes out like a month from now and somebody's like oh he's alive this is him what do you think that's going to do to keffels and all their bullshit nothing nothing because then uh, they'll just ignore it they, they will say that this person was so traumatized by the kiwi farms he faked his own death to get away from it Ah, uh, yeah, anything to switch it up, right? Yep, and we'll, we'll keep checking along. That's an acceptable narrative. That's like uh, fuse blown, pull the fuse out, plug a new one in, machine keeps turning. And didn't they also, uh, wasn't one of the suicides they attributed to you guys um, one that was at the, the hands of the trans community? Wasn't one of them driven crazy and let herself on fire or something? So there are four, five, yeah, four that are attributed to us. Um, there's Bew. There is Chance Carmichael, who also goes by 600 going on 700. He was a person who aspired to be the world's fattest person. He died of obesity-related complications. His family blamed us. Go figure. Um, <laughs> I don't know how that works. Were you, were, you, were you sending him Oreos? How did that work? <laughs> no, I, I don't think so. I, in fact, everyone liked Chance because he joined the forum. 
and said, like, I'm a fat dude. I eat whatever the fuck I want, and I'm super happy, and you losers are just sitting here watching me. And everyone <laughs> thought that was, like, the best possible thing ever. Everyone everyone liked him from that response. Um, he was completely untrollable, so I don't know how the fuck we got blamed for that. Um, the other one was, the one that you're referring to, uh, during there was a s- saga where... Uh, there's a charity called Trans Lifeline, and Trans Lifeline was basically a scam. It was ran by Nina Chabul and Greta Gustava, who were both trans, and it was supposed to be like a, a emergency hotline for suicidal people who were trans. And basically, they kept posting about taking trips and going to places and buying all this shit. They, I mean, they were living very luxuriously. So people were tracking this and reporting about how the oper- the, the operators were not trained I got documents from Trans Lifeline from people in there defecting, saying we are not being trained. There's nobody on the calls. This is our 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 training material for helping someone back away from the ledge. Is a PowerPoint presentation. We have no idea what the fuck we're doing. And this all came together. We put it together. We put it out there. Nobody gave a fuck because it was from the Kiwi Farms. That was brushed aside as transphobic. And all this information about inurement and, and embezzlement was getting put out there. Nobody cared until. The real enemy of the trans community came out. Buck Angel, a female to male transsexual, said, this is fucked up, and you guys have to answer these questions. And that uh, literally caused Nina Chabul and Greta Gasava to get kicked out by their own board of directors. And they reported to the, they reported under penalty of perjury, under oath to the IRS, that Greta Gasava and Nina Chabul inured $350,000 of charity money into their own personal accounts. Uh, and through other expenditures. Yeah. And we were all right. The Kiwi Farms is right. They changed everything up. I think people now actually answer the phones at Trans Lifeline. And it was only because a female to male who was not going to play, you know, ball with their, their bullshit called them out on it using that information that that happened. Um, however, one person who was a frequent caller who did complain actually about how there was nobody who would answer the lines. And sometimes the operators would just be, get frustrated because they didn't know what to do and hang up on you. If you, you were saying <laughs> you're gonna kill yourself, um, and they left a suicide note saying, "I don't want to live in the world with uh, Donald Trump as president and Kiwi Farms around." And that was that was their statement. Greta Gasaba tried to push this and say that we were responsible for their deaths, and the widow, who was also trans, said, "Don't you fucking dare use my my spouse's name as a weapon against the Kiwi Farms because you you guys are more responsible." And Greta actually ignored that and kept trying to use them. Uh, for for weeks after the fact, to the point where the widow got blocked on the Trans Lifeline Twitter or uh, Facebook page for continually calling them out for it. But that that was the one that, that didn't they they lit themselves on fire. No, that was Chloe Segal. Chloe Segal um, had severe problems. They were basically ostracized from the trans community because they did a GoFundMe for like their father's cancer or something, and they got like thirty five thousand dollars. And then they just lied about the whole thing, and they got a, a, a sex change operation with it. When this came out, it made a lot of people really angry. Um, they wanted their money back and shit like that. And, uh, they basically had no friends. They were basically excommunicate by the trans community. And, uh, they, they brand, from what I understand, they brandished a machete at their roommates at some point. And their roommate said, why don't you commit yourself for 72 hours voluntarily, which Chloe did. And then when Chloe returned to the house, they had changed all the locks on the, the building, um, and, and left their shit outside. So Chloe was homeless for about two weeks. They put out more fundraisers asking for for help because they were they were homeless. Nobody gave them anything, like literally zero dollar fundraisers. That and like Chloe was like yelling at people for help. Got zero likes, zero retweets, and then they set themselves on fire in a park. And the witnesses for the statement said that their last words were about houselessness and mental health care in the U.S. Nothing about the Kiwi Farms. But Chloe Segal gets brought up to this day as a thing that the forum caused. So how are any of these really pinnable on you guys then? It doesn't matter. They're dead. They can't correct the record. They can't you say... Have, I, you, have, you have one that's not confirmable, one that's obviously related to just being overweight, right? <clears throat> and then yeah. two that seem to be involved in some kind of embezzlement that led to a situation that brought about their suicides. Yeah, and the uh, the other one, and this is more iffy, is uh, Julie Terryberry. Julie Terryberry, um, who, who, by the way, people... In mainstream publications like fucking AP, they say that Julie Terryberry was trans. Julie Terryberry was not trans. Julie Terryberry was a real woman. Um, Julie Terryberry hung herself with a belt, and her story is very sad. Um, she ha- she was adopted, I want to say, and she only had good relations with her grandmother. 
She lived in a shed with in Canada with her boyfriend who was 10 years older than her. And they started dating, I think, when she was 16, which is like as young as you can be um, to have sexual consent in Canada uh, with this guy older than her. And he puts her into porn and shit. He, he's putting her on Pornhub and like pimping her out as a cam girl to make money. And then, you know, because she's in porn and she doesn't have anybody else, when he says that he wants to leave her or threatens to, she says, if you leave me, I'll kill myself. And one day he left her and she killed herself. And he joined the forum and blamed us for it. <laughs> How the fuck does that work? Because uh, he was felt guilty, so he tried to shift the blame on the forum, and it worked because more people are angry at me than him. Yeah, this uh, this isn't um, <laughs> this is all pretty weak, man. You you'd think that some journalists would be like, I don't know about this. Jesse Signal, the only one. Was that the one that did the podcast with a, a woman? Uh, I think I heard this on a Destiny stream where he was listening to it, where he talked about trying to track down the person that went outside of Keffel's apartment. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I listened to that. He seemed not to buy a lot of this shit either. Yeah, his his he's like the most high-profile journalist who's countering any of the signal, but it's like, I don't know how much it's going to help. Um, it is interesting to see uh, that there is some integrity out there in the journalism sphere i, I don't even think jesse I, I don't know much about him i think he's like left i think his co-host is trans even please don't quote me on that because i don't know I, I have i have no idea who either of them are i just i heard his reporting when he was talking about i'm trying to track all this shit down and saying that like you know keffels has his history of uh being a shitty person and a lot of this didn't add up and it doesn't seem like it's related to kiwi farms at all and uh the big thing he brought up is why is keffels um, going after Kiwi Farms about docs when the docs related to Keffel showed up on a secondary site first. Uh, yeah, I mean, the, the whole thing about how we're swatting them is just wrong, demonstrably wrong. There's no proof. Um, I would condone, I would not condone it. Nobody would condone it. Uh, people, like, nobody finds that funny. Nobody on the site finds that funny. Yeah, yeah, but again, what about that subsection you have called, here's how we swat people? <laughs> it's only visible to members. How do you explain that, Josh? It's like nauseating to read the, the articles where it's like, Kiwi Farms, a website synonymous with swatting. Uh, we're synonymous with swatting because you keep publishing these fucking articles lying about us. That's why we're synonymous with swatting. It's not because of anything. There's not a single fucking post that any of those motherfuckers can put into their article that back up what they say. They just say it, and that becomes the truth as far as like the public is concerned. So do you think it's starting to peter out? Um, it, you know, like with Keffels, it's like this figurehead or this mask or whatever. Um, I, I, I seem to see that most people find them fucking obnoxious. Do you think it's starting to finally lose steam or do you think they're still chugging along? Uh, it, it, it's number one, it's splintering. It's splintering and it's, and it's um, I, I've noticed this firsthand is that a lot of people are unhappy with the fact that you, you you do have a broad rainbow coalition of people of all walks of life who are trying to take down the site because they find it offensive for various reasons. But who is the person who makes the money? Who is the person who gets the clout? Who's the person who takes credit every time it happens? Keffels. Ironically, you have a coalition of people who are women, female to male, male to female, uh, black, Jewish, all over the board, and it's the fat white Italian dude who's sitting around getting all the fucking money for it. Uh, so a lot of people are offended on, on that regard is that like you have people who have literally tried to take down the site for years who have a actually accomplished something while well, Keffels has done literally nothing besides take credit, uh, taking credit for it. Uh, and they, uh, I mean, that's like a natural human instinct. You don't want to feel like you've been swindled, that your effort was worth nothing because someone else just <laughs> stole it from you. So that's a natural fragment in the, 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 the movement. Um, it's petering out because there's only so much you can do. The site, the, the actual scenario, the, the situation that we're in is that the site is not illegal. My companies are in the U.S. My bank accounts are in the U.S. My servers are in the U.S. If the site was illegal, the federal government can march into my data center and take my shit anytime they want. In fact, they've already marched into my data center. Uh, so I know, I know that they're around. I know that they're paying attention. And I know that if there was something that they can indict me with, they probably would have already done it. Uh, and now um, they are going down the list and they're trying to figure out who can I, who can I uh, like annoy into taking something down that the site actually needs to stay up. And they're running out of options. The site is, uh, uh, has found, like right now on the front end of the Kiwi Farms, there is five, five or six different servers on five or six different hosts. 
and I've put them up and that's how, if you access the site, you access them through them. So, uh, and it's very easy. If you just type in NS lookup, you get a list of IPs. You put one of those IPs into a, uh, who is uh, database and you will see uh, who owns it. And you can send them an email if you want to. And so far to my surprise, I bought six because I thought that all of them would drop in an hour. Um, I have like, Shinjiru, which is based out of Malaysia. I have Alex Host, which is based out of uh, Moldova. I have Visus, which is based out of Ukraine. I have one in the Netherlands and one out of the U.S. Um, and they've all stayed up so far. And I'm 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 keeping. I I know that anything I put on .NET will get the most shit. So I um I I haven't put .NET live yet. I'm kind of like testing it and fine tuning my setup to make sure it's ready. Um, but I'll be interested to see what happens with that. The main, the main issue is simply the application level filtering. I need to figure out a, a good way to do DDoS filtering for, for, um, for just like regular attacks on the network. And I need to get my network fortified. So I'm, I think once that happens, once I'm more happy with my, my router setup, then I'll move, sure. I'll put it back on .NET and see what happens with the proxies and stuff. Well, it's going to be interesting to see which way it goes. I know you've been fucking running all over the place uh, the last two weeks dealing with all this shit. Um, I mean, and it's been it's been weird to watch. Um, I think it's pretty telling uh, to watch who's come down on each side of this. You know what I mean? Because um, mm-hmm. there's some people before they're like, "I love Kiwi Farms," but now they're they're like, "This is great, fuck them." You know? Um, I just don't want to see. Ooh. <laughs> Who could possibly be like that? Uh, well, he's probably rage picking right now as we speak. Well, he, he, I mean, that was way before the Keffels. He's always been like oh, that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, you know, it's just that there are people like that, you know, that, that seem to fucking flip a, a, on a dime. Uh, but uh, to me, it's just, I, I don't, I, like, what, what else is there, right? Like, how sanitized does the internet have to become? You know, like, they, they like literally want to. Like you can't they watch what you want to watch anymore, or say what you want to say anymore. Like everything is so fucking squeaky clean now. I used to be able to go on YouTube and fucking you could enter the term "nigger fight," and you would get four hundred thousand fucking hits. But I can't do that anymore. So you type "fight," you don't get any hits. Try looking up a road rage video, you don't get really any hits. It's all filtered bullshit content, uh, and it's just really depressing. I like the videos and the fucking outrageous shit's gone. And there's so few sites that provide that in any form or context. Um, and yeah, if you guys go down at I, I, 4chan and fucking Ed and 8chan, or, well, not 8chan, but Cow and the sister site you're talking about, just all that shit is going to get swept away. And it's going to just be this corporate shit, this Mickey Mouse sanitized internet um, where nobody can say what they want. I mean, everybody's something like the Fediverse or um, use some kind of alternative that somebody hopefully sets up. I don't fucking know. They, they want it so that there is no place where people can talk about certain issues candidly. That, that they, they don't, it's not just how sanitized they want it. They want it so that there is no place. And if there is a place that comes up, it gets pushed back down. Cause they, I think they, they may not know it in like a direct coordinated way, but if I if I am ever able to dig in, th- there's an awareness that I will not stop with the Kiwi Farms. Once I have something set up that works, I'm going to share it. If the people from like Mumsnet need hosting because they get ca- banned in the UK, I will host them. Um, I will find a way to make it work. I'll find a way to accept money from select few people who need special services, and I will I will create an umbrella for these sites. Um, and they don't want that. Uh, they want it so that that you, if you have specific opinions, they can only be shared in like shitty little holes that nobody can find. Well, e- even the shitty little holes now are getting fucked with. Like, um, I think BitChute's a good example, right? BitChute pops up, people are uploading videos of all sorts on it, and then uh, because of where they're they're hosted or whatever the exact situation they're dealing with, um, they've got government intervention fucking with them now on what can be up there and what can't be, and what has to be taken down, and who gets blocked, and what country can access it. Yeah. So um, like even even the alternatives are getting you know get fucked. Well, even the shitty little holes get fucked. Well, BitChute is hosted out of the UK, and that's their first mistake. What happened with them is that they realized when they started getting a lot of Nazi shit, 
they basically emailed the ADL and said, uh, what do we do to stay online? And the ADL wrote them guidelines. And some of their strategy is not too stupid. The, I've thought about this myself. And it may be easier to have, like, geographed access to the site. But as a caveat, if I have things like the EU where EU access is limited, if I just keep the onion open, then people, you know, will, I'll have a, a screen that says, when you join from the dot onion, please select your, your region. And you can just say, you know, I'm from the U.S. And how would I know? It's just your, it's Scout's honor. Um, <laughs> but yeah, BitChute's done a lot of stuff to to um, stop their growth. And it's hard to put a finger on what. I think the the main issue that people have was the lack of streaming. And they didn't have a search feature that worked. Whereas Odyssey has both. Um, so Odyssey yeah, has there, a there, there's there's their search feature is kind of uh, fucked, or it was at least for a while there. I, I mean, I did test out streaming on there, but um, <laughs> I don't know who coded it because somebody basically spammed the entire Bible in chat, <laughs> <laughs> the whole fucking thing. It's just over and over again. So uh, I, somebody was sending panic messages, Jim, fucking turn your chat off, but oh, well, I don't know what to do. Yeah. So that's where it's at right now. That's the the whole saga. Is in in truth, we haven't lost that much. We lost the dot top domain that we weren't using anyways. Icenick from uh, Iceland is for some reason checking my passport with the U.S. embassy in Reykjavik or whatever the fuck because uh, they don't believe me. I don't know if they're they're trying to force me to like dox myself to them with like a new secret name that I have or what. But my my shit's all legit. Um, so the, we lost the dot is domain as well. And we lost why don't, why, don't, I mean, why don't you fuck with them and send them a fake passport with a, a Nears picture and just say you're him <laughs> and see how they react. <laughs> see, if, see if they understand what you've done. Because I, 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 like, I lost my Google voice number too, right? And I told you this. But I also complained to the FCC about it. I said that my phone number was illegally stolen from me by, by Google. And the FCC responded and said, we've submitted this to Google and they have to reply as to why they've done this in 30 days. So it's like, I'm going to fight for everything. I'm going to keep my .is domain. I'm going to get my fucking Google voice number back. And I'm going to meet them on every one of these challenges. I'm going to litigate this in the most Jewish way possible because everything that I do is completely legit. And if they disagree, they can point to the statute that says otherwise. And you're gonna fund this fight with those patches. I'm gonna fund. The, I'm gonna fund the fight with um, with um, a, a complicated network of proof of stake and proof of work cryptocurrencies <laughs> and awesome patches. And the patches. <laughs> Remember, MITI dot live. Yes, but not right now live. because Cloudflare is putting up how dangerous. MITI dot live like two weeks from now. Uh, you'll have you'll have like a week before they're all sold out. Well, this has been uh, uh, this has been entertaining uh, talking about uh, the Troon saga, the Troon Shine saga, and the death a of the internet. Here. The death of the internet. It's always a fucking happy, fun topic, isn't it? Yeah, if if you find a way to laugh about it, it's still funny. <laughs> it, it is. <laughs> do, there was this great interconnected network of every computer in the entire world, and everyone, even people in Russia and China, and Malaysia and Rwanda and Brazil, they could all get together and play Dota two and scream uh, obscenities and racial slurs at each other, and it was a great fun time had by all. How did it die, Dad? Well, one day a bunch of mutilated dick snippers got together and got really offended that nobody would call them a she, so they petitioned to all the different agencies in the world in mass until they revoked services and the internet fractured down the middle. And now it's gone forever. Now it's gone forever. Now we communicate by shortwave radio again. Yep, and we have to buy porn at the gas station in magazine form. It's really a fucking dark time, son. It's yes. really a dark time. The, the trannies took over the, the post office, and now when you import your, your hentai from Japan, you have to pay like a 200% tax that goes directly to the HRT fund from social yep. services. They renamed it the post op uh, Oh, office. no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You need a, you know, a proof of uh, packaging uh, received. You have to show them your genitals. It's really an embarrassing fucking situation, son. Okay. In the name of grifting, um, I have super chats. Uh, it is now 1 a.m. I have to bash through them. Uh, do you want to stick around? No, I'll jump while you do your, your grifting. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, so you can get to your, get to your chats. Besides, I got to go eat dinner. I, I forgot the time zone difference. So I thought, oh, three in the afternoon would be great. You know, it, well, if I forgot, you're halfway around the world. <laughs> Um, when you grift, don't forget to show your patches. I'm telling you, uh, hat funding is amazing, and patch funding is probably amazing too. Do so, the hats actually know, do that well? Are you being serious? 
the hats have done fantastic. <laughs> I mean, they're, they're, they're made by they're made by little Chinese girls in some factory halfway across the world. So I can't really speak to the best of quality, but I'm not making them. I'm just selling them. Uh, but no, the hats, uh, people like the hats. I don't know, you know, uh, hats do well, mugs do well. Yeah. Maybe you could make a, a Trunshine mug and sell it to people. I'm sure people would love that. See, my, my issue is not like selling them. It's like I have to do the logistics. I can't have a storefront. <laughs> I have to do everything yeah, myself. You, yeah, you're stuck with that like uh, drop shipping retail arbitrage shit. So yeah, it's three a people, fucking, yeah. Close it's a fuck headache. Yeah. All right, man. Well, uh, take it easy. Thanks for having me on as a guest. Um, fuck Keffels. Uh, fuck Ethan Ralph. Uh, fuck Nick Bate. Why not? You know, he's in prison. He'll never hear it, but fuck him anyway. Uh, fuck Amos Yee. <laughs> and uh, I'm probably going to go watch a fat girl get beaten by an Egyptian now. I can't tell. How do you, how do you spell tell. it? C H A N T A L. Um, and Nadir's name is spelled N A D I R. And I think if you just go to YouTube and, and t- like type, if, here's what you want to do if you want to see the, the, the beating footage. Just type in Nadir Didi, D I D I, hits Didi. And I think you should find some videos where he, he does the bitch, I don't scare, bitch, I don't scare. I just want the audio clip. I want to hear the voice. It kind of sounds so much like "How can you slap?" So yeah, that's I'm. That's what I'm going to go check out. I'm going to watch an Egyptian guy beat an obese woman. <laughs> oh, I love the internet as long as it lasts. See, that's the fun kind of stuff you can go check out. But uh, take it easy. I hope everything works out for you. And um, yeah, I'm going to go watch some fatties get hit. Yep. Good talking to you. <laughs> yeah. Bye. Bye. Things have escalated. Now I'm in hiding. And I'm sure you all remember Keffels. And their jihad, their crusade against Kiwi farms. There's poor, innocent, church-going, Christian-loving Kiwi farms. I don't know if you know much about Kiwi farms, but let me tell you a little bit about Kiwi farms. Kiwi farms is a charitable organization dedicated to helping orphans. Hand to God, Joshua Moon spends most of his days feeding the hungry. He runs a soup kitchen. They use the ad revenue off of Kiwi Farms to feed the homeless. And here comes Keffels. And what does Keffels hate? Charity. Keffels hates charity. So they decide that they're going to take out Kiwi Farms. Time to take them down. Time to, time to wipe them out. We can't let that evil Kiwi Farms exist on the internet anymore. <laughs> oh. So we're going we're gonna to get the brigade together. And we're going we're gonna to take them out. Now, this was a campaign Keffels waged, I'd say, for about two months. They had a lot of people in the, uh, how do I put this? What, what, what exactly would you call it, this particular brigade? It's right on the tip of my tongue, and it's probably going to stay there if I don't want to have the stream immediately banned. But to give you uh, the short background, Keffels goes to war with Kiwi Farms, blames Kiwi Farms, by the way, for all the tragic things that have happened to them. If you remember this uh, amazing video, things have escalated. Now I'm in hiding. Now, Keffels is a bit of a unique case because I think out of everybody on the list for shit shows and trash fires this year, uh, Keffels might be the only one that actually profited with their their GoFundMe or their fundraiser, $100,000, $200,000. It was quite a sum of money. Everybody else, really, that we're going to cover, nobody's hit that. So if I guess if you had an L and a W category, Keffels would have got a W on the fact that they really got money out of this compared to, say, Jack Murphy, who just got purely humiliated. But Keffels decided uh, that they, they don't like what's going on. They want Kiwi Farms taken down and uh, starts to go after anybody that would say otherwise. You could see uh, fights taking place on Twitter all the time. Now, Keffels, I believe, and I really do believe this is true, ran a bot army and would use that to astroturf anybody they came across, loving to tell people that they were getting ratioed. In particular, they really didn't like Destiny. Wanted to go after Destiny. Now, maybe that's because Destiny made a manifesto, (laughs) an entire manifesto about Keffels, and then uploaded it to the internet to slam dunk on them, which was pretty funny. But got uh, Destiny banned from Twitter. Got many people banned from Twitter. Got me banned from Twitter. All for really just talking about the dumb things that Keffels does. And they they had help from other people. We, I won't name names, but let's just say one of them was famous for, what was the phrase they used? Consent accident? Was that what was the term was? Consent accidents? And by the way, do you notice that, uh, fun fact, a little aside as we go over the history of Keffels here, I, I don't know if you've noticed this or not, but Ever since Elon Musk took over, ever since Musk took over, 
Keffels doesn't seem to have the sway they used to have. Now they've retreated. They've they've gone back and they mostly lurk on what is it, Twitch now? But as far as using Twitter to get people canceled, that kind of fell apart. That kind of just imploded on them. Not working out like it always used to. Huh. Well, that's really suspicious. What all the people that were, you know, behind the scenes at Twitter that seem to have a political ideology they like to kind of infuse into their decision making on policy. When they suddenly got fired, all of a sudden Keffels can't get people canceled easily. Weird. Strange. So there's Keffels starting their war against Kiwi Farms with the help of other people who hate Kiwi Farms, a particular group of people that really dislike Kiwi Farms, wanting to stop poor innocent Joshua Moon, charitable boy that he is, shut down his soup kitchen. And what do they do? They go after everything they can, all the pieces of infrastructure that they can take out, and they take it out. And Josh is on the ropes for a little while. You know, I'd say if there's one interesting story from this year, not related to trash fires, but just somebody that uh, had an arc that was a bit admirable this year would be Josh. You know, we had a lot of people out there, won't name names right now, we'll get to it later, that claim to be targeted by governments, by banks, by different entities that really wanted to come down on top of them. And one person that that legitimately happened to was Josh at Kiwi Farms. What do we see happen? We had everything from ISPs to Tier 1 providers shutting, shutting them down. We had servers shutting them down. Software shutting them down. Anything and everything that Keffels could attack to try to take down Kiwi Farms, it seemed to get unplugged one after the other. But somehow, some way, Josh throughout all of it for two to three months has, has miraculously kept the website up. It's still kicking. Keffel started a war to take down the worst, you know, according to them, the worst uh, website on the internet down, and they couldn't do it. Not with all the press on their side, not with governments on their side, not with technology companies on their side. Not with uh, social activists on their side. Keffels aimed a cannon at Kiwi Farms. And it was a dud. And our little boy Josh kept his soup kitchen open. And of course the hits keep on rolling. Because what happens with Keffels? Well, their power diminishes on Twitter. They don't have the sway they used to have. Those ratios are getting smaller. Audience is shrinking a little bit. Not as many people watching as they used to on Twitch. And of course, the police... Because, uh, you know, they had claimed they'd gotten swatted. That's why they had to go overseas. What happens? Well, the police come out and they, they have their internal ruling. Or the Canadian government. I don't know how it works up there, really. I don't really pay attention to the Canadians too much. Who does? <laughs> what happens? Everything's copacetic, bros. The police say, hey, you know what? Nothing bad happened here. Keffels is full of shit. So there they are. An embarrassment. In fact, Chad, can we get an E for embarrassment? Can we get an E for embarrassment in chat for declaring war against a website and just fucking it up? I mean, sure, you got some good money out of it. Nobody's denying that. Nobody can. But you completely fucked it up. You started your war and hit him with everything you could, and you completely fucked it up. Can we get E's and Josh won? I think Josh Moon deserves that. Doesn't he? Sure, he can be a bit spurgy and freak out from time to time, but Josh won. And I think, you know, at the end of the year, on New Year's Eve, we should really celebrate that. Josh won. The old internet, a little vestige of it, won. Things may change, 2023 may come, and it could get worse. Who knows? Who knows what's up ahead? But E for embarrassment and a Josh won. Sad, shameful, Keffels. Really, quite shameful. Let me, let me pull down this picture here. <laughs> Who does that, by the way? Things have escalated. Now I'm in hiding. And then like a day later, we find out where they are because they tell everybody. I've gone into hiding, by the way. Here I am. Why would you do that? Why would you tell everybody you're in hiding and then immediately tell everybody where you are? Oh, because you want attention. Because it was all about attention. It was all about looking good rather than being good. And you thought Josh would be an easy target. You thought Kiwi Farms would be an easy get. And you couldn't even take it down. Embarrassing. Shameful. Absolutely shameful. 